The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Old legends are defined and new ones forged at the U.S. Juniors and Senior Championships in St. Louis. Former U.S. Women's Champion Jennifer Yu hasn't given up on another title, taking down the undefeated leader Sophie Morris Suzuki to join a three-way tie for second. Christopher Yu fell to tailender David Brodsky, but holds a tenuous half-point lead in the juniors. Feeling the pressure in the seniors, Larry Christensen turned up the heat, winning his game to regain sole lead. Leaders have proven to be mortal. Who will rise up to challenge them? Round eight of incredible chess, coming up next. Welcome back everybody to day eight of the US Juniors and Seniors Chess Championships held here at the St. Louis Chess Club. We start the day in front of the iconic St. Louis Chess Club where all the magic happens. Well, it's a hot day here in St. Louis and the games are heating up as well. Let's go to the studio and start this exciting round. Hello everyone and welcome to the beautiful city of St. Louis, host to three national championships. The girls, the juniors, the seniors, we are in the penultimate round and we are at the St. Louis Chess Club here in St. Louis. Hello everyone, I'm your host, Yasser Sarawan, along with Doris. Hi, <laughs> Yasser. <yes, sir. laughs> I, I am so revved up by the fact that we've had so many brilliant decisive games right. yesterday that I'm just still a little bit on an edge. Hello everyone. Uh, can you believe it? 13, <clears throat> 13 out of the 15 decisive games played yesterday were decisive. 86.7%, are you kidding me? This is unheard of. If it said 86.7% draws, I'd say yeah, we're at the Sinkville Cup, that's what happens. I, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm flabbergasted. It, and it's classical chess, by the way, too. Do the honors. Where let's are our standings after? Let's uh, start with the girls? Yes, let's do yes. it. Yes. So, Sophie Moore Suzuki lost her game, unfortunately, yesterday. She couldn't really make a yeah. Fabiano heaven. Uh, but she still has six out of seven. And she is being followed by Jennifer Yu, Talia Cervantes, and Rachel Wu. There are, these three ladies are tied for second, and they all have five points. Very nice, and in the juniors? Kristen, for you, also <coughs> lost his uh, game yesterday. Not a good day for our leader. <laughs> it really wasn't, right? <laughs> uh, he still has a little bit of a lead, though. He has five out of uh, five and a half out of seven, but he he does have a very close. Um, Chase. He had a rival, yes, yeah. Yes. Andrew Hong at five. Yes. And Amishra, one and a half points behind, but a big round coming up. And in, in the seniors, it's a little closer, Remember right? Remember when yesterday it was a three way tie? Yes, I well, do. Well, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So the Larry Christensen managed to win a very beautiful game and he is on sole leader with five points, but he is being followed by Vladimir uh, Akopian, four and a half points, and now we actually yeah, we see there him sitting there, getting ready. Ooh, I can see the openings he's thinking about in his <laughs> <Right>? eyes. <laughs> what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He's Larry, right. uh, enjoying a half a point lead as we get a look at the tournament playing hall. Uh, again, a penultimate round, but yes. the format. Uh, Let's go for it, Dorsa. yes. Uh, well, it's a quite a classic uh, event, right? So Absolutely. ten players, nine rounds. It's a round robin. Uh, the time, uh, the time for each player, you get ninety minutes for the first forty move. Right. Then, when you complete your fortieth move, you get thirty minutes for the rest of the game. And to top it off, you do get thirty second increments from the first move. Right. And uh, there are no draw offers before a third fifth move, but I mean, I don't think that's been, that's been an issue here <laughs> it so far. It certainly has not. <laughs> And the <coughs> classic, um, classic point system, you right. win, you get one point, you draw, you get half, you lose, you get a big fat zero. You get nothing. <laughs> but what would happen if there was a playoff amongst two people? Oh boy. 
Well, if two players are tied, you get two rapid matches. Okay. If you still end up tied, then you're gonna go Armageddon, and that's the end of it. And what if there's a three or even a four-way player tied for first? Whew, I'm glad we've thought of thought of this through. <laughs> right. We get rapid round robins, okay. ten minute two. If you all are still tied, we'll get a blitz match, which could also be a round oh. robin. We'll have to see how many people. And if you're still tied, then finally Armageddon. Exactly. Now here, so Sophia, our leader in the ladies, she kind of let her grasp on the trophy slip yesterday. She's still got a one-point lead, so she has every reason to be confident, but sometimes you get rattled at that yes, first loss, right? And we're lucky to have Christian in studio uh, to drill down on uh, these players and their road ahead. It's not easy being first Christian in these events. It's great to be back with uh, you two guys calling the games of the best juniors as well as the best legends that we have on American soil. And uh, the tournaments are heating up. This is it, the championship round. So let's take a look at where we stand in terms of standings as well as the road ahead for our leaders. And we're going to start with the girls section. We have Sophie Mori Suzuki, six out of seven. She was one game away of pulling a Fabiano Caruana that is a 7 out of 7, reminiscent of Fabiano's Sinkfield Cup performance in 2014. But we do have three players tied for second position. We have Jennifer Yu, Rochelle, as well as well, Talia Cervantes, who our leader will be playing in the ninth round. But today, round eight, well, this is a big opportunity for her to potentially score an important crucial victory against Anne-Marie Vela, who has been struggling in this event. As you can see, she only scored one point out of seven, so definitely a big chance for her. And take a look, that is Talia. She knows that she needs to win today to keep close contact with the leader, Sophie Mori Suzuki, and give herself a chance to potentially equalize her score, maybe even take over and take the lead and the championship in the last round. And let's take a look at where we stand in the junior section. Well, this one is a very compact standing. We have Christopher Yu at the top, five and a half out of seven. Unfortunately for him, he lost yesterday a very difficult game against David Brassi. He actually lost with the white pieces. That was a big surprise for everybody. Andrew Hong took advantage of that, one with the black pieces as well against Brandon Jacobson. And right now, he's only half a point behind Christopher Yu and one Abhimanyu Mishra, the youngest grandmaster in history with four points, one and a half points behind. But today, Abhimanyu has a big chance to potentially uh, not catch up with the leader, but get closely behind the leader. If he manages to win against Christopher Yu, big clash. We see this one and in round number nine. Christopher Yu will be playing against, I have to say, a struggling Carissa Yip. So today is the big day for Christopher Yu. And let's take a look at where we stand in our final section. That is the seniors section. We have one leader, that is Larry Christensen, who took over the event yesterday with a brilliant win with the black pieces, but Vladimir Rakopian is also warming up in the tournament. Only half a point behind him, and then we see tied for third position. We have Dmitry Gurevich, Alex Shabalov, and Maxim Dlugian. Let's take a look at the road ahead for Larry Christensen. I have to say, this tournament mm -hmm. is so compact, and these two games are crucial and very difficult. One against Shabalov today. Well, that one is going to be an explosive affair. We know both of these players love to go for the kill, and this is mm -hmm. exactly what we're going to see today in round number nine against Mr. Gurevich, also closely behind. And as you can see, the seniors are having a good time around each other, chatting with our arbiter, chief arbiter, Chris Bird, getting ready for the competition to start. Guys, we're going to have some amazing games. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Christian. And set the table Let's for us, Doris. For it, yes. And uh, tell us about all the pairings, beginning in, with the girls. Let's go for it. Well, Sophie, uh, Sophie Morris Suzuki is having a um, fantastic, <laughs> yeah, blessed time. <laughs> and she does have a very nice chance to win today and uh, secure 
At least a playoff. Absolutely. And all of those players with five points, they need to win to put pressure on Sofia. And in the junior section. Christopher Yu is playing the Mishra, who, wow. you know, he wants to win, the other he wants to win. It's going to be a big, big battle between these two. Very nice marquee matchup. Andrew Hong versus a Wonder Liang will also be a marquee matchup for us. And then the seniors. Uh, it's going to be a fun one because, as uh, Christian was just saying, uh, Christian Sen hey, right. <laughs> is playing Shabalov today and Gurevich tomorrow. And both Shabalov and Gurevich uh, are, you know, very close rivals coming Absolutely. up. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. And of course, they've been battling and fighting their hearts out. What are they fighting for? Oh, um, but for first, there we see the start ooh. of the game. Rochelle, uh, as she just pressed the clock, I see. I saw her. I enjoyed her interview yesterday. I thought she was yeah. wonderful. She's a sweetheart. Really, and I, once again, I just got to throw that out there. Brand, Brandon Jacobson yesterday lost to Andrew Hung, but take a look at that game. That was the brilliancy of the tournament. As the round's underway, there we see our assistant arbiter going right through the sections, making sure. See our one of our photographers. <laughs> yeah. I believe that's Leonard. Leonard Otis, the yeah. always colorfully haired. He can't pull it off. <laughs> I can't. And uh, we owe a great deal of thanks to Leonard because he runs all the game boards, making sure that the oh. digital boards and the transmissions. And here we have our tournament leader, Sophie. Uh, again, um, Dorsa, you've played in these events. You understand the competitive nature of the players. You lose a first game like uh, Sophie did yesterday. What's your, how do you bounce back? You just say, it didn't happen. I mean, sh I, if I'm not mistaken, it is her last year playing in this exactly, event. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, she's she already has had a beautiful event. True. Uh, something that's, you know, she's going to put on her resume. People are going <laughs> to talk about it. Right. <laughs> um, but she still has a clear lead. So I don't think it's going to affect her too much. And uh, I just don't think today is the day for her to go all risky. I think, in my opinion, she should try to have some comfortable position, know her opening, don't try to go G4, G5. <laughs> and, and kill somebody. Uh, yeah. I completely disagree with you. Oh. Yeah, that here one. we I'm go. I'm sorry uh, to say that, but I think this is the big chance that Sophie has to, to score an important win. victory. And I mean, there's three players chasing her very closely behind. Are you really going to bank everything on uh, none of them winning? And tomorrow you have such a difficult clash. Let's not forget, she's playing white against a struggling player. Right. Also a player that is 200 rated lower uh, rated than her. So there's quite a big difference. She really needs to make a push in this one. Tomorrow she's playing one of the rating favorites, Talia Cervantes, with the black pieces. So I, I feel this is a must-win situation for uh, Sophie. Definitely not take as many risks, yes. but play a long game and do not allow your opponent to exchange pieces to get close and comfortable uh, close to a draw. I agree. I feel like, I mean, this is not a do or die situation, but I agree. She should be pushing, she should be making it long, she should be kind of waiting for the lower rated player to make to mistakes. To mess up, yeah. Yeah. Well, already an indication to me with the move knight c3 that uh, Sophie uh, wants to play um, a long game, right? Yes. I mean, uh, uh, and after knight e5, also an indication to me that she wants to play a sharp game. So with the move knight e5, it opens up this bishop, which supports the advance e2, e4. So for example, if we see uh, a very standard move like bishop to b7, then white wants to play e2, e4 and start this immediate clash in the center. Again, this is going to be one of the, the games that we watch. Talia, uh, Rochelle and Jennifer are all a point behind, and they're saying 
to uh, Anna Marie. Come on, <laughs> now's your time. Now's your chance to pull off an upset. I just see. That and let's not forget, Jennifer is playing with the white pieces against a struggling player right now, Gracie Prasanna. So she You're has right. a big chance of potentially scoring another victory and getting closer and closer to Sophie. If Sophie makes a draw, do you really uh, want to see yourself? Uh, be three rounds to go, you had a two point uh, lead. Right. With one round to go playing against one of the rating favorite, you only have half a point lead. Exactly. Uh, I don't think you want to be in that situation. <clears throat> Psychologically also is going to be a very difficult situation. So I think she needs to win this game. Clear. Uh, just taking a look at the game between Jennifer Yu as white versus Gracie. Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, Jennifer has actually been playing a Slav defense and that's the defense that Gracie uh, chose today with this uh, topical line of play, knight h4, bishop g6, queen b3, queen c7. Uh, white usually tries to delay this capture uh, because notice that the queen, uh, any captures yes. on g6 will open up an, at, uh, an attack against the pawn on h2. But this was a game, uh, uh, this is a line I want to say, pardon me, that one Veselin Topolov has played throughout his career as white. He loves the two bishops. And with the castle's long double-edged game, just what Jennifer is hoping for. And again, Jennifer, one of those trailers by one point, um, she needs to win. This is a, a do or die game yes. for her if she has aspirations for first place, of course. I was also looking at the tomorrow's pairing and Jennifer <laughs> is playing uh, Anna Marie who is also struggling. Exactly. So Jennifer's Jennifer, really hoping that she can put together back-to-back yeah. -to -back victories uh, to contest for that first prize. Let's go uh, to the junior championship. What do you want to start with? Always our tournament leader. We Let's have to uh, we have to respect where and where is Christopher? <laughs> little, 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 there he is. And again, Ooh, he's geez, whoa. Whoa. Oh we just got here and the, <laughs> the game blowed up. Uh, what the heck? Okay, this is a London system with bishop coming to f4. Uh, the c5, uh, we've all been here, know this, knight c6, knight d2, uh, queen b6, all very, very well-known stuff. Captures, captures, c4, bishop f5, and now a move I'm sorry to say I'm unfamiliar with. I see it's in my database. Uh, I just have not studied this move whatsoever. I know nothing. No, and bishop e4, this all is being played as if it's routine. Help me out, uh, Christian. I, I am struggling to understand g4. At and least to my database, on. according yeah. to the database that we have, right. g4 is a novelty. What? It, it was responded uh, with bishop to e4, which is by far the best move in the position. And actually, the only move that keeps the, not necessarily keeps the balance, but does not allow white to take over the initiative. Bishop to e4, the best move in the position. Bishop to g2, this is the position. And guess what the best move according to the engine is? G5. What? Get lost. <laughs> yes, G5. G5, and the second best move is E5. E5 makes much more sense. E5 than I can understand. E5 you can understand. G5, not so much. But I guess the idea is, look, your king is not going to go on the queen side once Clear. you already lost the B2 pawn. Most likely you will uh, focus on getting it to the king side if you really want to castle, and I think you do because you need to bring uh, your rook into play somehow. So. What black is trying to do with this move, well, open up the lines, open up the G file, specifically after rook to G8, we get this type of position. And then I understand black maybe will keep the king in the center. The way I see it, I think black will uh, like to keep the king in the center. Maybe even go long castle. Nevertheless, you still have to be wary of the B file being open and potentially getting uh, under an attack on that one. So. And white at the same time, it doesn't seem like it has a clear path as to where to castle. Uh, the best move, castle in the position, bishop takes f6 is one of the best moves. Castle is not an easy move to make from okay. uh, a practical perspective. Just allowing knight takes g4 with the g file open straight towards your king. I don't know, it doesn't look like a very easy practical decision for white. So let's see. By the yeah. way, he played it. He played Boy. G5. 
Yeah. These kids know everything. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank uh, you. I'm gobsmacked. No, he seriously. He actually played I mean, G5. <laughs> wow. Mishra. So Christopher plays G4. Right. Uh, thinks that, okay, I, I took my opponent uh -huh. out of the opening. I surprised you. I'm going to be the one dictating this game. This is my novelty. And then Mishra comes with bishop before and then G5. Amazing. And now it's Christopher who's thinking. A a incredible knowledge these kids have. Wow. Nice. Okay, I understand that from the perspective G4 by white, what you want to do with this move, G4, is you kind of want to knock the bishop. Yes. Bishop takes G4. You want to play rook to G, pardon me, rook to B1. Now that the bishop no longer controls the B1 square, you're ready to crash through on the B7 pawn. I understand why you wouldn't want to play bishop takes. Furthermore, I understand why you wouldn't want to play knight takes G4, because the knight is necessary to guard the pawn on D5, and then after captures on d5, moves like bishop b5 check are on tap, and you don't want to deal with that. So the two captures of the g pawn, I understand, is bad. But what about knight b4? I mean, that had uh, hmm. my attention right away because I was thinking that I'm frightened of knight c2 check. What would have happened in case... Uh, Mishra had gone for th this line, uh, Christian. Well, actually, knight b4 unfortunately loses. Um, I have a couple of ways to do it. Uh, the point being that I have bishop e5 in most of the lines. So bishop I can take on f5 first, or I can go bishop e5 first. That ah. defends my rook on a1. And then knight c2, you're not going to get the full rook. But uh, I don't get the full no, rook. No, you don't get the full rook because I have bishop e5, and actually your position just crumbles. Agreed. Agreed. That that's that's it. All right. So that's why we understand the move bishop e4. So then after bishop e4, I, I try to break this stuff down logically in my mind, like Absolutely. so I know. I, I I had this conversation with myself. Is that a good move? Is that a bad move? So bishop e4, I get. But now comes. Why didn't he play e5? <laughs> I mean, because that move, to my mind, that certainly is a logical move, right? Bish, uh, uh, gaining, uh, how come it won't let me play the e5? One more. What? One more click. One more click? Bishop g2 for white. Bishop g2 for white. Yes. Uh, that's it, sorry. Guys, if guys, you guys. Play two. Be be before ahead. we get into the trenches in this game, we have breaking news. What's Oi. the breaking Sophie Mori Suzuki is winning. What? Woo! Get out of here. It, it's been five minutes since the start of uh, the round. She's already winning. Let's it's take a look at what moves. happens. Ten what moves. just happened? Knight to e5. Knight fd7 came what? on the board, and this just allows <clears throat> take on d5, take on d5 with whatever you want to take, take on d5, continue taking on d5, take on d5, bishop takes d5. What is your rook doing on a8? It's By, uh, itself. Unattended, knight takes e5, d takes e5, thank you very much, that's fine. This queen actually protects the bishop, and you are losing the rook no matter what you do. The best thing you can do is actually just give up the piece, go knight to c6, and be two pawns down. Oof, two pawns terrible. down at move 10. c takes d5 on the board, and right now, uh, let's go uh, to the table, to uh, the bird's eye view, because I want to see what Vela is thinking, and whether she just realizes she... right now that she's lost. She didn't play bishop b7. She played the move b7, b6. Then she does not play uh -huh. bishop b7, fianchettoing the bishop. Knight fd7. But instead plays knight fd7. And Ooh. she took it. She, of course she did. They might be crowning somebody today. Oh, my God. This move, knight f6 to d7, is really reminiscent this, this of bishop, is over. bishop f5 to d7, what Jennifer you played yesterday, a total finger failure, a total uh, disconnect with the Fatal. requirements of the position. Yes. Uh, she failed uh, in her opening knowledge, and this looks like just the same thing, a finger failure uh, by black. Oh, dear. Knight. So she was trying to exchange the knight. Makes a lot of sense, knight in the center, but first play the move bishop to b7. Required, yes. And then play knight fd7, or now that with the bishop on d7, you defend wow. the pawn on c6, you can even just follow it up with knight bd7, just the right. usual knight bd7. It's Stunning. inexplicable, uh, this 
blunder so early also. It's just been 10 minutes since the start of the round, guys. Well, not just that. It's just been like, like 10 moves. <laughs> Come on. Uh, wow. And what, what a situation for Sophie yeah. to have. A, she's, she's a point in the lead, which is great, great, yes. great. She's trying to secure a victory. But to secure it 10 minutes into the round, wow, I'm, that's... I feel obligated to knock on wood. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And no, I, uh, I just, I, I'm kind of stunned. Uh, again, our decisive number of games, it's just going through the roof. And th this is actually one of the things we have been seeing, a number of egregious uh, opening um, failures. Uh, in, and here's the fighting chess. On round seven, we had whew, over 86% decisive games. 13 out of 15 were wins. And as we were coming in, you said it could have been 14, <laughs> and you're right. Shabalov was losing, and the whole tournament has been a, a huge number of decisive. Uh, well, except this. round or round two. Let's, let's, let's put round two away. Round two, <laughs> we kind of missed that one. But 53, 60%, 80% Boy. round four. 66. These are huge numbers, guys. I think this is historic. We'll probably not see this in the years ahead. But overall, out of the 105 games co played coming into this uh, round, 63, almost 64. That's a nice number, 64. 64%, yeah, right? Yeah, that's a nice yeah. number. Yeah. Two um, scores, nice. Boy, we were, we, we were just breaking down the game of Christopher Yu, uh, Christian, and then you took us to Sophie. We just got blown off course. What's going on with the Christi uh, Christopher Yu game once more? <laughs> I, I, I will oh, show sorry. you what's happening in that one, but first I want to take you to uh, this game between uh, Balaji Dagupati and Brandon Jacobson, and maybe you guys can explain me what's happening oh. in this one. Let's go for it. Let's take a look. Bishop to b5, a6, bishop a4, normal stuff, right? Sure. The Rui Lopez. g6, sure. Oh, yeah, a little I bit of this. an offbeat line, nevertheless, it has been pl played plenty of times. I actually played it myself. Yeah. d4, take on d4, knight to d4, Knight to a5. What? I don't play this. What? You play bishop g7, you go into a normal line, right? Sure. You, yeah. you do something knight, like knight g7, you go into a normal line. You right. take on d4, you go into some sort of a normal line. But you make a novelty as early as move 7, knight to a5, take the knight to the rim for apparently no reason. Right. It's puzzling to me, I don't understand the move, and maybe you guys can explain it. It's once again incredible how these players are coming with new ideas. These young guns are just analyzing chess day in and day out, and they're coming up with this very <laughs> peculiar, but maybe ideas that currently with modern chess engines work. Knight to a5 is the move, knight to b3 was played, and knight to c6. Is this uh, uh, the uh, um, a resurgence of a potential queen to d6, queen to e6, Berlin repetition? Are we going I'm... to see knight to d4 and then we're going to go into this repetition? Let's wait and see, but still, <laughs> knight to a5, such a puzzling move. I mean, sorry, but my assumption, okay, knight to a5, I would never play it in a million years. Of course. But, but I think knight to a5, has, he's like clearly saying, hey, okay, dude, I want to play b5, c5, c4, by bishop. Correct. But... It, it, I mean, I feel like white can do almost anything that relates to stopping b5 and c5, and it, it should still work. It's, it's interesting. So the best move according to the engines is actually one that you wouldn't probably think Whew. if uh, you see this uh, first time over the board, and that is the move queen to d2. Holy guacamole. Right. So take on d4, uh, knight takes d4, knight to a5, and now... It seems like queen to d2 might be the best move. Now, the idea is obviously to attack the knight on c uh, on a5, but also to be looking at the potential queen to c3, taking advantage of the fact that you played g6, opened up the long diagonal, put some pressure on your rook. I like this move, queen to d2. It makes a lot of sense, but only after you see it with an engine. After c5, knight to b3, white is almost winning, it seems like. Because if you take on b3, then I just simply take with a bishop, you have a weakness on d5. You also have this queen to c3 coming. This, from a strategical point of view, not even a tactical point of view, is not good news for black. So you cannot do that. 
you have to go something like knight to c6. The problem with knight to c6 is that I can just simply take, take. If you take like this, then I can just go into the end game. And once again, mm -hmm. we see um, that g this move g6 weakened a lot your uh, position on the king side. And unfortunately, that gives white a decisive advantage, close to a decisive advantage. Knight to c3 will be coming, followed right. by knight to a4. You have some problems with the pawn on c5 as well. And once again, the king is lacking a spot to hide. King to c7 will be met by bishop to f4. So you cannot do that. Now, if you go knight to c4, yes, but queen to c3, you can see it coming, right? That's a double attack. You can go knight to f6 and probably regain your piece after the move b5, but you know this is not good news. And this is probably what he should have done. Now, it's a big bluff. You play knight to a5, you know that queen to d2 will punish you. Mm -hmm. If white knows this move and plays it, will punish you. You will get into a much worse, much worse position. But then you go to the board and then you bluff. And then he played the move knight to b3, knight to c6. Right now, Balaji Dagupati is thinking and trying to come up with a plan. It does seem like it's not that easy. Right now, b5 is a threat, right? So you have to defend right. against that. You can go knight to d4, but that invites the repetition. You can take on c6, but most likely this is not necessarily what you want after d takes c6. It is an end game. Uh, but it's not as good of an endgame as the one that we previously saw because this pawn instead of c5 is on c7 and that makes a big difference. It's much more compact for black, the position. So knight to c6, this is what we have right now. And you guys were asking also about the big game of the round, Christopher Yu versus Abimanyu. And he actually blitzed out after bishop takes g5, not rook to g8, not knight takes g4, but long castle. Right. This is what we have right now. Complex position, we're going to have a fight. Guys, Abimanyu wants to win. He still believes that he could potentially come back in this tournament and force a tie break and win the event. He still believes, and this is extremely important. He's one and a half points behind Christopher Yu. Luckily for him, he has the chance with the black pieces, and this is the best chance and the best position that he could have hoped for out of the opening. A complex battle with everything hanging and you knowing the theory and what you have to do in the position. This is the best scenario for black for Abimanyu and Christopher Yu right now. Well, he must be thinking, why did I play this move G4? Why, why, why did I come up with this blazing hot uh, <laughs> approach when all I needed to do maybe was just to tame the waters a little bit, make a quick draw or something and go into the last round in the lead? That's not the case anymore. Uh, we saw Mishra there standing up behind his own chair looking at the board. Reminded me a little bit of David Brodsky yesterday hovering around the position. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a pawn sacrifice, uh, Christian, and uh, how does the engine evaluate the situation? You've been saying double-edged, double-edged, double-edged. It is double-edged. It's zero-zero. Zero. Uh, the engine numbers? is actually zero-zero. Zero. Why? Need it. What? Zero-zero, yes. And how does it get to zero-zero? Show me a In line. multiple ways. In mo okay. Ca Castle is one of them. <laughs> Castle just uh, going straight into the attack. Um, bishop takes f6 is another one of them. Okay. Again, just all zero moves. zeros all in, zero all, zeros, the, in yes. all the lines, even yes, though you're yes. a pawn up. And Most of the lines is zero zero. I mean, black has a lot of uh, initiative, despite the fact uh, that, well, actually, are you a pawn up right now? Yes, but you are a pawn up. Well, yes. yes, 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 you are a pawn <laughs> up. But you will be losing either g4 or c4. So I cannot even really count this position as necessarily a pawn up for white, uh, at nice. least to my eyes. Especially this pawn on g4 will be lost. That's Unless you give me the bishop with bishop takes f6. Then you indeed can, uh, for example, if you take and take on d5 and say, yes, I will keep my extra pawn like that by exchanging mm -hmm. the pawns. But after bishop takes d5, in fact, this seems to be already a much worse position for white. Black has a lot of initiative, even if you castle. Right. Then I can just go bishop takes f3. This is, in fact, just simply lost. So from a tactical perspective, it doesn't seem like you have a clear way of preserving your material advantage as white. And uh, you just have to accept the complications and take the bull by the horns, go castle, and try to uh, find your own play against the castled black king. Because you know black is going to play rook to g8, get on the g5, right. and try to create some pressure like that. Wonderful. Uh, one of the things that uh, grandmasters always do is shop and compare openings, if you will. I want to go back to the game of Balaji versus Brandon Jacobson and that really stunning move, knight a5. I remember when I was a teen, 
studying the Rui Lopez, one of the variations that really had me greatly perplexed mm -hmm. was a line that went a6, b5, bishop back to b3, and immediately they hunted down this bishop. In so many Rui Lopez variations, this capture of the bishop for the knight was avoided. White would play a3 and bishop a2, or c3 and bishop c2, not allowing the trade. And in this case, you could see that, well, the knight really goes after the bishop right away and tries to hunt it down. You might say, well, in this case, don't you leave your pawn on e5 hanging? And the answer is no. You take the bishop so there's no uh, captures against the f7. Yes. And then you get surprised by the double attack, queen to g5, hitting at g2, as well as e5. So uh, uh, the prescribed way of playing was to play d2, d4, allow the trade of bishops, uh, knight takes bishop, and uh, go into this variation. I spent... <laughs> A misspent summer? No, that's over, overstating it. I spent a, misstate, uh, a misspent week trying to play bishop oh. to d5. All right. c7, c6, bishop takes check, king takes, knight takes e5 check. I don't know where the king moves. Let's just say backwards. And I was trying to do these types of things with uh, king e7 as well as uh, king e8. And I had a lot of fun. Nobody, nobody, nobody ever played knight a5 <laughs> against me. Oh, so, no. so all my preparation went out the door. Now, in this particular case, we had the inclusion of the move g6 and d4, and we shop and compare, because now the, the, the knight move knight a5, to my eyes, makes no sense. Queen d2, that just tries to refute the, the move right away. Just tries to refute. But, if you're if you're looking to save your bishop, you could play either c2 c4, uh, uh, you know, enterprisingly offering a pawn, or c2 c3 in order to save the bishop, and you make the move knight a5 look weird to say the least. Uh, in the game, actually, what happened was Balaji went for knight b3, knight back to c6, bishop takes c6 on the board. Uh, Christian was saying d takes c6 is a slightly worse end game for black. It's kind of like a, uh, I want to say a Berlin with a pawn on, uh, on e5. And also if you, like uh, an exchange Rui Lopez, right? Yeah. Just and also like a, an exchange, uh, exactly. Uh, and if you take with uh, the uh, b pawn, then maybe something like bishop or e3 going. What if, sorry, my, what, sure. can I just go queen d4 now? Yes, queen d4 is a very standard move. and. I think in many cases I'm going to have to play ugly chess, oh, f7, f6. I'm just a little bit worried that I would fall into some very dark <laughs> place. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this kind of a, a tactic, yeah. but it's always very nice when <laughs> you get... Oh, that's painful. Ooh, painful. That's a nice word to describe that situation. So, yes, queen d4, a, a really good move, uh, challenging the diagonal with the bishop as well. I think Brandon uh, took too big a risk in this game with his opening. And uh, Christian, what else has caught your eye? Well, uh, the situation for Anne-Marie Vella against Sophie uh, Mori Suzuki is getting from bad to worse. From uh, bad to worse? This is pretty much over. This oh, game is pretty much over. And dear. I'm not exaggerating at this point. Uh, oh, it's just a piece down. I'm going oh. to take on c6. Your king Which is weak. Which she did. This is literally just a piece down. We've played this round for the last 28, 29 minutes. Right. And uh, Sophie should probably just uh, accept a resignation anytime soon. Right. Because the bishop will drop back. I can even take on f6 first. Why not? Can we just trade queens and call it good? Yeah, you you can do piece. whatever you want. At, at this point, you literally can do whatever you want. You can take on f6. I think taking on f6 is just the most precise just because you take another pawn. Right. Why not? Right. I'm going to be a piece and a pawn up. <laughs> This is over, guys. You were yeah. saying when it pours. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, and it is raining uh, badly for Anna pieces. Marie here and for Sophie. Like, what wow, just that... happened? This is a gift. 
that really? Sophie is getting from her opponent. And I told you at the beginning of uh, the round, Anne-Marie Vallea is really struggling in this event. Mm -hmm. Only one out of seven points. She's uh, definitely not finding her stride. But to lose like this in only 30 minutes, well, she could have resigned 15 minutes ago. Yeah, very, it's, very it's disappointing. It's not a good look. It's, it's not great at all. No, it's a very, very disappointing uh, uh, game because you want to fight. I mean, you, you, you come to the national championships with the hope of, you know, doing a few upsets and, you know, feel like you're in the game. But this is like the first inning of a baseball game, and you're down nine nothing. I mean, it's just you're a piece down, and you have absolutely no compensation. And as you're saying, Christian, if uh, if uh, Valia were to resign right here, everybody would say wise decision. You're, you 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 blundered in the opening. I want to turn our attention to the game of Andrew Ahong and a wonder Liang for just a uh, a moment. Uh, as again, Andrew is hoping that Christopher slips again because mm -hmm. he's just on the half a point outside looking in and he's playing against the number one seed, uh, a wonder. And in this position, he played the move knight e5, bishop came back to d6. Whew. Usually you play uh, castles first and then you decide on this move f4. But uh, Harry Nelson Pillsbury, Pillsbury, yeah, I want to say, uh, from the late 1800s, created what we call the Pillsbury attack, or what was attributed to him as the Pillsbury attack. And that's with this pawns on d4, e3, and f4. Um, the Pillsbury attack was you put your knight on e5, you castle, and, and then you do a, a, a rook lift. We're actually going to see a queen lift. Queen comes over to h3, and you're eyeballing uh, greedily this pawn on h7. So one of the uh, huge mistakes you could make is thinking, oh, I've got that guy protected. Let me take this pawn on d4, and white, you blew it. You blundered a pawn. And uh, I'm going to hurt your feelings with the move knight takes d5, because now I'm threatening to capture on f6, and then it's checkmate on the next move. Your best move at this point is g7, g6, and guess what? Thanks to the rook, you're going to end up a piece behind uh, in this game, So, which is, explains why a wonder played g6 to stop knight takes d5. We've got castles on the board, and at this m exact moment, Andrew hasn't sacrificed anything, and it's always been considered that this type of attack, this Pillsbury attack, if you will, is dangerous, dangerous uh, for the second player. Uh, we'll see if the, you know, the 18th century romantic chess of attack, attack, attack uh, will hit its mark in the, uh, this game. Um, did they teach you uh, the Pillsbury attack when you were a teen? Uh, um, I, I, I don't think they did, no. no. What? I, I don't think you, they did. You're missing this classical education? Not very education. cultured. <laughs> no, not very cultured Romanian uh, chess school, unfortunately. Exactly, exactly. Well, in the American school, we had, we, we had to learn the Pillsbury attack. Well, he's and one it, of uh, the heroes. Yeah, right? so it, it, it was well. a big favorite, especially amongst class players. You'd see a lot of, I, I want to call it the Kali system. Mm -hmm. with, and, mm -hmm. and That's with bishop g5, right? Yeah, with, and with bishop to d3 yes. and c3 and stuff yes. like this. E3, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to keep my eye on this one. What do you have for us, uh, Christian? Well, actually, I was just uh, looking through the variations and looking uh, th through the games as well. Uh, I saw that uh, Justin Wang versus Kar Karissa Yip was actually looking quite similar to what happened uh, in the Brandon Jacobson, but without the move uh, g6, and actually with the move knight to f6 right now, and immediately d4. We know castle is the main line, d3 is also uh, the main line, but d4 happened by Justin Wang, and right now Carissa is starting to think, bishop to e7, e5, this is currently the position that we have on the board, and it does seem like knight to d5 or knight to e4 are the two best moves. So this is what I was looking at, Andrew Hong versus a Wander Liang. Well, I'm liking Andrew's position. Yeah. I really like this knight on e5. The fact that right. you cannot uh, clarify the situation in the center as easily as black as you would like it to be. And th this knight on e4, e5 is going to live there, right? Mm -hmm. It's much more difficult for black to get his knight 
to e4. And this is what I'm seeing. I also like this queen already on h3, doing some damage uh, to uh, black's structure in front of his king and potentially get the queen, queen to h6 followed by rook to f3 and rook to h3. So I'm That's seeing intriguing. quite an intriguing attack brewing mm -hmm. in this one for white. Definitely Andrew Hong still within his element and I'm also liking his time situation. One hour and 32 minutes for Andrew. One hour and eight minutes for a Wander Liang. Wow. Definitely, this is something that Andrew prepared uh, at home, a wonder didn't, a wonder we know that he's not really feeling good about this tournament. He's losing a lot of rating points and uh, he doesn't stand a chance of potentially competing for the title right now. So he just wants, and he told us actually yesterday, he just wants this tournament to be over. <laughs> and when you're in that state of mind, uh, you're prone uh, to be the subject of your opponent's vicious attacks. And this is exactly what we're seeing right now. All right, Christian, thank you for that. I'd just like to turn our attention to the seniors, an event we haven't spoken of yet because we saved the best for last, of course. Of course. And let's go to our tournament leader, Larry Christensen versus Alexander Shabalov. And so what happened is Larry's white, and with this last move by uh, Shaba, he's inviting the move d4, d5, a Benoni, uh, which has a reputation as a very risky defense for black, but a very tactically uh, sharp line of play, which Larry said, no, nope, uh, not today. Uh, Shaba, I am not going to give you the position you want. I'm going to keep it uh, tight, uh, closed. And the players uh, transpose to a Panoff Bodvinnik attack with the Karo Khan, knight c3, bishop e7. Here, uh, there's a massive de debate that is raging with theory as to whether the move bishop b4 or bishop e7 is the best. Bishop b4 has its uh, adherence, if you will. Bishop e7 is what I like to play. Larry took, took, and quickly transposed into an isolated queen pawn position. And then uh, Shaba takes a page out of the Anatoly Karpov playbook captures on c3, b takes c3, no longer an isolated queen pawn position because that pawn is protected. But there could be issues on the c file, bishop c4 and pawn on c3. Sometimes you, you, you see black throwing in the move queen c7 oh. to provoke the move queen d3 before um, playing the move knight c6. And are we caught up with the players? Again, this is all theory. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. And the other game I wanted to just jump. I just jump. want to point Please. out, because how much the players are thinking, especially Larry, yeah. he's down to an hour and 10 minutes. Ooh. I'm assuming he's not very familiar with his lines. In this no, I, I, he's absolutely familiar. This is um, <laughs> from the 80s and 90s. We, we're not even in the Tavia position. Right. It, it goes for, for a long, long, so, long time. I think the reason that Larry has taken so long is he's thinking carefully about navigating to the ah, type of I position see. he wants. He's saying, do I want to play an early bishop d3? Do I want to play it with queen e2 and rook d1? Do I want this setup? Do I want that setup? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of the great stories was David Bronstein. David Bronstein uh, was a vice champion of the world. He played in uh, the world championships, uh, just awesome, awesome, legendary figure. Comes to a game in Hastings, he's white, first move he thinks for 50 minutes. Wait, what? 50 what? minutes on his first move. Like, what? And uh, he wins nicely. And then the journalist reasonably asked David after the game, but Mr. Bronstein, why, why, why did you spend 50 minutes on the first move? And David says, I was thinking about what to play. <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> and, and sometimes uh, in your openings, you, you, you slow down, you slow down, you slow down, and you're thinking, I want this middle game, I want that ending, I want this. Larry has slow played it to get to a position where it's a strategic fight. And nobody's doubting Shabalov's ability to attack and play tactically. Strategic play, not completely his forte. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. I wanted to turn to the game of Max Delugi for a second. Oh. Cause, what? <laughs> Wait. Okay, so this is so this Moscow are... system. 
Uh, I think they call this the Moscow system, but okay. Bishop b3, okay, this is um, from the start. Uh, Slav defense, yes. and Igor knows this stuff inside and out. Is this Moscow or anti-Moscow? I don't play this as white I, or black. <laughs> sometimes these opening names confuse me completely as well. It's the anti-Moscow. It's apparently. the anti-Moscow. Yes. Yes. There we go. So okay. right here, I mean, this is the Bodvinic if you take on sacrifice. C4, yes. right? so you take on C4. The amount of Dorsa, the amount of analysis from this Oof. from this defense is unbelievable. People I remember write I books. tried to learn as a little bit like, oh my god, ten years ago, and I was like, yeah, I'm good with them. So <laughs> exactly. But I, I remember um, uh, Daniel Stellwagen, a very very promising junior player from Holland. Uh, we had some trainings together. And I said, Daniel, what would you like to look at? And he said, I'd like to look at the, the Bodvinic Pawn Sacrifice variation. I go, okay. And he, he wanted to analyze this move, queen a5, takes, and b4. Okay. And this position is ridiculous. This is like a completely absurd position because, okay, first of all, the bishop's hanging. Second of all, the knight's hanging. All so right. you've got no, no choice. You have to play knight e4. Then there comes the move bishop a6. So we started analyzing. We started looking. We started looking deeper and deeper. And there are no rules of play. There's no, I should be playing h4. I should be fighting for control of the d6 square. I should be fighting for to win back the pawn. No, it's sheer calculation. Yeah. I threw Daniel out of my home so fast. And don't you dare ever come back. Don't call, don't write. <laughs> Did you I put mean, up a sign? No more no, Botswinic yeah, analysis no, behind no, your door? No, <laughs> the sign was no Daniel Stellwagen oh. allowed. I mean, it was a terrible, terrible okay. thing. And uh, these pawn sacrifice variations are just overwhelming, which explains why uh, Igor actually played the move h6. He is in a do or die situation? No, or? no, no, oh, no well, not at mind. all. Igor actually um, uh, hasn't been doing that. Uh, but on the other hand, Max, oh, Max is, is the one die who really yes. wants to press. So he sacrificed a pawn. This is an absolutely crazy variation as well. Uh, it's all about who is best or better prepared. And the interesting thing about Igor Novikov is that he's got a reputation amongst his peers as being one of the very, very best prepared. So Max had better make sure that he, he, come, he brings it. And what do we have here, Christian, in terms of the theoretical um, uh, evaluation. Let me just also Please. quickly mention the time. Max is uh, almost full, so an hour and a half, hour 29. He's and, been playing yeah, rapidly. And uh, Igor is an hour and five minutes. So he's used nearly 30 minutes on his clock. Oof. Max virtually nothing. And again, uh, Christian, uh, how, how does the theory evaluate the position? How do the engines evaluate the position? So it seems uh, this move, a rook to d1, despite the fact that uh, it wasn't a completely new move, yeah. it was something that probably threw uh, Novikov off because okay. the main line was actually to go castle. Castle, which made the most sense. And right now, after castle, you do go uh, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, bishop to uh, g7, or even bishop to h6, wow. followed by long castle, and try to take advantage of uh, knight to d7, kick the bishop away from the center, and then just play that position as it is. But rook to d1 seems to have uh, thrown uh, Novikov off a little bit. Knight takes e5, after a serious thing, he decided okay. to take on e5, and more or less follow the main line. And let's see what happened. Bishop takes e5, bishop to g7, b3, I have not committed yet 
to the castle. Take on b3, and this is the position currently uh, that we have. My guess is that the difference between castle early on and rook to d1 and then potentially castling later on is that after the move castle, maybe f3 is a move right, right now. The rook is still on h1. I can immediately drop it to g1 and put a lot of pressure on the g file. So this is the big difference, and this is what Novikov is trying to understand right now. Where do we stand when things open up on the king side? If you take, take, well, I mean, this is a completely different situation than what you would have expected to get out of this opening, right? Because right. rook to g1 is coming, and it's coming fast. And if I manage to maybe even just sacrifice on a g7 <laughs> and then get a queen to g5, on the dark squares, you're going to have huge problems as a black. So this is definitely not something that you want to see. Engine is saying already plus one advantage, but also from a practical perspective, it, it just doesn't feel right. You mm. don't want to play these type of positions. And I have to say, I'm looking at what happened, what transpired in the game, and it feels like Max Lugi, despite the fact that also, sure, he uh, is way ahead uh, on the clock. He also got a very, very easy position for him and a position that favors his style. He likes to play this type of sharp positions. We're going to see F3 come on the board. And right now, I have to say the pressure is on Novikov to stop White's attack. So what I'm seeing maybe is uh, that black has to keep the king in the center, at least momentarily. Mm -hmm. Just play maybe something along the lines of queen to b6 and later on go for a long castle. I think short castle is no longer an option for uh, a black if he doesn't want to fall under tremendous attack by white species. This is what I'm seeing in this game. And I have to say, <laughs> every single game <laughs> is explosive today. Take a look at what's happening in the game between Joel Benjamin and Vladimir Akopian. Akopian, one hour and 30 minutes. Joel Benjamin, uh, down 30 minutes on the clock. So we see these discrepancies in a uh, time situation in most <laughs> of these games yeah, because... Yes, you had told that Joe Benjamin has been having some time management issues. <laughs> he does. I he see that. Does. <laughs> yes. Well, he this, definitely does, yeah. This yeah. position, what you've just sh you're about to tell us about, Christian, yes. is, is... This is still theory. Yeah, oh. demonstrative of the of the many, many decisive games. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are these are not your Berlin defense. Exactly. Nobody plays four knights here. What's <laughs> Nobody, oh, they're four knights. They're 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 uh, swinging for the fences. What is this opening? I How think did we get here. The way Akopian is looking at this game is almost as a must-win situation. Once right. again, he's playing against Joel Benjamin. Before yesterday, he was struggling. Nevertheless, right. he won an important game, Joel, to get him back on track and get his confidence uh, back. And that's. More or less bad news for Akopia. Nevertheless, he is still taking some chances in this game with the black pieces, uh, dictated by what he's doing right now in the opening phase. But I'm looking at the games, and I see one, the top game is between Melkumian Hrant and Tigran Petrosian. Well, uh, these two players are Armenians, and mm. we know actually Vladimir Akopian uh, lived in Armenia before moving to the United States. So he right. definitely analyzed this type of positions with these two leading players from Armenia. So definitely he has some knowledge, residual knowledge, maybe from very old uh, uh, sessions of preparations mm. uh, with these two players or maybe other players. But right now it seems like he knows the position better than his opponent and i mean still really Joel is just extremely complex rook, to d1. Yeah. rook to d1 good move i still following that games and we're expecting queen to c7 very okay. quickly right now let's wait let's see what they're going to play maybe we can there we go there we see vladimir a taking Akopian his seat takes his seat sees rook to d1 which is the main line right and i'm expecting queen c7 to come shortly Exactly. Let's see if he tries to remember his theory, if he still knows what he's <laughs> supposed to do. But uh, this one is going to be a double-edged fight. It's kind of strange to see a position with three, and th three versus three on the king side, <laughs> where the three for black is not h7, g6, yes. f7, but it's actually <laughs> e6. So there's an e6 pawn and an h2 pawn. <laughs> and not a usual pawn structure, no. queen c7, and for the moment, Black is a, a pawn ahead. How does White? How how does Theory say after Queen C7, White is supposed to win his pawn back? Queen to C7, and in fact, right now things are getting quite uh, complicated. Okay. Um, nevertheless, the next move, once you see it, you kind of understand 
it's uh, typical and it makes a lot of sense. And it's rook to d4. Okay. Attacking uh, the bishop b4, but also getting ready to swing the rook to h4 and create an attack against the king. Ah. Taking advantage, once again, of the fact that there's no h-pawn and potentially I have a, an h-file to work with and get closer to your king. Exactly. Your bishop is also pretty far from the fianchetto square. When right. you see the pawn on g6 in this type of configuration, you usually expect that black has the bishop on g7. That's not the case right now. So black has to contend with that as well. You cannot hold on to your pawn at this point if you don't uh, want to fall under tremendous attack. If you play bishop to c5, rook to c4 or rook to h4 are quite problematic for uh, black. So you have to go back to e7 and then right. b takes c3 is a move you're not going to take back on c3 because bishop to b2 opening up the wrong <laughs> diagonal uh, will spell bad news for That's black. So you don't want to see yeah. that. Yeah. Rook to d1, he's thinking right now, a very complex battle once again. Joel Benjamin already burned through a lot of uh, his time. Black, yeah. But we know he can play this type of positions. Joel mm -hmm. likes to attack as well. Absolutely. Uh, going back to swinging to the ladies for just a yes. moment in the girls section. We've called this game literally early, but Sophie, uh, we're expecting to w uh, that not only she's going to win, we just kind of don't even understand why her, her opponent has resigned. Shoot. What's worse than worse? <laughs> Terrible, bad, or worser? I don't even know. All right. <laughs> a worst? <Well. laughs> it's getting worse and worse. Uh, we can't get worse I, than this. It, 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 it's yeah. bad. It's bad. Because we uh, first said the position was bad, and then we were worse, and I'm, my, like my terrible, English is uh, hitting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're on the edge of uh, catastrophe here. Guys, <laughs> guys. Yes, guys, sir. Breaking news. Yes, sir. Breaking news. Mishra just blundered horrendously, no. and he's in a completely losing position right no. now. Maybe Check this out, castle, castle. Knight takes g4 came on the board after knight to d4, whoops. Resignation time, because all of your pieces are hanging. If you take on g2, I take on g4 with a check. Oops. That's okay. obvious. That's... And I'm going to pick up the bishop on g2, I'm going to be a piece up. What else can you do? Do you want to take on d4? Sure. I'm going to continue taking on d4. And once again, this knight on g4 under tremendous pressure. Also, the bishop on e4 under tremendous pressure. And once wow. again, once this diagonal opens up and this bishop uh, is taken off the board, rook to b1 with some pressure on b7 will come. And if my bishop lands on b7, don't your king is it. dead. Don't. You don't want to see that on the board. So, and he missed it. Oi, oi, oi. He played queen a4. Oh, what's in the water today, <laughs> guys? I mean, we're seeing so many blunders. This is just incredible what's happening on all of the boards right now. Knight to g4, and Christopher Yu could have sealed the deal in this game with knight to, b, uh, knight to d4. The engine was saying plus five. Oi, I, wait. Plus I, five. I think he just wasn't even looking in that direction when you're when you're castled on opposite sides of the board like you are, I mean, Christopher, I understand, you know, he's just thinking, I want to play rook b1, I want to be able to recapture with the rook, I don't care about the exchange. So, I mean, sometimes you have that tunnel vision. Yes. You have this idea, I got to go queen a4, I got to go rook b1, I got to attack my opponent's king. But knight d4 I seems like that short-term Tactical opportunity. There was Dorsa, a line that Chris please. was showing after knight d4, you know, like, well, yes. let's say bishop takes g2, queen takes g4, check, check. and let's say pawn e6, and okay. then. Are you I, sure you want to open up for your rook? Okay, fair. I mean, but if I move my queen, then my. If I move okay, the king, e6. Then, <laughs> okay, e6. Go ahead. I was just thinking, I mean, it's. It, we have engines, so we know it's terrible. And also, the position is not very fun. Everything is under attack. But yes. there is a queen takes d2. Is there anything that may... I'm trying to justify what Christopher might have thought so okay, that he so didn't go down this road. So let me take a bishop. If you'd like, you can take Maybe. on a d2, what you uh, said. Uh, let me take a rook. Any funny knight takes d4? It's any? legal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah, I'll recapture. Okay, I don't think there's... <laughs> uh, well, at just... some point, you're going to take, yeah. right? 
But then you're an exchange. We're talking about material here. All yeah. I'm, I, I'm not talking about the respective kings and whether or not you have compensation. But you can see that after I play rook d1 and I take, I'll have an exchange. Black's king looks pretty. I yeah. want to say vul vulnerable as well. Where, uh, what uh, Christian was pointing out is just look. Let's win material. You know, let's play the move knight d4. Uh, let's take this bishop, let's take this knight, let's take this knight. Uh, but continuing your thought, which is like, okay, uh, how about uh, I take on d2? Well, in this case, if you put your king here... But knight takes knight and rook b1. That's exactly that's right. Be so, you, so you have to put your king or maybe your rook. There you go. Here's maybe okay. more more along the lines of maybe what you would like is to say, okay, how terrible bad is my yeah. position? Okay. Um, I mean, material? I wouldn't wish this upon myself, <laughs> but... <laughs> Materially speaking, I think I'm just landing against your king. Mm, if you take... six coming up too. Right. Oh. You're welcome. And... Could it, we just... Oh, never mind. Yeah. Or I even just, C6 is yeah, coming. Yeah. Uh, yes, the G, G file is open, but I think... Good luck using it. <laughs> well, I'm landing the, 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 the big punch first. But the move queen A4. Okay, you tell me that uh, Christopher missed a win, Christian. I believe you. I mean, knight D4 looks like a short-term tactical opportunity, but... A huge opportunity. Oh. But, no, no, let's... let's it's oh, huge. By the way, that was yeah. not the only move. You oh. can also just take on e4 and take and go knight to d4. This is plus four as well. That's a much but simpler. That's fine. You, you you don't see knight to d4 or you don't want to leave so many pieces hanging. That's fine. Right. Play knight takes e4 and then knight to d4. That's Close simple. to the same thing because this bishop is going to take on e4, open up, and then tremendous pressure is going to land against the black king. So this is not looking good, but he played the move queen to a4. And right now, black has the opportunity of playing the move queen to b4, ah. which seems to be equalizing or at least uh, balancing uh, the situation one I, more time. I see. Um, because no, this is a big missed opportunity for Christopher. Christopher in general doesn't miss this type of opportunities. I'll well, tell you that much. I, I, I will have to say that queen b4 I have missed. I mean, because when you look at the move queen a4, optically you're thinking, oh my gosh, queen comes to a4 and across the fourth rank? How many black pieces are there? I'm ready to play c4 takes d5 and win either the bishop or either the knight. By the way, again, I really, really want to play the move rook b8 and maybe crash through. Brilliant sacrifice on b7. Yeah. But unfortunately, the move queen b4 is rather, uh, that's a showstopper. Uh, is there anything else besides queen b4? I think everything else, though, that's got to be losing. I don't think you want to take on F3. Guys, I, yes. I think we, sh we should just go to Sophie's game because we're going to see a resignation in oh. that one. Uh, I'm surprised. Go for us. No, we're finally forced to see oh, a resignation. Are we? That looks checkmate. Are you there's, sure? Bishop, there's Queen G5 coming. Oh, okay. So that's, that's a checkmate. checkmate. Uh, that's that... a checkmate. You can move the rook and then I go Queen H6 followed by Queen to G7. That's a checkmate. Uh, okay. So let's just wow. wait to see the pain. <laughs> Once again, guys, the we got to see the pain. We got to see the pain. Oh, I would love to ask uh -oh. Sophie how she feels after this game. No. Do we have a crown handy? There we go. Oh, there we go, resignation. Wonderful, wonderful opportunity. You just wow. feel, I just feel really, really sad for Annie because, again, she's playing in this national championship. Yes. You want to acquit yourself well. This wasn't a game. It was like it was, it was a, a blunder on knight f6 to d7, yes, yes. and she could have resigned it almost three months after, three months, <laughs> three moves after making that, wow. that blunder. So the game was lost. Below an hour. Good for her. This now, might be the quickest game that we've seen in this junior championships. Right. In terms in of any, uh, decisive results. Yeah. Because yes. in, in we've of, seen some draws, some good right. draws. But definitely decisive results, this might be the quickest one. Yikes. Oh. This, this is really, really not what you want yeah, when you come to I a mean, national championship. Yeah, but I mean, after Sofa's yesterday loss, I feel like she kind of, she, she this, is, this is a good thing. You know? Oh, it's, I, it's I a wanna, great thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy for her. You know, like, I feel like it's kind of, 
she's making a nice comeback. I can't even call it that because there was no comeback. <laughs> no. But... Um, I could be in the last place. If I win in 57 moves, I'll be on cloud yeah. nine that day. Right. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, but again, uh, I feel like this was simply a gift. I yeah. mean, there's no other way of putting it. Uh, a bad game, but our congratulations to Sophie as she came into today's round with a one-point lead. And she's looking at her competitors, her rivals, her three rivals, and say, you guys are going to win? <laughs> uh, because if none of her rivals win, she's clinched yeah. by, by virtue of this victory. Shall we take a look at her yes. rivals? And yes. right now, so she has a tie breaks in her pocket. Yes. Sophie yes. has a guaranteed, guaranteed tie playoffs. breaks. Guaranteed yeah. playoffs. Now, Talia will need to win today to potentially exactly. keep contact with her. And, and then, then win again tomorrow exactly. in a big clash. So she still has her fate in her own hands, Talia, right. that is, if right. she wins the next two rounds. Jennifer Yu doesn't. Jennifer mm -hmm. Yu doesn't have her fate in her own hands anymore. Exactly. She needs to bank on Talia to potentially create something tomorrow. Exactly. And she needs to win today. Oh, so awesome. is Rochelle. So maybe you guys can take a look at what's yes, happening in those games. Right. I've got the game between Jennifer and Gracie on my board. And again, as we've been saying, Jennifer uh, needs to win and she needs help yes. uh, from Talia tomorrow as well. Uh, when we left it, we left it more or less around these parts. Uh, Jennifer uh, enjoying the advantage of the two bishops. And also in this position where you're castled on opposite flanks, again, it's about getting to your opponent's king faster than your opponent gets to your king. Uh, I love the fact that with these double pawns on uh, g6 and g7, Jennifer with the move h2, h4 starts immediately eyeballing uh, this possibility of either playing g4, g5, or more simply h5 and h6. I like the fact that uh, Jennifer is, I'm going to say, a little quicker about getting a to her opponent's king. I have say, I'm not really feeling that knight on f4 just yet. I was, I mean, I was, I was kind of undecided. Maybe I wanted to go knight to c3. Oh, I, I love the h4. Everything until h4, all good. Including knight e2. Yes. I'm sorry. You, you did. Okay. <laughs> the final move of the position. Okay. Here, I didn't really feel the knight f4. I was thinking, can I just go g4, h5, just push those? Because in case I need that knight to go back to c3, it's right. already there. But if I go knight f4, I'm making more of a commitment that... I don't think it's bad, but I still... I don't know. It just doesn't sit that wonderful with me. Okay, fine. Uh, what was your... Sorry. G4. Uh, G4. Yeah, let's, okay. let's push him. Okay, right. And I see that you want to play g5 yeah. and h5, and I don't really see an alternative. You see, if bishop comes to, you you can cover yes. that with either bishop c3 or rook c2. So I, I see bishop a3 and I think, nah, that's, that, that's not a threat that's any good. So I'm going to try knight a5 hmm. uh, with the idea of putting the knight on c4 and, you know, on a good day, opening up the c file for, I hope, <laughs> Operations, future operations. Uh, All right. Now, how would that? How would it go? Well, first it, thing, if potential, you take, okay, but then the queen will the, take. Yeah. Right, you give up the two bishops hmm. with that trade. See, one Maybe. of the days. So, you, what I'm saying is that you need to play g5, h5 before you can open up a file, and careful knight. C4 is on my agenda. I um, see. I think but, with the move... So you like knight f4? Yes. Okay. I, I like knight f4 with ideas, for what it's worth, of sacrificing uh, the potential oh. for bishop to d3, knight uh. takes g6, and or bishop takes g6. Uh, I like those ideas. The All one right. thing I do have a problem, though, with is, normally speaking, when I have the two bishops, I'm looking for my two bishops to bring me an advantage in the ending. Nice. Okay? So any endings, I kind of tend to think of as being favorable for the two bishops. So here, when Jennifer dropped back with her queen, and I'm assuming she's doing that to 
keep the pieces on the board against Gracie and, and so forth. Uh, queen takes, knight takes, knight f4. I'm kind of thinking, okay, I'm a little bit better. I'll, uh, I'll play this. But, uh, Dorsa, we have a guest, so Let's we're going to go over it. to Christian. And, uh, well, I guess can only, who? I can guess who. <laughs> Sophie, uh, there's not much to say about this game. What just happened? Uh, um, yeah, like, this opening uh, was <laughs> something that, I guess I don't play that much, but <laughs> I thought I would give it a try for this game. You wanted to surprise her early on in the opening, and you definitely did. She played this move knight f to d7. What were your feelings when you realized that you can just simply take on d5 and pretty much get an objectively winning position? Um, yeah, I like looked at this um, before the game. Um, like, I think that, like, um, there's even like a different trap with like bishop b7, e4, and then knight b to d7, which is like, I also looked at with like, then there's knight takes c6. Knight B B seven and now Knight takes C six. Yeah, so like there's all kinds like this is a really tricky opening in general, I think. Um, and like Knight F to D seven makes sense if you don't see that if you like take, uh, then now D6. You have D6. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, very nice. So there are like lots of different tricks to this opening. Um, yeah, so I wasn't really like expecting Knight F to D seven, but I thought there was like a pretty I thought there was like a slim chance that it could happen because it it, it, it does make sense. Like, if you don't see C takes D5, Knight takes D5. Um, and you played it fast. You knew uh, what was happening right now. You knew the assessment of this position. Now, what are the thoughts that go through your mind at this point? With this victory, you guarantee yourself a tie break, at least. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I'm definitely a little relieved. Because <laughs> um, I was super nervous after like I lost the last um, last round. And yeah, I was definitely like, yeah, just really jittery. And I just, cause, cause at that point, like, I mean, I, I still had like a, a pretty safe one point lead, but mm -hmm. like, I, it wasn't as yeah. safe as two points. <laughs> it's, it, you're definitely not. So like, I knew like I had to do well in the next, you know, few games. So now we were having this discussion on the panel. How did you approach this game? Did you see this as a an almost must win situation for yourself? given that Anne-Marie Velia was quite struggling in this event. Yeah, I, I thought like, I, like my best chance has definitely come if I win this game. <laughs> because you have three suitors that are chasing you closely uh, behind. Did you get a chance to uh, check any of those games? Um, not that much. <laughs> Probably not that much because not that much happened in those ones. You finished in under an hour. This might be the quickest uh, decisive game that we see here at the Juniors. Congratulations, Sophie. Tomorrow still one more game to play, but we'll let you go. Get some rest and I'm sure you will be getting your popcorn ready and watching <laughs> the games of your uh, closest competitors. Congratulations, Sophie. Thank you. Wonderful. Well done indeed. And this is her very, very key matchup. Dorsa, for tomorrow. Yes, playing versus Talia, who is having a all right tournament. She's in a, a tied for second. At the moment, uh, Talia is two points behind, but she is black against Ru Yang Yan. And um, well, pieces have come off. Unfortunately for Talia, who really does need a win. At this point, I see the position, unfortunately for her, as being one that is really, really too balanced. There's nothing imbalanced about the position. And I can imagine, for example, a move like a5. You don't want to lose the pawn Fair. for nothing. And then play c6. And the pawn structure really is even with this double pawn. If you put the pawn back on f2, uh, it's, it's even all around. Again, awesome. this is a position that Talia needs to win. It's not a good position to try to win from. I What's agree. your question? I was just wondering, like, is white going to try to play d4? Is black trying to play d5? What can, what can they do about that center? Um, 
Yeah, when you had the pawns on e4 and e3, usually, normally speaking, the move d4 is rather well, a bit iffy. of a no-no. Uh, the pawn on e4 tends to get very weak. So, for example, you can imagine a, 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 just a move like knight to g6, queen e7, and you start thinking, you know what, I'm going to have to go bishop to d3 and mm -hmm. defend. I'm going to be uh, put on the back foot. On the other hand, as white, after, for example, a5, you might be thinking, ooh, look at this. I've got this open f-file. Let me do something with it. Let me play a move like rook a2, rook f2, and think in terms of a puzzle rush tactic. I you see, know, go I crush, see. Crush, 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 go, go, go attacking. And one of the other lines, I've always thought these were funny variations. I love... I, I've always ascribed the move Rook A2 and Rook F2 to Michael Bodvinnik. I saw many of his games where he did that. And then I always thought it was really funny when people went Queen to C2 and Queen to A2, <laughs> oh. putting the pressure on uh, that diagonal. It's uh, pretty cute. And that one I always subscribed to my friend uh, Duncan Suttles because I remember Duncan playing these moves like Queen uh, to B8 is black and queen to a7 going on, it's like, what? Uh, uh, doubling up, uh, making a battery from the side like that. That always uh, struck me as very uh, funny. But the problem as I see it is it's so difficult for black to make an imbalance. Oh, and Talia just played mm, c6. Um, OK. I'm a little. Intriguing. Uh, she's looking at queen b6 I as see a that, counterplay. But I, is she trying to play d5, or is she just yes. opening up the queen? Yes, both. Both. She, she's, she's playing uh, for d6, d5, and to give her queen an outlet. Okay. I think maybe white can try to kick away the bishop. The pin is kind of annoying. Or you, you, to, to, or to get out of the pin. Yes. One of the two. Like, you could go queen c2. Oh, you could yes, go queen yeah. d2 yes. uh, if the, your intent was to move the knight or get it out of the way, or as you say, h2, h3. All okay, right. so h2, h3 um, looks like a, a decent uh, move for sure. Um, I don't know, should I keep the pin? <laughs> Hard for me to tell. One, I think you shouldn't be capturing. Let's just see this. I don't think you should be making this trade. I could be wrong. Do we do it with d5, or we just do it like this? Um, I'm not sure. I'm still undecided, because I'm thinking if I could get my pawn to a6, I'd be a happy camper. And in this case, my bishop, wow. Tough for me to say. Uh, it would require more analysis. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this trade, but c7, c6, makes an otherwise dry desert a little spicy. Mm. We'll keep our eye on this. And Christian, uh, over to you. What have you been looking at? So I've been looking at the senior section, yes. uh, guys, because we Let's have some it. very explosive games, I have to say, in that one Wonderful. as well. And one of them in particular, I have to say, is the game between Larry Christensen, our leader in this section, against Alexander Shabalov. And uh, this is the current position that we have on the board. Queen to D2 just came on uh, our relay right now, a couple of seconds ago, and is the best move in the position, and it delivers a tremendous attack for white, because mm. we know bishop takes f8, this is already starting to look like a big threat. Right. Bishop takes f, so for example, if you play some Let's a6 it. move or yep. something along those lines. Bishop takes f8, if you take back queen to h6, right, and right. take a look at what's happening right now. Knight to g5 is coming, and I'm getting close to checkmating you. Your only defense is to go queen to f6, but we look at the position after this, this. First of all, a6 was a bad move just because it right. weakens the b6 pawn as well, and I can go rook to b1 or rook f to uh, uh, b1, but I can just simply go rook e1 or rook f to e1 and just keep uh, the position as it is. Ask, what is your counterplay in uh, this situation? If you try to remove this uh, knight and get it to f5, well, the problem is whenever you touch the knight, from c6 and move it anywhere you want, you're going to allow me to get my knight in the center on e5. And this is a big piece for white. Knight to d7 is a big threat 
that's a, a gain of an exchange at least. Also, this knight is getting close to g4. That's going to allow me to create more pressure on the dark squares around your king. This position is just looking like from a practical perspective, from a human's perspective, mm -hmm. forget about the engine, forget about the plus one that the engine is giving in the position. It's a very difficult position for black. And uh, knight to e7 seems to be objectively the best move, but that once again allows this move knight to e5. And you don't want to see a centralized knight. And pretty much all of white's pieces are starting to work together to deliver the checkmate or to deliver some devastating consequences on the king side. Wow. A game that we haven't looked at as we just uh, prepare ourselves to go to break. I think it's a very big game. It's between Alice Lee and Rochelle Wu. Rochelle Nee, which is one of those yes, outside yes. looking in. I need to win. I need some help. But I think Alice has played a magnificent strategic game right here. Um, when you look at the position and you just kind of say, okay, why is White's position so much more favorable? First of all, the knight is on a terrific square, as is your knight. But this knight on d4 is actually hitting something. Mm -hmm. The knight on c5 is not hitting something. Compare the bishops. The bishop on b7, a oh. little passive. The bishop on c2, not monster. so very passive at all. Uh, and we're about to see the queens uh, come. After the move, rook c8, uh, very understandable. Rochelle wants to uh, patrol the open file. But I'm anticipating Alice playing the move queen h5. If, like we see, we just saw in the seniors game uh, of uh, Shabalov and Larry Christensen, if you allow the white queen to post up on the h6 square, well, you can see a lot of dark square weaknesses, you start to imagine that there are sacrifices to be had. Even with the queen on this rank, sometimes this move knight f5, let's make a bad move. Let's just make a bad move so I can at least uh, demonstrate what I'm thinking. I can go knight f5, threatening mate, threatening mate. I see. And now the queen on b6. That's your dream position. Huh? Right, 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 right. So I'm seeing Alice, Alice um, playing the role of the spoiler, <laughs> not playing the role of the helpless victim here. And queen h5, nice advantage, Alice Lee. Rochelle needs to win. As we go on break, you've got a key boutique? I do, I do. How do you What's feel up about for today? I well, love the I sign yesterday, the oh grandmaster God, master do, parking. Yes. I think that's something's going to come home with me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fi I'll fight you for it. <laughs> that's fine. <funny. laughs> um, we do have a very interesting autographed chess board. So all of the players, juniors, seniors, girls, they have autographed the wooden board. Right. So it's a very, very cool one. Oh, look, I can see up here. There. <laughs> I saw, oh, I see Talia's, ooh, fake like signatures, yeah, Very so nice. it's a, kind of a limited edition autograph wooden board, it's signed by all of the players, the and it does have, yes, yes. Abby. It, it, yeah, that. I Abby. saw that earlier, it does have a certificate of authenticity, and it is exclusively sold at QBoutiqueSaintLouis.com. Very, very nice. And as we go to break, as we go to break, we ask the juniors playing in St. Louis how they like playing in St. Louis. We'll see you on the other side of the break. How does it feel to once again be back in St. Louis playing in this prestigious event? It feels great. Um, this is my sixth time playing, so I think from the first time I've played to now, you know, I've seen. A lot of players come and go, and a lot of players still here. So, um, yeah, it's definitely very special um, as a feeling just to have gone from one of the youngest players in the event to I think now I'm the oldest player <laughs> in the event. So th there's um, there's a lot of history for me and a lot of um, great feelings. And you know, obviously, it's always great just to be back in St. Louis. Feels great. Uh, this is my first time playing this tournament, and it's a really strong event. And I think it's a great opportunity for me to get some experience against all these great players. I'm glad to be back. Last time I was here. Um, it was in October, so it's been a while. Um, but yeah, very exciting. I actually haven't played juniors in a while now. It's a little bit weird, I guess, that I'm not playing the girls section like I usually am. But I'm very excited for this tournament. Well, I'm really excited to be here. And it's my last time, so I want to end, end on a high note. 
feels really nice. It's it's a tournament I've been waiting for, and it's a strong field, and I you know, will look forward to playing. Definitely very excited. It's quite a big tournament, obviously, and I'm very excited to play all my you know, fellow competitors. It feels amazing. St. Louis is one of the many places I look forward to coming back to. Recently, I had this amazing, I had these amazing events. One was a. Uh, the Spring Classic Group we which I won. It feels amazing to be back here. I hope my streak continues. Generally enjoyed enjoyed playing at the St. Louis Chess Club for for several tournaments. So it is always nice to uh, be here, be uh, be here and play play tournaments in, in St. Louis Chess Club. Um, it's a great honor, pre a great honor, pleasure to be back again. Um, I, my first time was actually last year, so this time I'm just you know trying to do my best. Um, and hopefully improve upon last year.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our live coverage of this, the penultimate round, as we have our first winner of the day, Woo. Sophie Morris Suzuki. Remember the name. She's at seven out of eight, Dorsa. She's well, looking she's good. Been such a wonderful event. Yes, she is. And she uh, won very, very early from the start, actually, out of the opening oh, yes. as Anna messed up her preparation, got a losing position. Um, across the board, I'm seeing once again uh, more decisive clashes as uh, Who all do you the want players. To look at first? Yeah, well, just because David Brodsky yesterday uh, really opened mm. up the tournament. Okay. Um, thanks to his victory over Christopher Yu, I'm just looking at the, at the game between David as White and Pedro Espinosa, and uh, I mean, look at the position. It's complete chaos on the board. It could be that David is just completely winning and's got everything under control, but whenever you're having a king. A po on a half open file, yes, and you start to see ideas of rook takes, well, B two check. Yeah, exactly. You don't just sit there back, and you you don't just sit back and say, "I got this, I got this." Uh, you're seeing uh, sacrificial ideas after this move by Pedro. Uh, D six, D five, and good luck. <laughs> uh, I do like this D five move. I have to say, but I'm. Like the, the the king side is also kind of up for grabs. Exactly. G six um, takes h five. It looks like there was probably a knight. G three takes h yeah. five. He didn't want to capture and open his position. If white has enough time, probably f four, f five coming up. But I don't know if white does. Uh, that looks slow. <laughs> looks a little slow. Bishop I wanted to turn our attention yes, to uh, our tournament leaders because oh, that's uh, always where wh I love to start. This is, is the. Queen? I think it came. It, oh, I think we got the yes. traded off the board. I'm sorry. I just registered this game as ah. White is winning knight d4. We'll pick everything up. <laughs> My apologies. I no forgot worries. queen a4 happened. Queen a4 was, uh, and uh, here was that tactical yes, moment yes. that Christian was mentioning that if Christopher had played the move knight d4, uh, the engines were giving White an advantage of. Four points, and in some cases even more. Oof. This was a missed tactical yes. opportunity, but I can't blame Christopher. Queen a4 sure looks good to me, uh, to my eyes, especially if you open up the fourth rank. But this is where um, Mishra found the only move, queen b4, to keep the, the, the position balanced. And I'm just going to play catch up with the players. Rook b g8. Uh, bishop h4 on the board, and well, it looks like it could be a three result game still going on oh, this, here. This game, this game is going to be so critical because if Christopher doesn't end up winning it and then he goes back and is like, oh no, I uh, had that moment. I let it slip, oh. I sure did. Uh, I wonder, uh, pardon me, Andrew Hung, Andrew, uh, half a point behind uh, Christopher, needs a victory against the number one seed. That's a big ask. A wonder Liang uh, with the black side. This was the Pillsbury attack. We had seen it up to this moment, and we were kind of really, I was warming up to a White's position very much. I was thinking that, well, uh, the only piece that isn't working, uh, if we could put the bishop on oh, h4, that, that, that would be nice. Right. Uh, another, another idea also caught my attention was, you know, like to maybe swing this knight around so that I could play knight to f5 at, at the cost of mm. a piece I'd be win willing to sacrifice. Uh, the move I didn't expect is what came up right here. After bishop e1, I was somehow expecting a pawn sacrifice. Maybe it's no good. Uh, e takes, and for a pawn, you've got a pretty unpleasant pin. You've got ideas of, of sacrificing uh, against uh, the g6 square. He didn't do that. He gave up his powerful knight, or rather traded his powerful knight, and, uh, well, a wonder did not want to see the move bishop h4 uh, arriving. He played knight h5. Pins size. are truly annoying. That's oh, what I, like, I even beginners, in beginners, the first thing I tell them, don't let opponents pin you and keep it there. And keep exactly. pinning the opponents. And, and I feel like after knight h5, uh, the position is not mm, in the favor of just white suddenly. I feel like 
um, black is got resources he's kick, he's kicking and, and over to you Christian just to build up on uh, that because you are correct yes yeah, sir this night on e5 was doing such a tremendous job so Bishop to e1 maybe sure is not the right direction but after c takes d4 what I think white should have done Andrew Hahn should have done would have been to not take on c6 and try to maintain the material ba balance but actually take the bull by the horns take on d4 allow right. Uh, uh, yourself to be down one pawn, but after bishop to h4, bishop to e7, and then f5, or Let's rook to e1, and then f5, you're gaining a lot of initiative with the white pieces, and I think this is what he should have went for in this game. By the way, forget about the engine. The engine is saying that black is better. Nevertheless, in my opinion, at least from a practical perspective, it feels very dangerous, and it would have given white quite some chances as well. So this was an option for him, but let's take a look at what's happening in this game between Balaji and Brandon. They went <laughs> straight into the line that you guys game. discussed. Right. Bishop takes e6, B takes e6, Queen to d4, Dorsa's uh, move, a very good move. Mm -hmm. F6 was played, but nevertheless, you called it ugly chess. Yes. <laughs> you right. called it ugly chess, and it is ugly chess. And not only that, but uh, the assessment of uh, this position is also ugly for black because it's very difficult to get your pieces out. This knight on a g8 particularly, and then after that, if you manage to go castle, you would be fine. But unfortunately, it's not as easy to get there without losing material. Let's take a look at how that could potentially happen. Bishop to g7, knight to c3, queen to e7. You have to defend the bishop on g7 and threaten the move f5, a nice discovery attack. Get the bishop out, lengthen its action, and this would uh, mean that black would get more or less a fine position. Unfortunately, white can just sidestep this idea with the move queen to a4. Now f5, I'm just simply going to take, open up the e file, and it's actually deadly for a black. Not only that, but how do you continue uh, this position as black? If you go knight to h6, which to my eyes makes the most sense, mm -hmm. just get the knight out, go knight to f7 and go castle, bishop to f4, and this is why the queen is on a4. Because right now, d6, not Oops. possible. Queen takes c6, right? Right. Why I'm uh, playing d6 is that the pawn on c7 is under attack, right? That's why I played bishop to f4. So if you castle, sure, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'll pick up a pawn, that's an extra pawn, and. I don't see the compensation. Do you want to play queen to d8? I mean, this is starting to look really ugly for uh, black. You played queen to e7, queen to d8, knight to a5, knight to c6. You're losing a lot of tempies. And the problem is with best moves, and not even the best moves, but maybe the second best moves in the position, white is developing their pieces uh, smoothly, while black is just having very, very big trouble getting his, king, uh, his queenside flank under uh, underway. So this is exactly what we're seeing right now. Queen to a4. I'll give a decisive advantage to white in uh, this one. Wow. And let's take a look at what's happening in the senior section mm -hmm. as well, because this is really nice. Mm -hmm. Check Vladimir Akopian's preparation, and we were discussing it. Does seem like he analyzed thoroughly this line, because check this out. So. After queen to c7, which was played very quickly, rook to d4 was something that we were discussing. Mm -hmm. At this point, Joel Benjamin had 59 minutes. He thought for 20 minutes, Ooh. another 20 minutes, and played this move, queen to b5, which is not the best move in the position. We were discussing about rook to d4. And by the way, we're still in uh, the theoretical knowledge of at least Vladimir Akopian's theoretical knowledge, probably not Joel yes. Benjamin's. He played queen to b5, a game, a move that has been played before. Bishop to d6, queen to d3, check this out. C2, C2. rook to d2, and now knight to e5. Giving up a piece right now. Queen takes d6, but check this line. Take, take. Now we're uh, taking advantage of the fact that this pawn on c2 is so close to promotion, and I play the move. Rook to d8, you take, I take, and now you're close to resignation because I go rook to d1 next move, mm -hmm. and then I follow it up with knight to d3, right? right? If you try to get away from this checkmating pattern. You cannot go bishop to d2 because I take on f3 and then I pick up the bishop on d2, right? So that's big trouble as well. If you go h3, I give you a check, then I go knight to d3, that's big trouble as well. I'm going to pick up the bishop on c1 and then promote my pawn. So you cannot do this. 
The only move after rook to d8 to continue the game is to drop back to d2. Mm -hmm. The problem is I will take, take, and now I can take on f3, take on f3, and rook to d8. Continue following it up. Follow the bishop up. Bishop to e3, rook to d1 is losing. Mm -hmm. You cannot take because I take and I promote. So you have to drop back to c1. But after this, this position, you're completely tied down. Mm -hmm. You are a piece up, but you are tied down with the white pieces. You cannot approach the rook with the king because I'm blocking you with this move f5. I'm not allowing you to play the move f4. And I'm just simply going to bring my king all the way to b3. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I will be able to sacrifice on c1, pick up the pawn on b2, and win that endgame. A very nice and very deep preparation by black, by Vladimir Akopian, and it does seem like Joel Benjamin understood that, calculated this endgame, and decided to go for this move. Knight takes c5, bishop takes c5, and rook to c2. But now black can just simply pick up the pawn. Gift me the, <laughs> the pawn, pawn h2. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, just sorry, before Dorsa. we move on, I just wanted to point out the times. <laughs> yes. uh, Joel Benjamin has down, he's down to 25 minutes. Exactly. Yes. He's been using and, a, burning oh, a yes. lot of clock. <laughs> and uh, Vladimir Kopian has an hour and 18. Mm, that says, <laughs> says it all, yeah, I would say. Yeah, we talked about 20 minutes equals potential a pawn. <laughs> right, oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, he's definitely uh, burned a lot of his clock. Yeah. I wanted to turn our attention to our leader in uh, the senior section, uh, Larry it. Christensen versus Alexander Shabalov. Uh, the players have kind of... Uh, reached the position that Christian talked about earlier, h4, h5. Larry is rocking the ramparts or storming the barricades, mm -hmm. to borrow from his book titles. Mm -hmm. uh, he's ready to sacrifice on a g6 after hg. Bishop takes g6, crashing through. Uh, Shabalov had no choice but to get rid of this uh, oppressive bishop. He went bishop back to uh, f8, queen to d2. Uh, again, eyeing up, uh, teeing up for a bishop, takes f8, uh, queen h6. And as um, Christian was saying, this desirable uh, maneuver, knight e7, to bring a piece over to the king's side, simultaneously open up the diagonal for the bishop, always is going to invite the move knight e5. And I really, really expected this move, knight e5, to land on the board a la tempo, because it sure looks to my eyes like white has a beautiful attack going, yes, you can go queen d5, threatening maiden one, I get that, but it's just a temporary threat, and after a move like f2, f3, I'm returning the punch with the threat of bishop e4. I was more than surprised that after knight e7, Larry took, and I think I just, I had this nagging feeling like, didn't he lose some of, it, of his advantage, uh, Christian, by this, oh, he, Larry had a different approach altogether. Instead of putting the knight on the e5 square, he went knight g5. Is this computer engine approved? Christian? It's not. No, 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 it's not engine approved. At least uh, it's uh, not as strong as what he could have. Right. And that was to keep the bishop on h6, actually. Right. Um, force black to take on h6 uh, himself, and then just put the knight on f5 first. The point being that the rook on f8 actually is better placed than the rook on e8. Yes. Because in a lot of uh, situations, knight takes f7 sacrifices are coming down the pipe. Right. So that's why instead of taking on f8, yeah, queen to d2 is, not, is fine. Knight to e7, and now just go knight to e5. Exactly, what I just said, yes. Exactly, yeah, yeah, now and this would be the, the right move. And how did the engines, uh, I, would, I would give white a very significant edge, actually. Uh, I don't think that this is an easy position for black to play. What, what? It was very close to a plus one advantage. A plus one, I would even have gone higher. Oscillating between but... plus one and plus 0 0.7, so that's a quite a significant advantage, okay. close to one point advantage. And because of this, uh, he, he traded, uh, he, he released the tension with bishop f8 and rook f8, knight g5, and how does the engine assess this position? It has decreased a little bit. At the same time, look, 
I'm looking from a practical perspective, a practical okay. lens uh, right now at the position, and I still see white on the offensive. I'm still seeing white as the one with more opportunities in the position. Right. Where is Black's counterplay? I still exactly. don't see that. You're still a few moves away. Yeah. I understand you're probably going to try to target my pawn on c3, rook to c8, followed it by queen to c7, but I'm just simply going to drop the rook to c1 in that case. Right. Uh, in most instances, I have a clear plan, and this is what uh, white is hinting at. I'm going to go queen to f4, followed by, if you put the knight on f5, maybe bishop takes f5, followed by queen to h4. It's all about those dark squares that you right now don't have covered in the absence of the dark square bishop. Still white for choice, nevertheless, the advantage has decreased a little bit. From a practical perspective, definitely still white for choice. I love your idea of queen f4, mm -hmm. Followed by maybe queen h4. So you want to stop me? I want to. I definitely. <laughs> I do. I. I don't like uninvited guests. <laughs> and a All queen right. on h6 is a, a definitely an uninvited guest. So how let's, about queen uh, c7? Let's uh, let's try a natural. Let's say rook to e1. Uh, the f rook. I'm yeah, assuming. Why yeah. Why not? Okay. Uh, just because I know you want to play rook c8, and I want to stop you with uh, rook to c1. Uh, yes. Exactly. And, uh, well, at some point, this, mm, I want to say, um, passive, mm -hmm. knight absolutely has to jump into the game. Should I be playing knight d5 or knight f5? Dorsa, I need some help. Kinda... You just have to come to my rescue here. I like them both. It, it's like you, you want... You want your bishop to be on d5, you want your knight to be on d5, so it's a fight for those squares. How about knight to no, f5? No, come on, Yasser. What? You to take my pawn, right? You what? You take my pawn. Come on, you're a pawn grabber. Wait. How do I take your pawn? I don't know, knight d5. Oh, oh you want pawn. me to walk into a pin? Right. <laughs> I mean, you want me to commit suicide? I want would... you to play some bad moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh -huh. We're fighting here. It's we're a fighting fight. for a bad it's, Okay, it's I'll, a I'll fall for it. Go ahead, knight d5. Rook to e5. Let's keep going. Ooh, look at that! I'm bringing all my pieces. Post up move. I Where now this is what I'm seeing. Oh, this yeah, is uh, the type of attack that I'm envisioning. Tricky. Yes. Fun business. He, if you take yes, oh. yes. I think I'm going to take on h7. What do we think about that move? Oh, you. you I. I think I'm getting killed. Uh, I, knight e2 check is my sole I solace. Knight e2. You see, you have. Tricky, You're tricky. too tricky. You're too tricky. Let's go uh, king to a2. You see, youth, <laughs> basically unsound, you know. <laughs> Just find the, the youth trick you're here, Yasser, and the you're youths. finding good moves. <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm just worried that I would be walking. It. I, I I love your position. I think you can Maybe keep those sacrifices. You, 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 you can yeah. keep those sacrifices in your pocket. I not a happy camper here. I think that you've just got me. Uh, but badly. let's go back to your move. Knight to f5. Right. right, right. Well, I do want rook c8, rook c1 included. But I, at some point, I have to put up some resistance. To your king side attack, knight f5. Knight to f5. Okay. I'm thinking that if you take, I will recapture with my pawn, and maybe my bishop can lend some defensive uh, help to the position. Not after you're mentioning. I like it much better than uh, the position you had a few moves ago. So maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm too slow with maybe this rook you want. Well, I, we're starting with queen c7. Queen c7. Let me try something else. Can we get the knight rolling? How? Uh, knight, uh, like, um, knight the, takes h7? No, no. no. Sorry. after white's move, I was thinking for black, maybe black, instead of rook c8, we could just activate the knights immediately. No, but rook c8 was nice, though. No, queen? Rook c8 was, rook? was, was what, 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 Sorry, for black or maybe for white? Maybe knight d5, to just knight start d5. pushing for rook c1. Okay. And just in case you don't. And knight f4? Yeah. Um, you're not afraid of these sacrifices against your king? Oh, yes, I am. It's not my king. <laughs> it's not your king. Good point. Good, <laughs> good, good point. It's not my king. I get to have king. fun here. Uh, I, I'm fearful. I, I really am. I, I don't know if the immediate... Maybe I can even take on g6 and take back on g6. Right. And I, then take on e6. How do we assess that position? For at two pawns... Maybe not enough. No. I don't think For it's two enough. pieces? You go queen f7. It's not enough. 
and we're kind of losing our uh, our, our our pieces. Uh, but are we afraid of queen f4? The problem is, uh, if I played a move, I don't know, like c5. Let me uh, c4. Let's go knight f4. Uh, uh, am I oh. losing my vibrancy here? Um, something like this is probably fine for black. You are hitting. Bing, bing, Once bing. the queen queens get traded, it I feels know. like it's getting much uh, much maybe easier to play for black. So, right? so maybe instead of how do you feel after knight d five, maybe bishop e four. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, I just see pins. Mm. Knight d five. Don't tell me like our colleague you're into jujitsu. Oh uh, no no no! That was that was just for my pins. <laughs> That's uh, not jujitsu, yes. No, uh, some kind of Wing Chun Aikido, Kung Fu. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, wow. Well, okay. So this game definitely keep an eye on the Joel Benjamin game. Uh, definitely keep an eye on the Max Delugi game. By the way, that was a game eager again. Max needing to win. It oh. blowed up. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. Everything. Okay, we left it here, right? I Somewhere around here, I believe. And we were thinking, uh, actually, Christian, you were mentioning F2, F3 without castling. I did. I, I thought that, that was his plan. That Delay might, castle to play F3, but he didn't. Exactly. That you might be able to utilize the half open G, or the open G file, pardon me, uh, night pack. Um, looks like pretty standard stuff. I'm, I'm eyeballing knight E5, knight F6 splat. All right. Well, kind five, of logical. Pre pretty forced. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to get killed. G3, C5 takes. Um, Max is one back as pawn. Uh, but where the, did. What's the assessment? The, the first time I want to do that's black, I want to get the queens off. Can we just go queen f5 and just be like, okay, I am. Ready to trade queens? A little bit. Okay, but okay, at this moment. Though, would you embrace this ending? Oh, Queen, how, do, how would you like to recapture her dorset? With the mm. pawn, the knight, the rook? Um, you wanted to trade I'm queens. I'm thinking about pawn, so maybe okay. I can go pawn at four afterward. Okay, this guy is hanging. This True. guy is hanging. So let's take it. I'll put a... Mm. If you play f4, I'll go knight d6. Mm, it's getting I, ugly. Fortunately, I've stopped you from playing knight f5. Maybe I should have taken back with the knight then. Okay, fair. Knight takes. Um, no immediate sacrifices on g3, h4. Don't think so. Gift me the pawn. <laughs> <laughs> Gift yeah. me the pawn. Knight takes. Any way to attack something? Okay, uh, I give up. Maybe rook takes. So if you take the pawn, I just take c5 back. Right, right. Now we're talking. I just wanted my knight to look pretty. Exactly. Okay. I do have b4 just to slow you down. Yes, you could defend if you like a6. But don't forget, I'm the one in possession of the open d file. I might land on your doorstep. I agree that white is a little bit more comfortable to play. Feels like it. But uh, I'm... I'm I'm Besides the queen here. move, because mm -hmm. one thing that you have going for you, your trump is the bishop. So you've got to think, if I could get a major piece on h1. Oh, well, I mean. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a hero, right? So you start to think, well, develop the knight. Okay. That gives me knight d4, but it also gives me maybe knight takes h4. Sacrifices. I'll drop down. And if you retake, also I'll have g4, g3. So I like knight f5. I mean, I think this is very, very double edged, but it might be that knight mm -hmm. e4 white gonna gets first. That's what I was a little too. Also, uh, white might get there first. Uh, a double edged game, Christian, but it feels like white is the first one to get in his shots. How is Max Delugi? Yes, yes. Uh, but still a double edged uh, game. and. The engine are actually saying that uh, after queen to f5, white has an advantage, but okay. is not as significant. Queen to f5, though, is very important. It, that that, that very Igor important. needs to play it uh, right now. Right now. If you play anything else, uh, white has a decisive advantage. And in fact, wow. knight to f5, I can just simply pick up the pawn. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes b5, for example. Okay. Point being that if you go knight to d4, unfortunately, that opens up 
uh, the possibility that my queen will land on g6 later on. So gotcha. fortunately, I don't think you can go there. So gotcha. um, queen f5. From Ooh. a practical perspective, right, Ursa. I still I just, I like white. I, I really like white. <laughs> and the same goes for the game against between Joel Benjamin, another very important game. Let's not forget, Vladimir right. Akopian is only half a point behind uh, the leader, Larry Christensen. And he's a pawn up. He is a pawn up. And this is my question for you guys. How easy it is, though? Uh, from my research and what I'm seeing right now on the board, I think this was Joel Benjamin's best chance to actually try to simplify the position and ask the technical questions from Black. Will you be able to actually win this endgame? I understand. We're playing for two results right now. Right. It's either a draw or a win for black. But how easy it is for black to make any progress. If you do play the move b6, then that's always going to be attacked with the move a5. And that's right. going to simplify the position even more. If we manage to exchange this pair of pawns for both uh, sides and be left with three versus two, that's going to get closer and closer to equality right. in my vision. Uh, so if you do play the move a6, well, later on, whenever we're going to start challenging each other on the D file, whenever you go rook to D8, I have this move bishop to B6, now that your pawn is on A6. So I really like what Joel Benjamin is doing. And by the way, this is already an equal position. Bishop to C7, rook takes D8, or even bishop to D4 on the board, and Check. this is actually an equal position. Bishop to E3, Vladimir Akopian, everything he wanted out of the opening. You have yeah, a better dream. position, you're playing for two results, and you're playing with the black pieces. Also, only 20 minutes left for uh, Joel Benjamin. Joel Benjamin, after he didn't know the theory and he got into a worse position, I think he's making the right practical decisions. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of time. Simplify the position. Get closer to an end game where the moves are going to come easier. Also, give this technical problem for black to solve. How are you going to defend the a7 pawn? b6 or a6? Well, right. each of them have their drawbacks. So I'm looking at the position. I'm seeing black with uh, some advantage. Nevertheless, not an easy game to convert. What do you guys think? Not easy, but uh, like you say, whenever you're playing for two results with black, you're happy. Dorsa, yeah. where would you like so to you take us? You saw me going, oh. Hey, something's <laughs> exciting you. What has yeah. got you through? So uh, the Maxime versus Igor game. Let My apologies, go. you no, went to the I, ladies, and my, uh, Igor just made a move that... We you got queen, you happy. Yeah. We said queen f5 was kind of a... Uh, necessary. kind of got to do. And he didn't do it. He went rook on a8 to c8. Yes. And what excited you for white well, about this move? What didn't excite me? <laughs> well, there's that, a pawn. That, yes, exactly. I, but did uh, you want to take with the knight or did you want to take? Well, obviously you want to want to. I can want want to take with the knight so I can so, put the knight. Exactly. Yeah, I just okay. want to start maneuvering so, around. <laughs> why would Igor uh, just voluntarily give up this pawn? Knight maybe takes he b5. There's something on c5 that he can do. I'm. Um, well, honestly, again, uh, I mean, the only thing I can say uh, on Igor's behalf is my eye is drawn to these, um, yes. I want to say, kingside l attacks. Now, uh, one of the things that chilled me when I started thinking about these sacrifices is Christian said to me, you know, there's a queen g6. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. like, for example, if I play b4 and I go sacrifice happy, mm -hmm over here and thinking checkmate, I've got to be prepared to deal with queen g6 check, which means that when I get here and the rook pays me a visit, I will never, never yes. be allowed to, uh, the queen landing on g6 will be lights out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's rook d7, and rook d7, wow, the knight takes b5, rook d7, Igor's in huge trouble. Knight takes d5. I like it. I, I mean, for Max, this is the, this is his preparation come a dream come true. No, absolutely. That one is pretty much devastating. If he does take on b5, the engine is giving plus 3.5 with that. Wow. So that's quite a lot. Right. Now, 
<laughs> let's go back to the junior girls, guys. Maybe exactly. You guys can I, uh, take a look at Jennifer Yusge. Indeed, when we left it, we left it about this move. It was controversial, let's yes. say, the move Night F4. And you didn't like it. I thought it was okay. I was expecting Gracie to play Knight A5 and Knight C4. She actually went for a move I was discounting bishop a3 because I thought it was too easy for Jennifer to defend the, the pawn on b2, and eventually this bishop is actually just going to have to go backwards. Uh, she didn't want to go backwards. Uh, Gracie played e5 saying, hey, look, if it's my turn, I'm going to play e4 and really put you on your back foot. Jennifer said, nope, uh, let me attack your bishop. The bishop dropped back. Let me attack your queen. The queen dropped huh. back. Hey, look, you're the one who's ruined your pawn structure. Let me take, take, and you know me. I, I laser focused in on the d5 pawn, and I thought to myself, if I'm in Jennifer's shoes, first of all, I really, yes, I really, really want to play h5, and I can see, I can imagine myself playing h5, h6, doc, talk, <laughs> you know, and getting mesmerized by this type of play for white. I mean, again, this bishop is just fantastical, right? But I've got this weakness. I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm seeking professional help. <laughs> but my weakness is, I want to take your pawn. I want to take your pawn. And if I can go knight takes b5, knight b6, that shuts out your queen. Wonderful. It's just all good. And I think it's big advantage, Jennifer. What do the engines say, uh, Christian? Huge advantage. Jennifer. Huge advantage. Yes, not, to, not with knight f4, actually. Not with knight f4. No, knight f4, See, knight my weakness. seven still maintains an advantage, huh. but not as much. Uh, what the engines want to do, and it makes some sense, is to take on e5 and then follow it up with h5, as soon as possible. So knight e5, knight e5, h5. Right. And G5, then, H6. Right. It's exactly the line and the idea that you are mentioning. Sure. Just soften the long diagonal and then make use of the bishop coming to C3 and tremendous pressure. attack on the long diagonal and pressure. If you allow me to do this, then yes, after this, bishop to C3 or even F4 later on, this is game over. Right. You, and it's easy to see that. It's easy to understand that even if you forget about the engine, right? It's right. easy to look at the position and say, yes, it is white who has absolutely everything mm -hmm. that they ever wanted. And black doesn't have any counterplay. Right. That's the thing. I mean, you would expect when you see a pawn on h7, weakness <laughs> on the long diagonal, that black has something on the other side. A black pawn on a2. <laughs> there's nothing happening on the other side. Right. Quiet. Quiet seas on the other side while there's a storm brewing on the king side. Nice. Not looking good. And by the way, knight takes e5 is on the board. Excellent. Wow. She's uh, playing the very precise and very forced and concrete moves. Knight takes e5, follow it up with h5. I think Gracie is going down in this one. And I was looking at the games of the other suitors closely yes. following behind Sophie. And Talia is, uh, well, getting a better position. Mm. I have to say, the rook already landed on b2. A lot of pressure is starting to pile up. I see the queen coming to d6, followed by the rook uh, doubling up on the b file. And once again, it's all about where is your counterplay mm -hmm. as white. And I don't see it. Bishop on a2, very weak. I like this uh, rook on a b2. I like the pressure that Talia is right now applying on her opponent. And let's take a look at the other player with five points, that is Rochelle Wu with the black pieces. Ooh. Well, this is different, right? This is way different than what we've seen in much calmer uh, waters right now. The bishop on b7 definitely making good impression, very nicely positioned on the long diagonal. Uh, the only problem for black is that you move these pawns in front of your king a bit too much, right? e6, mm -hmm. f6, g6. At some point, you're going to have some problems with your pawn structure. At the same time, it does seem like this is a complex position. If black manages to get the rook to g5 and play the move e5, destabilize the knight from the central position and put some pressure on g2, will potentially be better. So all of these uh, three players mm -hmm. that are closely behind Sophie Mori Suzuki could potentially win in today's round. And that will put a lot of pressure on Sophie Mori Suzuki's shoulders, as well as Talia's shoulders, because mm -hmm. she will be playing with the white pieces in the last round in a big clash 
against our leader. Uh, blowing Wonderful. up the standings this uh, penultimate round, round eight, uh, we got to give a shout out to our colleague, yes. uh, Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyser, who is managing all of our social media. Yes. And we always enjoy it, of course, when she passes along some uh, wonderful questions. And uh, Dorsa, we have a few as our Let's audience wants it. to join the discussion. Let's see, ooh, YouTube user D Force for I'm sorry. Forster. Forster. Thank you. Forster. I think it's about you now. I know yeah. <laughs> the one played the peer, but right. it's rare to see it's now in tournament play. Well, okay. They're right. asking why is that and why do certain openings fall out of favor? I love it because it creates asymmetrical positions, and so do I. <laughs> I love to. Uh, I love the perk defense, and it's one of those openings that, come, like many, that come in and out in a fashion. And it's also like one of the king's Indians. So I love to fianchetto my king side bishop, create a fortress with my king. But uh, people who are playing the Benoni and King's Indian in perk defense give up the center. And today the engines are saying, well, it's really a big advantage white. So at the very highest level, I think all the top players play perk defense, <laughs> just as all the top players play King's Indian. But when they play in the candidates, you don't see a lot yeah. of perks. Um, and that's just the way it is. Um, but just because the top grandmasters aren't playing perk defense doesn't mean that if you're an expert master class player and it's your favorite defense, do it. Nice. Don't worry that Magnus Carlsen has refuted the dragon. Mm -hmm. You play the dragon defense, play the dragon defense. Come on. I have to say, I have so many kids who are like, I've heard Karokan. It's such a cool name. I want to play it. And I'm like, oh. No, no, <laughs> no, you don't want to play. The Karaka, and wait a minute, I love the Karaka. No, you can't no, no. do this to me, <laughs> Oh, thank you but, very much. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, um, beginner, intermediate level, it's just mm. so, so hard to get them to understand the center, development, where the pieces go. And like, uh, and they're like, oh yeah, I've looked into King's Indian, let's play it. And I'm like, all right, show me how you play it. Show me a game, we'll talk about it. They're like, oh no, I've just heard the name. Ah, uh, now those, you're going, those, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. You, Every you, time that happens. You, you, you've got to do yes, some actual exactly. work. Yes, exactly. I asked for it. Show me 10 moves, show right. me a game, we'll talk about it. So one of the things I like to do, especially in the class, uh, you know, your class B, C, A, in the class, is find a defense that Ooh. you kind of suited. Like, for example, the Alakine's defense. No, you put it in the engine, the engine will say minus one after oh. 12 moves or something like that. No, 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 no. You study the Alakine defense. You make it your favorite, and it's a very rare bird. Not a lot of people play the Alakine defense, so when you play it, you're surprising 90% of your opponents. Yes. And usually, they'll go for a tame variation because they're afraid that your knowledge will be so greater, much greater than theirs that they'll, they'll, they'll climb down from the critical moves. Yep. So sometimes um, go around, give yourself a big reputation as, you know, like, hey, man, I'm the, I'm the expert in the Alakine. And everybody, mm. oh, he's the expert in the <laughs> Alakine. Let's avoid the nice. Alakine. So build that up for yourself. Find a defense that suits your style, your taste, yes. and be be loyal. I what do you think, Coach uh, Christian? No, absolutely, and especially for uh, beginning uh, players, you should play things that make you happy. Right. This is quite important because uh, if chess doesn't make you happy, then you're not going to be able to see uh, improvement. You're going to hate it, and then you're just going to quit. Pretty much, uh, that's the progression that I'm seeing from a lot of players actually mm -hmm. just beginning. So. Forget about what Magnus plays. Forget <laughs> about, sure, these are trends, right? But these players have been experiencing with so many uh, options for the past 10, 20, 30 years, right? Just see what you enjoy playing. See what type of structures you uh, like to see on the board. Physically, just see on the board. And if you like the way they look, if you understand the plans, if you can find a player uh, that you look up to and you see him as a model player and then you like the way they handle uh, those positions, well, you can go for that. 
forget about how sound they are mm -hmm. from like the 2800 uh, level perspective. Forget right. about that. Right. I remember a, a quick uh, great story we had in Holland, uh, Jeroen Paquette. Mm -hmm. He was a really, really top player, 2700 and whoosh, great talent going places and uh, the Dutch you know, rallied behind uh, their junior hero and uh, gave him a lot of training money and sent him to a training with Juan Victor Korchnoi. Jeroen Paquette loved the King's Indian defense. Uh -oh. With as much love of the King's Indian as uh, Victor had hatred <laughs> for the King's oh, Indian. Oh, no. After two weeks, Victor convinced Jeroen Paquette that the King's Indian was unplayable. But then Jeroen thought, well, if I'm going to play chess and I can't play the King's Indian, I'm going to quit. So he quit. Exactly. <laughs> he quit. <laughs> he couldn't do what gave him joy in chess. Exactly. That's the joke. Oh, okay. He did quit. He did, did quit. Did he come back? Uh, well, he's now retired. But uh, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, uh, Victor Korch, you know, robbed him of his favorite cherished uh, line of defense and yeah, it, it oh, was, just wasn't as fun. Oh, we uh -oh. have a result, and Wait. I don't think we it's a draw. I, we weren't I following. Think, I think Gurevich oh. just won that game against Melnitsky. Oh, no. Big blunder came on the board. Wow, what a destroyal by Dmitry Gurevich, and that gets him back to five points. By the way, it? that was a huge victory for Dima, as he kind of just like, whoops, I've got... Wait, I'm... Okay. Oh! So, and guess who he's playing tomorrow? It can't be. <gasps> Larry Christensen? Larry Christensen. Oh, no. With the title potentially on the line. The script Man. writer's dream, as we, <laughs> as we again are going to see, potentially, we'll see what happens with Larry's game against Shaba. But today. it doesn't matter. The title is still on the line because <laughs> even if Larry wins, he will still be within striking distance. And here it comes. I, oh. the, the, this is such an easy, easy but, blindness. So the idea is White, Igor, has just played this move Rook C1. And in White's vision, which is rather a tunnel vision, the Rook is not defended. Ah. With this move Rook C1, White is threatening a discovery. And what's really crucial about this discover threat is the fact the king is on F2. Yes. If the king was on G G1, there's no discovered threat because the rook would capture with check. So Igor had very craftily set up a trap. Undoubtedly, in Igor's mind, it was required by Dmitri to drop back with his rook to defend this rook. Dmitri overlooked Igor's threat. Dmitri just moved his knight back, and Igor said, I win! Yummy, yummy, yummy. I win! Knight takes d5. You cannot take my rook with check. It's not check. I'm taking your queen with check. And Dimitri said, excuse me, I know my, my, my rook isn't defended, but if I take your knight, the Magic bishop trick. defends the rook. Oh, boy. And Igor went, oh dear, I just blundered a piece a and bit. resigned. Yeah. A uh, gift, Today and a day second of gift, uh, uh, Christian. Uh, what wow. do you think we'll blunder a piece next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not betting anything on this tournament. The number of decisive <laughs> games that we have witnessed in this tournament obliterates everything I know about uh, tournament in national My only explanation is All that right. it's getting late in the tournament. Right. Oh, it's yeah. round and Igor, eight played a long game yesterday. He did. Yes. A he did. very last, long game against Probably Shabon. the longest game of the tournament. I mean, energy zapper. Exactly. Exactly. This is my only explanation that I can find right now. And, and I think it's here a pretty it possible is. one. And again, uh, with this victory, that means that Dimitri is currently tied with Larry Christensen. Larry is still playing. Larry has five. Larry could get to five and a half, potentially even six. But Dimitri is giving himself a shout, a shot for uh, the championship round. Wonderful. And Larry, Larry is, he's not winning no. right now. Uh, Larry has a difficult position against Shabalo right now. Uh, he did play the move Rook to E1, and now we see this very good move, and this was actually the move recommended by the engine as well. The move H6, 
Wow. I was looking at it and I was thinking, no, he will not play that. That's move, right. I mean, that's kind of suicidal. At least right? it looks like it's almost suicidal, weakening the king side even more. But in fact, it's actually just the best move in the position. Mm -hmm. Go for the pawn. Yes, sir, you would be happy with this decision, knight to e4 or knight wherever, and now you just simply take on h5 and play this position. Open up, in fact, the g file, and maybe even consider black to be going for an attack king after king to h8, h8 and rook to g8. Right. So things are getting interesting in this game, and things would could potentially get even more interesting if he takes on e6. Right, that's the Knight thing. takes e6, exactly. Like but that this. opens the possibility for pretty much anything happening in this game. Take, 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 and I understand you're putting a lot of pressure here, but I have my own attack, in fact, on this side. I have this bishop looking down the pipe to the pawn on g2. This knight starting queen to swarm takes? around the king. Queen takes h6, sure, rook to c7. I have a lot of defenders as well. Things are getting wild. <laughs> Things are getting wild in this game. And uh, we usually see Larry with a lot more time than his, his opponents. opponents. Yeah. Not the case in this one. 32 minutes for Larry, 36 minutes for Alexander Shabalov. Very intriguing fight. And you know Larry is looking at knight xe6 right now. No question about it. I, I mean, if I play the move h6, uh, to quote Victor Korchnoi, with trembling hands. Oh <laughs> because uh, you have to calculate very consequently the series of sacrifices, knight e6, knight takes f7, uh, bishop takes f5, and you have to calculate all of these sacrifices, and if you're confident, you play h6, but with trembling hands, because you might miss something. Uh, that's... Uh, I, I'm grabbing h5 right away if the knight moves backwards. If the knight goes to h3 or the knight goes to e4. Let's see. And Larry. Let's see, a big decision board. right now coming. Dorsa, the times of the players? Um, 36 minutes for Shabalov, 31 right. minutes for Larry. Okay, because again, uh, Larry Still. has been playing a yes, la tempo yes. and has, has, has been pretty good at staying ahead of on the clock. Uh, here he's slightly behind and He's hesitating. He's not ready for knight takes e6 just yet. Ooh. So the the previous um, the the blunder game that we just saw, but the <laughs> Dmitri Gurevich yes, demo yes. was the recipient so, of the um, gift. the way that they tried to you know give up a knight and get their rook, I have another game who they actually succeeded in doing that. <laughs> what game was that? And we do actually. Sorry, uh, to, no worries. To we'll come door, back door to it. Well, we definitely don't, yes. don't, 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 don't uh, leave the story hanging. Um, but uh, Christian, with a special guest, we are indeed with uh, the new co-leader, at least until uh, that game between Larry Christensen and Shabalov ends. That is Dmitry Gurevich. Dmitry, welcome back. What happened today? It seemed like a, a gift was uh, given to you. Merry Christmas <laughs> gift. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you know. I played once with Alexander Ronishuk, who has a great sense of humor. And I made some, some very aggressive move, but not a good one. And he said that it was, in, I think, in Seattle in, in the early 2000s. Uh, and he said, uh, when you made this move, I wanted to resign immediately. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which he didn't mean, of course, but you know, it means that you're not supposed to do things like that. So I was thinking that watch out for knight d5, but then I said, no, 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 bishop on the 5 can't do that. I mean, I, I, don't know, I don't see any scenario when I can do that. Um, so it was just a blind spot from yes, your opponent. But I like. got, you know, when you, when you blunder, it's usually when situation is not so great. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm not so sure, I want to check it up, but uh, I think that my patients start getting not worse, maybe a little better. You know? Oh, absolutely. No, yeah, you, you, yeah, I was, because before it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the case. You were not worse at all after knight to e8, that's for sure. Yes, but before he played rook hc1, I'm not better, definitely. It's a tough position. If, if it's a little bit, it's... But, of course, according to my understanding, yeah. Dimitri, well, this game uh, has only one story, but tomorrow there is a big game against Larry Christensen in the last round. How do you feel about that game? What is the strategy going into that game? I, I don't have too, many, too, uh, too, too much strategy. I would like to play a game. I would like to fight, uh, you know, if it's possible. Because yesterday it wasn't a fight. Gregory 
or played me very nicely and won a game. And he played very well. I didn't. I played, but but, uh, but uh, and, and he's a very difficult opponent for me. He's very strong and he's a difficult opponent for me. Uh, but I know one player who is even worse for me. But fortunately, he's not playing our tournament. He's sitting in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Because yes, against Yasser, yes, I remember back to back, I lost two completely one positions. I was very lucky to have them. Maybe we'll be able to coax him into the event uh, <laughs> oh, we'll be the next year. <laughs> Just to watch him. But, <laughs> Every you know. year we're trying the yeah. same strategies. Maybe we'll be able to yeah. get to him at some point. About Larry, I, I enjoy playing Larry. I, yes. Larry is, right now, this is a great game because Two wild players, mm -hmm. two attacking mm -hmm. players. A attacking player is very rare occurrence because people want to play positionally. Mm -hmm. Even the best players, like yes, you can't don't call him. But let's ask you about this position. Actually, what do you think Larry will do? Will he take on e6 or will he go knight to e4? Uh, okay, I'll tell you this. I doubt about knight e4, which is possible. It might be a good move, but again, uh, you know, Larry he wrote a book. <laughs> you have to consider right away, knight takes a six, h takes g6, and knight takes f7, mm -hmm. which probably doesn't work, but something similar, something might. Uh, it's kind of uh, upsetting for white to play, kind of disappointing, not upsetting, mm -hmm. to play knight g4, mm -hmm. kind of, because mm -hmm. also you, sometimes some simple moves like bishop takes f5 kind of might be a good move. I doubt it, but it might, you know. So my impression, which is... I, I, during this game, by the way, I didn't see it other games at all. And, uh, I think it was a good decision. Because it's uh, <laughs> too, you know, uh, too distracting. And very, because very interesting. Um, I would expect something. Oh, he did. He did take one. He did no, not. It's just it's, it's it analysis. It's just well, analysis. We're still, uh, we're still waiting to see what his move. Uh, Critical will position. Be. Critical position, and H six is putting a lot of pressure. I have to say on Larry. Only 26 minutes for him. We know that he's thinking about that move knight takes e6, but... Yes, it might not work. And, it, and, it might and not it's work. Kind of, and then he has to play knight g4, and then black might play g5, probably, and uh, quite a nice, quite a, re a normal position. At least from a psychological uh, point of view, if you do have to play uh, knight to e4, yeah. and don't abide by your instincts, well, unfortunately, it's going to be difficult for the remainder of the game. Dimitri, thank you very much uh, for may, uh, joining may, us. May yes. I say something about yes, this? Absolutely. We have an tournament. It's rare uh, people who we can call attacking player. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a rare activity because it's extremely difficult. People, they will play rock of one, of two, think for one hour, then play rock of one, of two, and then all suddenly it's sacrifice. <laughs> we have three people in this tournament which whom we call attacking player. Mm -hmm. it, it's definitely uh, Larry, mm -hmm. number one. It's definitely Shabalov. Yeah. They're taking a lot of pressure, they're taking a lot of risk, and, and definitely Nick, but Nick is not in good form. So mm -hmm. uh, I compare them, uh, with my students, I compare them that a uh, regular player is like a horse rider, but attacking player is like a bull rider. <laughs> so you have to sit like 10 seconds on the bull, but it's extremely, so it, I heard it was like 8,000 uh, professional or half semi-professional Horse riders, it was one only 1,000 bull riders. It was like 20 years ago. So I compare them. They take a tremendous chance, but it's extremely enjoyable to, to watch them. You know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they burn yeah. fast. That's I'm for not, sure. I'm not an attacking player. You're more of a strategical player. <laughs> I am they're trying. You know, Still in the trying. co leading position. Big game tomorrow. We're looking yeah, forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I love when they put guys who is like made one more game, who, who is <laughs> no, nowhere near the first play. <laughs> yeah. But because you have one more round, you temporarily can win first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait a Dimitri. minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Dima, Dima. Take it easy, relax. First of all, I loved your analogy between horse riding and bull riding. Speaking of bull riders, tomorrow you're going to have this big game, regardless of the outcome of Larry's game today. Just tell me how you match up with Larry. I know over the decades you guys have played in That's, plenty of U.S. championship events. What's your score? It's a story which is hard to... Uh, I always think about it, because Larry is, uh, for me, the most interesting guy to, to play, you know. Uh, first, when I came to the United States 42 years ago, and uh, Larry was of, of, already a very famous guy. He played the World Junior Championship, got second place at that time. And he was, um, at that time, extremely strong. In 1981, Larry one of the, was one of the best players in the world, you know, no doubt about it. He played in Linares, he made 8 out of 11. Uh, tied for Viskarpov. He lost a game against him. He, sh he shouldn't lose it. 
and he beat great players, Boris Spassky, Grigorich, uh, what was, you know. Uh, Portish. Uh, Portish, you know. I mean, he was, he made out 8 out of 11. He was, he was amazing. So, in my first game against Larry in US Open, he just showed me the highest class. He beat me in position, which was no worse for me, but he, is, he made some trick which I, I didn't see. And then it was classical end game, uh, Grigorich Fischer, when uh, Fischer analyzed a few hours, he did, it didn't happen. And he couldn't find uh, a draw. And I did the same thing in US Open. I analyzed the whole night, but it was Rock and G Pawn against uh, uh, Rock, which is, which is uh, it was unfortunately lost, but nothing could. And then he, uh, I thought it was just basically impossible to beat him at that time. <laughs> uh, I remember once I made the draw in, in the Rock and Pawn game, it was two pawns down, but it was a positional, uh, from a theoretical draw. So I thought, oh, it's like to win a game against him. Then I accidentally beat him in San Francisco in 1987. If I didn't beat, he would be, win the tournament. So, uh, but but his score was absolutely great again, against me. So, uh, draw was like a win. But then something happened. I got lucky in the game, uh, in one game, and then in the US Championship, I, I beat him a few times in a row. You know, mm. lucky, not very lucky. And once he blundered the rock, but I, I realized it's uh, my knight was on B7, he played rock D. Then I realized it's actually a common blunder. It's like Barif did the same thing. The knight was on G2, and he put rock on the one. So I thought, okay, I'm lucky, but not that lucky. And then finally, I won in 1996, I won a nice game against him. It just was coincidence, but it was a really good game. It was my, one, one of my best. By the way, in 1996, we had a tournament. Seven participants from this tournament out of ten played in 1996, mm -hmm. except of Novikov, who lived in a different country, Vladimir Akopin, who was, of course, a young guy, but lived also in a different country, and Max Lugi didn't play in that tournament because he was working, he was working in a bank. But seven people played that tournament, and it was very interesting how they played. And it was one of my best tournaments because if I accidentally would beat uh, uh, Alex Romanis last round, I would be a champion. You know, <laughs> it, I was better at one point, but it was. Now, Greg Buchanan had much more chance to win it again than me, but uh, Alex won it, unfortunately. He's not here, but Alex Malinsky won it. Anyway, so Larry is tremendously uh, interesting opponent. Uh, even if you don't beat him, whatever, you know, which is hard to beat him, he's a great, great player, one of the very, very best. And uh, uh, I, I remember that he couldn't beat me for 22 years. I was called, <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, that, and then finally, in 2010, my last US championship, he just crushed me. He showed me that my understanding of Sicilian very far from, uh, you know. Perfect. <laughs> from other good guys, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, uh, by the way, uh, Sicilian now is not doing very well, and I'm so glad that uh, I don't have played Sicilian anymore <laughs> in this tournament, because <laughs> it was the last chance. I, thought, I was sure that uh, my opponent, Igor, plays, plays a force, so it would be Sicilian, and I thought, oh, so good, no Sicilian. Dimitri, uh, big game tomorrow. We'll let you go, get your rest, get your preparation going, and uh, get ready for the big clash. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Dima. Oh, and we did see, and it, uh, the Larry was hesitating and fighting with himself the whole time, but we did see h7, h6, and knight h3, and Dima, when he was speaking, he said, well, if the knight goes back, knight e4 or knight h3, g6, g5, and g5 came. Uh, a la tempo, if you will, this knight on f3, def h3, pardon me, definitely does not want to stay, no. stay there, Dorsa. We're going to see f3, knight, sorry. Can we take that knight and just at least mess with the pawn structure a little bit? And then? Ah, maybe rook e5. Maybe. Rook to e5. Uh, don't forget that your knight is still... Uh, how do you say? Uh, Out of commission. Really much so. <laughs> you, you, I, I, I think you're. Uh, yeah. You haven't solved your uh, crucial problem. Um, the knight. I think it's all about the knight. If I get my pawn to f, so like for example, you use play yeah. f three. If I get my, I mean, you know, this bishop is going to kind of lord over the board. Mm. You know, I don't think you're going to get escape necessarily with a perpetual check. Again, uh, it's it's about the duel with the minor pieces. Bishop takes um, f5. It's kind of one of those things. I, I, I'd, I'd rather keep that in abeyance. Like, All I right. don't think the knight is running anywhere, right? Uh, the big question for me is can I essay the move? I Ooh. think that this is a, 
uh, I'm overplaying my hand, so to speak, when I play a move like this because I'm a little bit worried that the queen, I'm inviting the queen yeah. to land on h4. It's getting a little scary. Uh, that's scary. Agree. So maybe f3, knight back to f2. <clears throat> But, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, still a three-result game, in my opinion. I don't think white is better. I don't think black is, if, bl if black is better, I don't think it's by that much yet. We'll keep our okay. eye on this. Christian, what do you have for us? Well, actually, I was looking at uh, one of the junior games that we have. That one, Christopher the Christopher U. U versus Abimanyu game, because wow. a lot of things have happened. We entered this endgame and we weren't sure of how to assess it or also how the game will continue. Will we see a quick draw in the endgame? No. This is a very complex endgame that we have on our hands. And let's take a look. I think we left it all the way here after queen to uh, a b4 and the exchange of the queens. And let's see what happened. Knight takes e4, knight to d4 makes a lot of sense. Eliminate the bishop on e4, rook to g8. It's all about will white be able to crash through, pick up the pawn on e4 and open up the long diagonal before black can set up its attack on the king side. This is the big question. Rook to d7, rook to b1. E5, knight to F5, check this sequence out. Knight to D3, and now C6. Whoa, Don't what? allow the knight to come back to C6 and at the same time defend uh, the pawn on B7. What the C6 is doing, you are sacrificing momentarily the pawn. Nevertheless, you're forcing this pawn from B7 to go to C6. So once I take on E4, I will have a clear target. That right. knight returning to C5 will not be able to keep uh, a hold, a very stable hold of uh, the queen side. So B takes C6, I really like this move, by the way, C6, and then king to H1. Of course, you cannot take on E4 because knight takes F2 comes Whoops. on the board and that's a big problem. Also, knight takes E3 is another big problem. That's a discovery check. You have to get off the G file with the move king to H1 first. And now we have knight to C5, F3, forcing matters wow. on the king side, forcing wow. the opening of uh, this bishop. And now rook to g6 was played. But this was the passive defense, defending the pawn on c6. Makes a lot of sense. Abimanyu doesn't feel like he's in his uh, greatest shape. He lost yesterday. Uh -huh. He's uh, more or less struggling in this one. He had a big opportunity right now to take full control of the initiative with the move rook to d2. He could have played the move rook to d2 now. The problem is you can take on c6, but after rook takes h2, you get checkmate, right? This Ouch. is a problem. You, <laughs> not only that, but you also Whoops. lose this pawn, then you have to go back to h1. Otherwise, there's all sorts of uh, discovery checks. Despite the fact that you do have some pieces around my king, you don't have any checks. Absolutely no checks. 97 I take, everything is protected by my pieces. You cannot do that. You cannot take on c6. Mm -hmm. So you have to defend after rook to d2 with the move bishop to g3, defend the pawn on h2. The problem is that once again, I'm the one dictating uh, the momentum of the game. Knight to d3, attacking uh, the king side and getting ready to play the move knight to f2. This would have given black tremendous chances to potentially even win mm -hmm. this game. He did not do that. He played the move rook to g6, bishop to g3, bishop to d6. This is what we have right now, but what does he have ready rook after d8. bishop takes c6? Rook to d8. But this was just a pawn. You haven't right. gotten anything. You're just simply getting outplayed. What if I just simply drop back to d5? Where is your attack, right? right? You still have the f7 pawn that you have to guard. It's not looking good. Rook to g6, bishop to d6. It just seems like all of your last few moves, the last sequence of moves for black, doesn't tie together very nicely. And we can see it. Abimani is not happy about uh, this position. Yeah, things seem to have gone south as we, and he's reaching for his bishop is Christopher Yu, yes. our tournament nice leader. Move. And he's bishop d5. He's played it, eyeballing the pawn on f7. As we get ready for break, you were telling us a story. Oh, uh, um, not necessarily a story. I was just looking around the, the games. Uh, we did see a Belunder and uh, um, Gurevich game that yes, resulted the piece. in the, Yes. Uh, but the, the purpose of giving up the piece was to win the rook. Right. Well, <laughs> uh, someone else might should do that. Win the rook. Uh, in the junior games, uh, Bologi versus Jacobson. Let me bring that up on our Almost board. There. One more. One more. Okay. Uh, the last one. 
the last one, Jacob and sent if me. You yeah. go Back a few roughly, moves. Yeah. Just tell me when. Uh, keep going forward now. Okay, keep going forward. A little bit more. A little now. bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> and here. <laughs> There's your discovery. There's my discovery against the rook. So the queen on yeah. d2. Pardon me. The queen on d4 attacking uh, the rook on b2. Knight to d5. Uh, Brandon was forced to capture the knight, and he is in a position just where it all. Uh, he's an exchange down, and White has a, a powerful initiative. Yeah. This should be a winning position. For Balaji, a very uh, unusual uh, opening sequence by Brandon. He took a big risk in the opening, not paying off. Yes. yes. And as we go to break, I think we asked uh, the Girls, lady players, yeah, the lady yeah. players, about their preparation and how they uh, studied for these national championships. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Enjoy. How did you uh, prepare for uh, this event? We know it's a very prestigious event. What was your training routine coming into this event? I've been actually very busy this summer. Uh, I've taught a couple of summer camps and um, overall just, you know, spending time with family. But I've tried my best to still do some chess work and play some training games and things like that. And hopefully, um, hopefully my training shows at the right moment during the tournament. I've played a few tournaments before this to like kind of get back into in-person chess, so. Well, um, I'm trying to be physically and also mentally fit, fit so not only um, like solving puzzles, reviewing openings, but also just exercising and relaxing so that I'm ready for long tournament that's ahead. Um, before this event, I played in the World Open and right before that was Philadelphia International, both in um, Philadelphia. Um, so I didn't really have that much time to prepare. So basically, as soon as I got the invitation, I started like researching my opponents and like trying to see what openings they played. Um, I've just been looking at some of my opponents' games, trying to figure out um, sort of how they play, what their style is, what their openings are, that kind of thing. I played two tournaments before this. They didn't go that well, um, so I'm just, not thinking specifically about preparing just for the tournament. I mean, when the field, when the parents come out, I'm obviously gonna prepare as much as I can, but I just really wanna um, try to play the best chess I can. Uh, just the usual preparing, um, making sure that I am ready to start my games. It's been a little erratic because I had college this whole year, except for one tournament that I played, but it did not go well. I mean, I've just been playing games and checking what my opponent play my opponent's plays and stuff well i mostly just worked on reviewing my openings um i've looked a bit at the players but not too much since we don't know the colors um uh, what order i'm playing the players until tonight <laughs> Thank you. 
welcome back to our penultimate round of these U.S. championships, girls, juniors, and seniors. And guess what? We have Sophie Morris Suzuki with a stunning performance of seven out of eight as she won Dorsa early. Yes, yes, that was such a wonderful day for her. And, and would you like to take a look? No, at the I was just going to say the seniors. We <laughs> yeah, have a result. Let's go for the senior results as uh, Mr. Gurevich did have a pretty gifted. <laughs> also, game. Yes, uh, definitely yes. he was, as he said, uh, Father Christmas came early today <laughs> as Igor blundered a piece, and Dimitri now finds himself tied for first and everything to play for in uh, the uh, juniors. I just brought up a game just because it looked like Let's everything blew <laughs> up in this game between David Brodsky and uh, Pedro Espinosa. I mean, I'm looking at this rook on B2 and it's such a visual as a black is just dreaming of sacrificing his rook on A2 and blasting open the king. The last move of David Brodsky was Queen F6, potentially looking for a perpetual check and giving his, saying to his king, you take care of yourself. I'm gonna go try to make a perpetual check. But I'm looking at this rook on B2 and I'm trying to find a win for black. I think it must be there. I'm just having a little uh, difficulty. Dorsa, if you can clear the cobwebs well, for a second. Because I mean, the desired queen takes C4. All right. Let's start with that, right? So you're threatening checkmate. A little okay, bit. Okay, and I'll go check. Now let's say you're playing for a win as black. So you don't want to play king G7. So you're going to go bishop E8. So, you know, take my bishop and you've got no perpetual checks. But now you got to deal with this guy, right? So let's just go back and let's assume I'm not taking your okay. bishop. I'm going to leave that in abeyance. I'm going to play for d7, make two queens. I got to go bishop here. Yes. But now, where's the win? I'm seeing rook takes b1, queen d3, a little tickle for your king. <laughs> and that's why I've got to yes. leave my queen on f6. So we go back to the game position. Queen takes e4. Oops, sorry. This is the game position. Yes. And I start with the move. Oh, well, I, I start with the defensive move, bishop here. And I'm thinking to myself, Ooh. I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. And now, I mean, I, I feel like this is a 1200 puzzle rush tactic, and I don't even have a clue as to how you know, I'm supposed to win. The one thing that you always say is always look for checks first, right? Yes. We did miss one check. Instead of bishop b1, what if we went the other way? Bishop takes h7. After queen c4? Yeah. Bishop takes h7. Let's do it. Okay, so that's a check. So I got to take. If I move my king, I'm actually walking into a... A little bit. A checkmate. <laughs> I got had to draw that arrow. And then... Well, my first thought is uh, maybe take on f7? F7. There you go. At that's... Least we at least got a perpetual. <laughs> we do have a perpetual indeed in this game. And, and you're right, it's at least, because maybe with the mm -hmm. move G6, yep. uh, we and actually end up let's with bring more. bring the big guns. Right. Good, 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 good. Okay. I, I feel like uh, we're, we're, we're on track here. We're going to give this position more marination, uh, but we have a result also Ooh. in the seniors, I believe. Wonderful. So we heard that Kaidanov did win his game. Beautifully done. We were looking at this game. I think we we're talking about it. I believe Mr. Gorevich was also saying that Nick was not having the best tournament. Exactly. So. And uh, Gregory, yeah. for him, this is back-to-back -back victories because, right? as as Dima said, the the Gregory played a really very very nice game against him, Dima. And he felt that uh, Gregory, uh, who, by the way, is our defending champion, uh, was a very dangerous opponent. I'm just going through and the game. And we counted him out, guys. Uh, but fairly. right now he's half a point behind oh. the leaders going into the final round, given that Larry Christensen is still 
uh, playing at right. the moment. Right. So let me think. Nevertheless, about who is he playing in the last round? Maybe uh, the producers uh, could tell us. Who no, they Kaidanov never share that kind of insider just, information. Just thinking about three-way ties, just because I have to. If Larry loses today, and then Larry is playing uh, Gurevich tomorrow, Correct. they're at the same point. They would be the same point. Right. And if they draw, then <laughs> five and a half. Kaidanov wins. If my math is correct, it will be a three-way five and a half. Ooh. And Kaidanov is playing, from what we're being told, Melnitsky with the white pieces, Ooh. a player that is struggling in this event. So definitely good chances to maybe score uh, a hat-trick in the last three would rounds for Kaidanov. Wow. That's big development because we had him on the show yesterday and mm -hmm. he was saying that, okay, this is over. I'm not <laughs> playing for a victory in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm not going to win this one. But he's creeping mm -hmm. closer and closer. Now, it all depends on what's going to happen in Larry Christensen's uh, game. If he does make a draw, I think that puts him at five and a half and he will be playing against uh, Novikov, who has five. Now, that means that Kaidanov is out right. in the last round no right. matter what the result is. So he is looking at the game right now of Larry Christensen versus Shabalov, and he wants Larry to succumb to yes. Shabalov right now for him to have any chances to still win this tournament. Exactly. Just looking at the game between Nick DeFermian and Gregory Kaidanov, this was a situation, and Dima was on the show talking about aggressive attacking players, talked about Shabalov and Larry as two, Nick DeFermian being a third, but Gregory said, just a second, just a second, let me raise my hand. I can sacrifice rooks. Rook takes f5, and look at this combination. Queen h4. Guys, Rook, yes. we, we, we have another result. Oh, Maxim Glugi finished his game against Igor Novikov, and he actually won. Whoa. Very nice. Maxim Glugi won, and he's right now on five points as well. <laughs> so another uh -oh. contender. For the is seniors. showing his stride right now. Wow. And in tremendous fashion, check this game out. Check what happened here. We left it off and we didn't expect this game to be over in six moves from now, right? right. Knight to b5, queen to e5, bishop to d5, bishop to c4, rook to b8, rook to e1, queen to f6, bishop takes d5, rook takes b5, bishop takes e6. Oops. How many pawns do I have extra? Right. Two pawns, can you take on e6? Queen yes, you C4. can, but unfortunately after queen to c4, the rook is under attack, rook takes e6, uh, coming on the board and breaking through. This one is just completely dead. And Igor Novikov said, enough is enough. I've seen enough, congratulations. You got this one and Max Dlugi goes to five out of seven. Big result for Maxine, to be honest, a must-win situation for him. Ah. Let's take a look. Uh, we, we're seeing all of these uh, rivals yes. and uh, leaders fall. Let's take a quick look at Christopher Yu, because Christopher oh. is now oh. two pawns what, ahead what? against Mishra and what? winning. What happened to my pawns? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's take a look. I'm just saying that uh, it looks terrible. When we left it, we saw the move bishop d5, and I, we already understood Misha yes, was losing. Yes, yes. And My look apologies. At the, no. I was still thinking about that beautiful uh, black rook on the second rank as a side variant that we were looking at potential. Never high. got there. <laughs> yeah. The rook never got to d2. Oh, that would have been pretty. Mishra just didn't sense the opportunity. And after bishop takes e5, rook b6, Christopher Yu uh, said, look, I'm two pawns ahead. And after this move, rook f4, it's just over. It's just a terrible night to d2 on the board. Okay, one of the things is uh, about Where these is knights knight is whenever the knights do not have, when they're not supported, you keep attacking them and you drive them into oblivion. I'm smelling, yes, that's what I'm smelling. <laughs> you play a move like bishop to c3 and you say to this knight, go where? D1? D1, Ooh. and then we make it to suji, and probably not the only move, but domination of the knight. The squares that the knight could move to are all patrolled by the bishop, and this is this Pretty is all she, she wrote. Bishop c3, I think, is going to force, well, resignation might not be too strong, but it's definitely terrible, terrible. And with this win, yes. Christopher keeps his lead going into the championship round. 
And another. we have, did we see bishop d4 or bishop c? Yes, he chose yes. bishop c3. And by the way, let me just, when we came back on air, I had the game of uh, David Brodsky uh, in front of me, and now, uh, w oh, uh. whoa, Pedro, what just happened to Pedro? We, queen f6, and he dropped back with the queen? That can't be good. That can't I be mean... good. Uh-oh, g6. That one is over, guys. But that's, that's not the consequential game for our standing. The, but it's so pretty. Game. the one that is very consequential is the Jennifer Yu game. Okay. Jennifer yes. Yu versus Gracie oh, Prasanna, because Jennifer right now is just simply breaking through. Check the king's position out, check the h file being open, and I'm going to be able to checkmate you in just a few more moves. Now, mm. if you do take on d2, I take back on d2, and that actually helps me because I'm getting ready to get my queen to h2. Once again, you still don't have any play going against my king right. while I have everything going against yours. Exactly. King to f7, try to escape, doesn't work. Finally, my rook on b3 is doing something, picking up the b7 pawn with a check. You cannot go knight to e7, you have to go. Uh, you cannot go king to f7, you have to go knight to e7, but once again, I can wow. take on b7. Not only that, but I will sacrifice that exchange for uh, the knight on e7 and then take on d6 and Beautiful. deliver the checkmate. This one is pretty much over. We are going to see a resignation very soon by Gracie Prasanna, which means that Jennifer gets one point behind her opponent. And as we can see, Jennifer, it does feel like she's not even had the board. She's relaxed. She knows what's happening, and she's already getting ready for tomorrow's match. Now, Talia, as well, putting a lot of pressure on her young opponent, Ru Yang Yan, mm -hmm. uh, and could potentially get the victory in this one as well and get one point behind the leader. What do we have right now? Well, after queen takes a4, we're going to have equal pawns, but it's about the quality of the pawns. Ooh, and right. my a pawn, my, uh, well, actually, we don't have equal pawns. I forgot <laughs> that there's no more f2 pawn. I was looking at the position and I assumed that there is a pawn on f2. No more f2 pawn. This is what we have right now. White is actually a pawn down, Queen also having pawn. to fight against this past pawn very far away from the action from the theater of this position. And I have to say, I'm looking at the position, I understand. The engine is saying that it's very close to equality, but I'm looking at the game. I see knight to h4 coming, attacking the pawn on g2 coming on the board. Mm -hmm. It's not looking easy for white. From no. a practical perspective, I feel if I wouldn't have an engine in front of me, that black is close uh, to, to winning, winning, to breaking through. That's not the case, but don't give, uh, don't put too much weight on uh, the computer's assessment. In this one, I still feel like Talia is on top, and we could potentially see a fiery finish in the ladies' section as well. Red hot Oof. indeed. But once again, just to remind everybody, Jennifer has to win. Talia has to win, and then they're one point behind Sophie, and Jennifer is going to hope that Talia mm -hmm. wins, mm -hmm. and, and that will get one wins. of the playoffs, and that she Ooh. wins, and that's how uh, Sophie gets caught. But in the meanwhile, Sophie's been playing great. Yes. She won a very yes. easy, easy, easy victory today. And there's no guarantee that Talia is going to win tomorrow. True, and Sophie only needs a draw to secure Absolutely. The, the title. So. so she has draw odds, if you will. And Christopher is, uh, you know, looking at the position, Ooh. thinking, oh, I might get the title today, right? <laughs> No, 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 not so fast, Christopher, because check what's happening in the uh -oh. game between Andrew Hong and Wander Liang. Andrew Hong is right now taking over this wow. game out of the blue. We did not expect to see this, but it seems like a Wander got tempted by this pawn on B2 and took his forces away from the action on the king side. And right mm -hmm. now this opens up the possibility for White to just simply play the move queen to F3. Attack, target the pawn mm -hmm. on F7, you have to take on uh, C2. You don't have a good way to defend, in fact, that pawn. And after queen takes F7, king to H8, bishop takes C2, okay. I'm wow. getting closer and closer. You give me one more move, I'll take on G6, followed by queen to H7. That's a checkmate coming right. your way. So you have to eliminate this knight, but 
this position, the knight on g7 is completely out of play. I understand you have one check, but where's the follow-up, mm -hmm. right? King to h1, where's the follow-up? It's not looking good. One pawn to the good for white, bishop versus knight, good bishop versus bad knight, I have to say. I'm looking at the position, and if he manages to find the move queen to f3, which is not a very difficult move no. to see, you just got attacked by the rook on e8, <laughs> you might as well find a counter chance, counter attack. Queen to f3 comes on the board, we're going to see this one go uh, most likely in Hong's way, and that will also take us in the last round still very closely behind. A big race brewing between these two players, Christopher Yu Wonderful. and Andrew Hong. Yeah, and Christopher, again, we think that he's got the game won against Mishra. He's two pawns to the good. He's just activated his king, has Christopher. He's played the move king yes. on h1 to g2 to f2. And he's coming over to e2 because he wants to eat this knight on b1, which is kind of stuck on uh, the uh, b1 square. So king f2. Funnily enough, I had actually expected king f3. I'm not exactly nice. too sure why, because I had rook h4 in mind, and I just wanted to protect my pawn. King f2 was the movie's played. Looks like Christopher is uh, cruising to victory. And uh, Dorsa, we have a very special guest. Wonderful. Let's Christian. go for it. Maxim, congratulations. Welcome back to the show. An important victory for you if you wanted to keep touch with the leaders. How do you approach uh, today's game and how do you feel right now? I feel good because I actually, I just checked. I played the perfect game, which is crazy. <laughs> I've never played the perfect game before um, because I actually, during the game, I thought Black had a draw, but actually it says I'm plus 15 in that case, so I guess <laughs> not a draw. But uh, I actually learned a new opening system for this game. Um, you know, my opponent just plays basically two different systems, and so I decided I'll uh, definitely, you know, learn and just try to catch him. And I actually found a, quite an interesting idea, which was only played like eight times. With rook d1? No, Is that actually, this early or? queen c2. Early um, queen c2, okay. The, yeah, it's normal to castle, but if you play queen c2, the issue is the, the, the black takes on d4. Uh, there's actually some beautiful lines. Uh, queen c2, and the queen takes pawn, uh, we just play rook d1. And after, let's say, queen c5, castles. The problem is that uh, there are no, no normal developing moves. Like, for example, bishop g7 gets killed by knight g6, mm. and then e5. And e5, and, yeah. Uh, not even e5, bishop g6 first, and then e5. No, bishop g6 first is like completely crushing. And then, then e5, and then goodbye. Wow. Uh, so, so black has to play. So if the black can't take on d4, he, he's reduced to, number, to some limited things. For example, what he did, which is, uh, you know, he played uh, knight d7, rook d1, takes, bishop takes, and on bishop g7, it's also possible to play f3, also very dangerous for black. But I decided to convert the game into, to transpose it to the line that that is unpleasant for black, which is after castles, castles, this position. If black's pawn was still on c4 and, and white had a pawn on b3, then there are other options for black, like knight d7 or something. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but now he's already committed himself to taking on b3. Um, yeah, and b th yeah, here on b3, black has other options. Yeah, like b4 maybe, but maybe most likely like knight d7. Or knight, yeah, so some weird things. And then to actually not, when black takes on c4, to take back on, to play b4 and take on h4. It, it's compli complicated, but um, uh, but black has more chances to equalize. Mm -hmm. But the way I played One now, thing we were surprised about is that uh, b3 take, take castle, yeah. you decided to go castle instead of f3. Yeah, well, both are good. You analyzed f3 as well. I, I analyzed both, uh, but it. castles, the problem with castles is he's played knight h7 against golden, I think in this tournament, in fact, like some years ago. But after knight h7, bishop g3 is the key move, very bad position for black. So he had this position before? Numerous times, he said. I only saw one game. But, huh. but he said he had this position numerous times. It's a bad position. And, and uh, I mean, maybe it's playable if black plays perfectly, but uh, you have to really, you know, you have to really try. Right. But he played knight e8 in the game after thinking for like 40 minutes. So he obviously remembered, you know, some, some but flashback to Norcal. But at this point, he spent uh, 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, because, they don't, because, because of the move order. Because oh. he wanted to, he was like, hmm, I don't want 
this. So then when I trade on G7 and play E5, okay, this is an issue. Like, okay, the problem is if, I don't know, one line I saw, and maybe it doesn't work, I have no idea. If queen H4 and, and uh, queen takes pawn here, uh, 94, 98, uh, I thought I'd play some move like queen D2, for example, to come in. And if he plays, let's say, uh, f5 now. Well, if he goes here, then f3. And then yeah, f3. f3. But if he plays f5, I play knight f6 check. Yeah, maybe the queen has to be on c1. Sorry, queen on c1, uh, not queen d2. But the, the point is that knight f6, g3, queen h3, rook f e1. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and and bishop and bishop f1. Yeah. Yes. That was. Nice. I mean, I don't know if that was good because you know, what do I know? But, um, but it seemed dangerous. Anyway, uh, yeah, queen h4, knight e4, knight e8, queen c1. And let's get to the end of, of, of this game because a lot of games are finishing yeah, up yeah. right now. And okay, let's 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 put it forward. Yeah. Yes, let's yeah, keep so going with the moves from yeah. the game. Okay, so uh, takes takes g3 takes. Yeah, here I thought I, I thought he's okay, but 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 I'm completely winning. It's crazy. Uh, I thought he played well. I, I was kind of surprised about rook c8. I thought queen e5 immediately, but queen f5 was the the right move instead of rook to c8. Yeah, the only move. And then the black position. is like just worse, right? A little bit worse, but probably holding on oh, really? with perfect okay. moves. Okay. Very, yeah. very difficult from a okay. practical I mean, perspective. Yeah, it looks horrendous. But but yeah, a knight, yeah, yeah but here she thought queen e5, b4, knight f5. And and I was like, oh my god, should I take it? No, this move is just but resigned. But he had Well, knight, knight yes, f5. but knight f5, well, no, knight f5, I thought of rook d7, uh, yeah, knight g3. No, but queen h7, check. Yeah, no, no, not knight g3, sir. No, then I thought... Uh, Wait, what move? Bishop c6, yes. Bishop mm -hmm. c6, and I couldn't figure this out. If rook, where? If you take? If rook a7, then takes a knight d4. Queen h7, checkmate. Oh, still mate, huh? That's unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> still mate. Okay, so, so somewhere, some knight move before that. Uh, okay, so that didn't work. Okay, so that, so rook d7 is that. But he did not play that move. He allowed you to. Uh, he did, yeah, so he basically over. just resigned with bishop d5. It's basically the resignation because, like, okay, now what, what are the, <laughs> what's the compensation? Max, uh, first of all, congratulations. You're back in the co-leading position at least until the Larry Christensen game mm. is over. Who are you uh, facing tomorrow? Uh, Shabalov. Actually. Shabalov. Yes. So interesting. With that's, black, so. That, that, that's a big one, definitely. But importantly, is what he will do today against Larry Christensen. And we'll let you go back to the hotel, okay. watch that game, get some popcorn going, <laughs> and get ready for tomorrow. All right. Thank Congratulations, you. Max, as we have three decisive games in the seniors. It's like the seniors, they're just, they're dropping like flies, <laughs> and uh, the decisive, nice. the number of decisive nice. games just is going through the roof. As we see, once again, Gregory Aydanov getting the best, better of Nick DeFermian with the black pieces to score four and a half points. Right. Teresa. Wow. But so, we might be seeing a result very soon in the game between Christopher and Abimanyu because Yes, the rooks just it, got right? exchanged. I was looking at that, and I'm like, ah. We should jump to that because yes, I think we're please. going to see a resignation soon. Uh, with Christopher, <laughs> you, you, and by the way, if that were to happen, and it's going to happen pretty so Hi. soon, I believe, uh, it will be the first result in uh, the juniors You're with correct. yeah with more um, decisive games. I mean, I'm looking at a Wonder Liang; he's in trouble. I'm looking at uh, the game of David Brodsky against Pedro. And uh, it looks to me, oh. and we have a, a win. Nicely done. Good job for David. And Christopher, uh, you has just played a, a, a Tsuji move. Uh, I love that move. Bishop to c3 <laughs> against uh, uh, Mishra. And this looks terrible. And again, there's Christopher, you, yeah. our tournament leader, who uh, came in. Uh, with a loss in the previous round, uh, which spoiled uh, just a terrific result. But he still, with a victory today, will uh, be in clear first going into the championship Saturday game. And I was also taking a quick look to see who he's uh, playing what? tomorrow. He's playing Carissa. Yes. Carissa. And we haven't seen Carissa. Speaking of, From Justin what I Wayne saw, it felt versus Carissa. Dry. But I, I, it was a few minutes ago. <laughs> it looks like a kind of a, the, the position has devolved into a crazy rook and pot end game with 
Everything Pawns is under are, attack. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah. But, but there's like those to play two, and, and there's that one, and there's that one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is up for grabs. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, uh, first impression is Carissa is definitely not worse, and that maybe she's uh, interested in exploring her winning potential here. It's again, with a game with Justin Wang. Um, I was again. I wanted to. Uh, this was the the Brandon Jacobson, but no, it was the David Brodsky. David Brodsky has just yes. won. Sorry, I wonder um, when Not we left it. A great day. Oh my goodness! He didn't play. The move that you suggested, Christian. He did not. Queen F3 just looked so natural to eyeball that pawn on F7 that he was just weakened. He played Queen oh. D2. Does that spoil things? It does. It Ooh. does. It spoils the advantage. Oh no. Right now, uh, Rook takes C2 is possible. Well, Rook takes C2 because my knight is hanging. I, I have to get in the intermezzo. Exactly. I think he was tempted by this potential. And of course, king h8, queen h6, that's a checkmate, right? That's a lovely pattern, yep. But you can just simply go king f8. OK, then I will recapture the rook, I presume? Yes. Hoping for good. No, no cheapos, nowhere. <laughs> Nothing, no checks. Well, I mean, I can go mm. queen e3 if you take with the bishop. If I take with the bishop, you could go queen e3. And we go into uh, the same game. How easy is that? It well, sure. I mean, but that's just equality, right? Yes. That's a perpetual. You do have a perpetual if you want. Okay, that was my. I'm question. not going to go to e7. I think I, that was I, Dorsey's I question yeah. too. <laughs> like, uh, can, 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 can we can we try to force things? But black is not trying to win. Fair. This game. No. Okay. No, absolutely not. Black is on the defensive end, and he needs to survive. So. Uh, Trading queens is maybe giving black, uh, letting black off the hook. So mm -hmm. I'll play queen takes c2. But now queen d6, how, how clear is this position now? Well, is that an exchange? Oh, that's an exchange. And what if I take on d4? Queen takes d4, check. OK, you go queen f2. That's another pawn. How I'll many take pawns another are one. You go queen g3. I'm not sure I'm happy. And how is this position after? Maybe I can even exchange, right? Take on g3 and take on e8 with a king, and you don't have bishop takes g6 at the end. Even that, I don't think you're winning it. No. Yeah. King takes e8. That's two huh. pawns for the exchange. I should be fine. I would agree. So the Not move queen d2 is actually just uh, very bad. What I can feel thing? like the advantage. It's slipping, right? Well, slipped or slopped away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure how to describe it, but maybe just uh, uh, disappeared. Yeah, yeah, it, it did indeed. But look, there's still some pressure. Right? Yep. Yes. There's still that knight lingering around the king. From a practical perspective, still it is white who should be preferred. And by mm. the way, he played queen to d6. Not trading rooks. Not oh. trading OK, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this move? Can I just check and pick stuff up? Let's let's ask the pertinent questions. Absolutely, right. let's do it. So, I, could a wonder be preparing a queen sacrifice? And he's only getting a rook what? and a knight. I think that's what he wants. But that well, means... he's done it. Oi. Knight to f6 is on. Oh, he took that instantly. Wow. He didn't even he didn't even uh, think twice. He, when he played the move queen d6, he was anticipating this queen sacrifice, but it sure looks as if I it was unnecessary. What do we think about this uh, this trade? If my knight, if black had his knight on f4, I'd say go for it. With the knight still on g7, I would assume it's good for white. So there is there is this move d5 right now. D5? D5, yes. Wow. D4, D5. D5. OK, I was mentioning a moment ago, transfer that knight magically That's to F4, and I'm a happy camper. The move exactly D5? Exactly the reason why D5 should <laughs> Puts be Puts the played. kibosh <laughs> on oh, that idea. Let's start with the obvious. Let's eat it. Exactly. Bishop takes D5. And now I eat the pawn on A6. Ooh. OK. Let's eat that guy. Everything with tempo, right? That's. 
That's the reason of playing the move d5. Exactly. You just want to get some speed, some momentum into the position. Before the, way, the knight comes to f4. We do have another result. Balaji okay. Dalhupati did indeed win that game against Brandon Jacobson. I have to say, Brandon, with that knight to a5 idea in the opening. A well, stunning move, knight a5, did not it. get rewarded. That I mean, smells like tilt. <laughs> knight a5. That uh, just feels like tilt to me. You saw it here first. Uh, the What are we going to call this one? The, the Jacobson variation. I mean, I don't know. The, 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 the Brandon defense. I wish we could get this knight a5. I think uh, uh, there was a grandmaster from Croatia, uh, Kozul, who continued to play a line of the Sicilian, and it became known as the Kozul suicide defense. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean. It was like, wait a minute. I, 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 won, Brandon, I won against Kozul in that variation. You were yes, one of the. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a long line of people behind you, I, uh, Christian. I, I made my last uh, GM norm in that uh, tournament, actually. Really? It, it was nice. the European Championship a right? long time ago. And were they calling it the suicide? <laughs> I, I don't know how they were calling it. I just knew that Kojul was playing that all the time. And, and I prepared something. I caught him out of the opening, and it was all she wrote, pretty much. But Knight A5 by Brandon, that was taking way, way, way too many liberties. He got punished today. Our congratulations uh, to uh, Balaji for his victory. Um, where would you like to take us, Dorsa? Oh, boy. Uh, let's go back to the ladies. Okay. Um, I'm. We have Jennifer's game. It's been a while game. since we've had This it. looks really, really good for Jennifer yeah, once again. Yeah, let's go to Talia's. Talia's, absolutely. My, my slew girl. All right, slew girl. Wait. And she did play, by the way, that whole variation that Christian was prescribing. Ru Yang Yan played bishop to be one trying to save her bishop. I Talia is not aware of the fact that the engines think the position is balanced. She played the move knight h4, and like Christensen, uh, Christian said, <laughs> uh, if I had black's position, I would think I'm winning. I mean, it's an extra pawn. Right, queen and to c3. Nice and wait a minute, um, can we ask, as we say, the pertinent question? Uh, what happens if I take this guy? Uh, it looks edible, but... I don't There's think. Is it edible? How edible is it? Rook takes g2. Now, of course, I would love to come oh, back. Yeah. And it's, it's not edible. Right? It's not edible? Uh, oh, I don't come think on. So. I mean, Why? Rook d4. Queen b. Bishop d3. Bishop to d3. And. Uh, running out of cheapos. In the words of Jackie Gleason, hamana hamana. <laughs> I don't have any. Gosh. You could go queen to b8, but once again, I take on h4, and I defend at the same time yeah. on h2. Oh, man, <laughs> that is hurtful. You, just when I had a checkmate uh, landing rook h4 defense. Uh, a pity, which means that I have to play a move. I have to uh, pull back my yeah. horns and play a move like queen b4. By the way, that game with Justin and Carissa did end as we expected in some kind yes. of a, a drawn rook and pawn end game. Carissa, not having a great tournament, uh, got a couple of draws, but had some winning positions, including against Brandon, and she just had no time. And right now, she must be clinging on to uh, her only desire in this tournament, and that is to play spoilers tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Against she plays Christopher. Christopher U. Sometimes when you're having this type of events in which nothing yeah. goes your way, right. you try to find reasons right. to play on and to give your best in preparation as well as in competition. And exactly. that is right now her uh, reason of uh, being, of uh, playing in this tournament, to play yeah. spoilers tomorrow against Christopher Nice. Yes. In the 18th century tournaments and the early 19th century tournaments, to keep the tail enders, the cellar dwellers, if you will, uh, in the event, they had these big brilliancy prizes. And I mean big uh, yes. brilliancy prizes. So even if you were having this terrible tournament, if you came to the last round, like Carissa tomorrow, and you played the brilliancy of your life, you could pick up ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, the equivalent in oh. those days. So uh, that was their way of keeping you in the game. We'll see what Carissa brings tomorrow and how ambitious she is. But more results, Dorsa. Let's go for it before we start talking about the Yasser Prize. <laughs> right. Uh, David 
Brodsky did win his game against Pedro uh, Espinosa. Thank you very much. Not at all. <laughs> it was a beautiful game. And, oh yes. Uh, Bellagi? Yeah, Bellagi's game was, man. Brandon Jacobson is 9A5. I'm still mm. not very... Uh, <laughs> You're not a fan. You're no, not a fan girl. No, no. Uh, yeah, let's go. One more. Wow, the results are coming in. And right? this was the draw, I think, with Carissa, right? Yes. Justin and Carissa. Wow, our producers are so fast. I know. As soon as it finishes, boom. Exactly. Results. Nice. Wonderful. Right? Uh, it was a draw between Justin Wang and Carissa Eep. Exactly. And now, again, we were still on the Jennifer game. We didn't really finish it. It just looks like White has some kind of a, a checkmating sequence. I would really love to put my pawn on g6 and slide my queen over. Pardon me, Dorsa, where would you like to go? Up, right? uh, yes, to begin with. But I you're just looking for the killer now. <laughs> yeah, that's the fair. killer I, shot. I, I wanted to just maybe play cheap and play queen d4. But queen or david queen d4. four. Okay, uh, you would trade just, queen. <laughs> yeah. You're two pawns up. Yeah. I mean, it, this strategy of trading when you're ahead has worked for, oh, about 1,600 <laughs> years. You know? uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, that's really, really good. Sorry, with Talia, we didn't see it. Oh, she, uh, she did not play queen to b4, by the way. She defended her rook with the move queen to b5. Kind of encouraging bishop to d3. I'm not sure why. I don't like that the knight on h4 is defenseless. I mean... I feel like that knight is overstaying its welcome a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, but Ruyang has only three minutes on the clock. That is uh -oh, also true, uh -oh. yes. And how about Telia? How much time does she have on the um, clock? Eight minutes. Sec. Okay, wow. Eight minutes. So they're both getting low. But and which number of moves? Uh, move 30. 30 Ten more moves to go. Oof. Okay, and okay. No the pressure on more on white. And yes. And Ru Yang, Yan, on the other hand, again, I'm looking at the position from her point of view. Her trumps, or what you just described, the knight on h4 a little bit offside, if you will, as well as undefended, as well as a passer. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, you want to do like two things at once. You want to push your pawn to d6, and you want to play bishop e4 and contain this knight and keep your pawn on g2 defended. Uh, what would you do? I would play bishop e4 myself, but wh how about yourself, Torsa? d6 is winking at me. d6. But, but I love I, it. I see that love the it. g2 is um, being problematic, though. So Let I might. the <laughs> king take care of itself. Who the heck cares? <laughs> you know, uh, go for Not it. Not my game. <laughs> Not, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but the problem is knight g2 or rook, b, yeah. rook g2 doesn't scare me. I might be even play d7. Cool. Maybe what scares me is that I missed All the right. opportunity to put my bishop on e4 and defend g2. So I'm thinking I start with bishop e4, and the big critical question for me... What if I go f5? ...is what would I do if you go f5? Would I leave the bishop hanging and say, go ahead and take my bishop and expose your king? Oh, that's like, let's, nice. That's let's nice just move. take a look. I don't know if it works. Uh, something like this. But maybe you can start with queen c8 first. Ooh. Because I have queen d7, right? Yeah. Uh, in that position. But queen, c8 queen c8 first. This, uh, whenever oh, you get a hurts. pattern like this, this hurts. Uh, but what happened after king f7, uh, Christian? Still what if still push? go d7? Now d7. Queen g3 was played. Queen to g3. Okay. Uh, she didn't play bishop e4. Still the best move in the position. All right. Queen g3 is the best move? Best move, yeah. Let's start with, wow. can I eat that pawn? Knight takes g2. And that's the problem. Your knight, you're so happy. You won a pawn. But ask yourself, of all the squares on the board, where would your knight <laughs> least want to be? And g2. Yeah, like somehow you're kind of in the way of things. Yeah, so agree. knight takes g2, d6 undoubtedly, and bishop e4. I'm thinking, this is crazy, um, Christian, but this is a game where nerves, time trouble, and quite frankly, three results are oh, possible. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Three results on the board right now. I mean, knight to g2, bishop e4, your knight is lost. Also, First sorry, even... I think that's the easiest. 
Okay. So you can basically resign at this point. So no knight. To you cannot touch that pawn. So I got to defend the knight, perhaps, maybe with the move g5? Yeah. And that's the problem. For Lifting Talia my right kimono? Now. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I yeah, g5 defend. is a move. Um, Idea of rook takes g2. The rook is more incisive. Maybe queen to b4 could potentially be. I, I like queen b4, actually, just due to the fact that it creates a very serious trap. A trap. If I'll fall for it. F4. Okay, no, sorry. No, no. I thought you were gonna go for a. Uh, now I go. Well, I can <laughs> do that. I was thinking about queen to d2. Even. But rook takes b1 is is nice. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> You'll take the bishop, yes, right? Yeah. Give me the bishop. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So lots of tactics. Um, the double edge situation. Uh, queen b4. I, I'm okay and G5, with that. G5, that move is also on tap as well. So exactly. A lot of things could happen, but as you mentioned, guys, after G5 or Queen to B4 or anything of that nature, D6 is the big question. Right, and that's the that's the counterplay. Uh, while all the excitement is going on here, let me just check in with the Alice Lee Rochelle yes. Wu game because I... again, Rochelle is in a position where she's saying, "Hey, I'm competing for first. And she's better in a rook ending. Uh, How her, better, she, well, it's oftentimes the games are drawn because even when I'm more active, it's not yes. enough. Uh, I just compare kings, I compare rooks, and I say, okay, black's better. Can she win it? That's a different question. But uh, this king on h2 by Alice is not playing any role in the game, and it's still. You're, you're, you're a long way from putting any, um, I want to say, material gains up on the board. But g5, g4, g3, some mating chances, some mating nets. Uh, I think it's going to be a draw, but Rochelle, Rochelle is definitely for choice. Wonderful. And again, um, what other crucial games are there, Christian? Well, in the senior section, actually, yes. Joel Benjamin versus uh, Vladimir Akopian. That's this is what we game. have right now. And we were discussing at the beginning of the end game. We were saying that if we do exchange the two uh, the two pawns for both sides on the queen side, then we get into this position. Most likely, White has great chances to make a draw, and I right. think that's still the case. First of all, why not just put the pawn on g4 and stop any sort of f5 business? He decides against that. Still. What I'm seeing right now is a draw. I don't okay. see Vladimir Akopian, unfortunately for him, winning uh, this one. And that means that Larry Christensen, and let's take a look at what's Larry's happening. Larry's game. In Larry's game, right? Because we got into this end game, and it seems like anything could happen, right? You do have a majority as black on the queen side. That could become very dangerous. If I go a4 followed by b4, that a pawn could potentially uh, be uh, a deadly weapon for a black. At the same time, I see the knight on g7. It does make a very good impression. So it does feel right now that black is playing without a piece. And if I manage to involve my knight into uh, the attack, knight to d3 followed by knight to c5, I'm starting to like wise chances. It's a matter of tempies mm -hmm. right now. So let's take a look and maybe analyze it on your board. What right. do you guys think about this position? And let's take a look at uh, the players as well, because they both are under, well, actually, Shabalov is under five minutes, three minutes and 42 seconds. Oh. Larry Christensen still with five minutes and 54 seconds right. on the clock, putting some pressure on his opponent right now. His last move, A3. What do we think about this move? Now, it makes some sense, right, mm -hmm. A3, because the plan for black was to destabilize the bishop from B3 with exactly. A4. Right. A3, I like this move. What do you guys think? Uh, feels like, seriously, uh, thanks to the double rooks on the e-file that uh, Shabalov and his king are really feeling the heat. Um, and from White's point of view, if Larry can get in moves like g4 takes f5, followed by f5 to f6, he'll simply checkmate uh, Shabalov's king. So there are threats, and they're very... Very severe. This move a5, uh, like if if Larry had made a, a a decision like capturing on f5, the problem is the bishop 
will uh, lose its connection with the pawn on d5 thanks to a4. That's why Larry played the move a3, move we like, and then we had another move, rook to d6, attacking the pawn on d5. Okay, now the These first, yes, exactly, they sure are. Okay, I don't see it quite yet. Takes on f5, takes on d5. I don't have some brilliant tactical breakthrough with d6. You're not obliged mm -hmm. to take my pawn. You could take my bishop. Now we understand if the pawn were on a2, this would probably be a winning position for black, for white, for me. So let's keep going with that variation. Yes. Um, f6? You, no, bishop takes d5 first. Bishop takes d5, Let's rook take takes and d5, then f6. now f6. And now the desired check, without the bishops on the board, have I missed my target? So take, take, take uh, on rook to e8, sorry. Rook e8, king f7, forced. And now rook to e7. Rook Not knight e7. to g4, rook. Well, knight g4, I'm worried about knight takes ah, f6. Right? Clear, sorry. I mean, even in this position, I don't actually see the follow-up, but let's uh, try it out. Rook, take, rook takes e7? Um. Or king takes f6? Or king takes... I was afraid I was walking into a mate. I'm not walking into a mate? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, Dorsa. I feel I don't like... Think there's a mate here, right? Uh, you, you, you think you're just uh, coming to the promised land? <laughs> uh, what do you think? I mean, it looks scary, but I'm, that king is also becoming really active. That, that might be it, yeah. I mean, uh, this position looks good. Wow. At the same time, yeah, no, this, uh, this bishop takes e5 so, probably doesn't work. So this is the current position. We don't have to take on f5. We could defend the pawn if none of these tactics work. But I tell you, moving the king off, pardon me, moving the rook off at the e-file is not a move that will come easy to an attacker like Larry. He doesn't like defending even good pawns. Uh, on the other hand, rook e1, if you take... You're encouraging knight e4, as well as takes. I think this is great for white, right? So maybe It looks great. Yeah, I think I, maybe I should just not go for anything forcing, but maintain this, this wonderful pawn. Simple chess. Simple chess. Just rook to d1. I like it. And that creates a big threat. Taking on f5 followed by a knight to e4. Now taking advantage of that rook on d6. Not greatly placed, I exactly. have to say. I really like the rook on b6. This rook to d6 doesn't make a good impression on me. Exactly. Well, a crucial game. And again, Dorsa, if you don't mind, just oh, tell me the, uh, uh, the times. Time. From what I see, uh, they're both uh, around three minutes. So Larry has whoa, whoa, whoa. two He's minutes down. fifty something seconds. How many moves? Two forty-two. Uh, whoa, whoa. How many moves? Two, three, eleven, and they need five more moves. And he's done it. He and again, it. this is not Larry's nature, but he overcame his reluctance. He played, I think, the best move, uh, but only after looking at the alternatives very carefully. Um, what is the computer's evaluation at exactly at this moment, uh, Christian? Equal. Zero, 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 zero. E no. <laughs> zero. Oh. No. How? With Why? To E7. Man. But that's not the only move. The point being that you want to exchange uh, these rooks. You want to exchange a pair of rooks at this point and try okay. to get a breath of fresh air in the position okay. for black. Your pieces were kind of stepping on each other's feet. Now that you exchange, especially this very active rook that was putting right. a lot of pressure on the pawn on f5, this is the right way to continue. Let's uh, wait and see. And he played it. Rook e7 very, the very, board. very, very quickly. And knight d3 in response also very quickly. I like that That move. might have to be activated. It was time. That's the h3 knight, right? Right. It was, it was terrible on h3. Uh, once it landed there, it wanted to, it wanted to move again. <laughs> knight to d3 on the board. Again, I see this as a three-result three result game. Still a three-result game, guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And especially with this time situation right now. And once again, uh, the Joel Benjamin game, for those of you following closely, against Akobian. Akobian is a half a point behind Larry. He is looking for Shabalov to do some damage against our tournament leader, Larry Christensen, who is enjoying a half a point lead coming into the round. But at the moment, he is in a tie with 
D Dmitry Gurevich. There's a lot of players yes. that are looking for Shabalov to do some damage. <laughs> I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people are in their hotel rooms looking at this game right here, right Maxi now. Maxi like, Lugi, <laughs> Dmitry <laughs> Gurevich, Yakov. <laughs> Shava, Shava, <laughs> Larry, Larry. A lot of players are, uh, are rooting for Shabalov right. in this one. Right, rookie seven, knight d3 on the board. And the players are down to three minutes or two one minutes One minute each. and 30 seconds oh. for Shabalov. Uh, Take it back. One minute and 30 <laughs> seconds. And again, uh, engine, engine recommended move. Take on g4. Take on e5. What? Yeah, take on e5 and king e7. Just um, keeping the, the tension. King, get the king involved in, uh, in, in play. Taking on e5. Knight takes e5. King e7 is considered the best moves for both players. Right, but there's a lot of ways in which you can play. Even rook to c7 is okay in this position. But what? that's not a natural move. Leaving, After playing, you just played rook to e7, you want to exchange the rook, you don't feel like going back to c7. Rook right to c7 wouldn't have been on my radar. Wow. I'd like your rook e5, king e7, and getting uh, the king activated again. Well, we're going to oh, endorse see a decision. They're, they're going down on time. He's wow. down to his last 45 seconds. We need to see a move from Shabalov right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. A4. <laughs> what? A4. A4. Oh boy, would I have been reluctant to play that move because after bishop a2, I'm fearful that this knight will, ha will, will have a permanent home and my majority on the queen side will never play. a4, what a committing move. I would, I would be so reluctant to play Especially that move. so close to the time control, to exactly. the 40th move. You don't generally want to change the character of the position with the upcoming 40th move still in play. Well, not just that, but so many endings, could not, like a bishop ending could just be lost by the fact that you don't have a passer, or rook yes. endings could easily be lost. You don't have, you can't create an, a, a passer without sacrificing a pawn, but bishop, bishop a2. A2. Board. Quite, quite quickly as well. <laughs> The other, the other reason why I would be reluctant to play a move like a4, it's too easy for my opponent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna, you know he's just going to move true. his bishop away, and then it's sort of like, uh, I still have the same problem I had a moment ago. What, what was the real move I wanted to play? Shaba is going under a minute again. Two more moves. Nope, three he's more moves. He's reaching for the e5 rook. Take it. He's not certain. Taking is fine. I mean, I feel I feel oh, a little more comfortable on now knights. Now I think I understand what he wants. Okay. Shaba wants to go. Rook takes e5. And he did. Knight takes e5. Happened. Take on g4. All right. Take on g4. Okay. And now the fact that this rook is undefended, I think he finally wants to put play for knight to e6 <laughs> and knight f4. Typical All right, that's uh, Shaba. Tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, oh. He is such a tactician, always looking for the tactical... But what if you uh, just play king e7, just normal chess? I know, that's a Instead good... Instead of taking on g4, because you were mentioning that b4 square, very important square, but your knight is not going back right now. Exactly. Because knight d3 is met with bishop takes d5. Yes, there's no pin oh. on the d5. And oh. we have... Take I, on g4? I guess he's going for your line, Yasser. Uh, he's attracted uh, by the flashiness of this new knight to e6. I th well, but I mean, I. Breaking I, news? Yes, Dorsa. Did win her game. Bravo, which... bravo. Uh, again, taking on g4, king e7. I like knight e6. I understand why. No, you can't play knight e. Yes, you can. I mean, knight no, e6. Can. can I just play knight g6, check? This yes. is the last move, guys. 40th move. Of time control. But I do Once agree. again, Jennifer, yes. Yeah, no, I just want to mention, I do agree with that. You said the moves that Black were making was making white... Leading up. Yeah, but like, it was just like, you play a4, of course I'm going to play bishop a2. You take my rook, of course I'm going to take back. You take my pawn, of course I'm going to take back. So it, I think it did make Knight things. e8? Knight e8. Um, there was that move 40, by the way, Dorsa? Yes. Okay, so the players have... Made time control. Huh. Uh, gives us a moment to just catch us our breath. I think I need a break from the senior section. <laughs> it's too stressful. Exactly, exactly. Well, let's take a look at the ladies as uh, we have a, remain, a, a crucial cool. remaining game with Talia. Uh, if I know my end games right, that, that, that looks nice. <laughs> the next pawn, it's passing. 
I'm happy. Absolutely. We just, we left it around these parts. Queen G3, Queen E2 was played. Rook G1, Knight back to G6. And we've got a lot of moves. Kind of at this moment, you wouldn't be surprised by a draw. No. Rook, Queen takes. Oh, no! King G1, she gets to put uh, a rook behind the Yeah, pawn. if the rook could go F8, A8, that's kind of it. Yeah, but, but there's a back a rank mate. Yeah, yep. So usually Whoops. in these positions, you must have yeah, your rook Talia behind. Talia knows her stuff. She, Talia nice. knows her endings. That is a completely winning rook and pawn ending. And Talia will be tied with Jennifer one point behind Sophie with a chance <laughs> To, for destiny, her own destiny. Her yes. Hand. She could potentially win and make a playoff. And of course you play A4 and you push your pawn as far as you can. And then when White's king goes marching over to deal with his passer. Just bring the other ones. Then you bring your king yep. up the board and you start capturing pawns. So this is actually, remarkably enough, a, a simple winning position for Talia. Alice Lee, Rochelle, we, um, Sophie had three chasers. Oh, yes. And if I'm in Sophie's position, I'm sitting there going, okay, guys, let's see three nice <laughs> draws. No. One rival wins. No. Another rival wins. No. Could Rochelle win? Well, Alice Lee says, not so fast. Uh, I don't want to lose. She mm. just played the move H4. She did. I'm... I was thinking that I, Rochelle was going to actually play G5 herself. Not that this was a forced win or anything like that, but I had ideas of maybe playing for G4. Well, maybe that's why H4 was played. To stop? Uh, yeah. And I think that was actually a very good move by Alice. Uh, just uh, maybe on a good day she tries to sneak her king. That was my uh, question. What do you want to do with your king? For the moment, I'm just hoping that the moment this rook moves, I get to play Whoop. rook to c6. So you come down, I go down. You almost want to have your pawn on f4 when your rook lands on yeah. d2 so that you'll have f3. I don't think Rochelle uh, is close to winning this one. I think that uh, Alice could hold back one of Sophie's uh, And guys, rival. I think we've seen a result in Christopher Yu's game. Okay. Ooh. That is a victory for the leader of the tournament and right now extending his lead at the top with a game to go. Beautiful. Wonderful well, he came done. into the game, pardon me, he came into the round with a half point lead over Andrew. How is Andrew doing? Andrew is not winning. Is not winning. Is not winning. That's that's all I know. He's not. He's probably not losing. We're most likely going to see a draw in that game. I don't think any other result is very likely. There were so many likely. chances though. There's no, he's not winning. No, uh, previously, I'm trying to figure out where did it go wrong for Andrew, because I, uh, the last thing I remember is that uh, Andrew did get this uh, little bit of an advantage, a material imbalance um, by that knight We F6. left it with the queen uh, yeah, uh, captured, yeah. and we thought d5 was oh. the key moment okay. right here to uh, play, to stop this knight. But All he right. played rook, knight, Rook. Yeah. A bit too passive, allowing this knight to get into Things play. Things start to trade off a little, a little too much. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. And uh, no, this is no problem for a wonder. It's, it's kind of funny because earlier in the tournament, there was a game that Mishra was playing where it was queen versus rook and a bishop. Yes. And all the pawns were on one side. The current position, by the way, is actually uh, a wonder. He's still got this pass pawn, and if anybody's better, Whew. it's actually black, because I don't think black can ever lose these positions. Uh, can he win them? Maybe Probably one not. Per, <laughs> maybe 1% of the time, 1% of the time. Look at the game, Lajos Bordish versus uh, Yasser. And uh, I won this uh, ending with uh, Rook and Bishop nice. uh, against the queen. Uh, things were all on one side. Um, Queen to b7 was played. Queen to b7. Yeah, I'm not going to really let that pawn stay if I have the choice. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so if I go rook to d4. Uh, well, rook to d4, I just take on b5, right? Okay, so we just trade Probably. off the pawn. I was wondering if you were going to defend the pawn on g4 and allow me to play b5, b4, or 
defend the pawn on G uh, or, or not. And then this is, by the way, I think this is actually a table base because the table base is kind of, something happened on my screen that was like, dang. Okay, uh, again, uh, a lot of victories in the junior competition, only th three wins, I mean to say, one draw and a remaining game. Dorsa, what has, where would you like to go? Well, I think I'm ready to go back to seniors. <laughs> <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. And uh, in fact, um, not the move uh, knight e6, which I thought uh, might be what uh, Shaba was playing for. He said, you know what? The knight would actually be really well placed on f6. Why? Because on f6, it will be attacking the pawn on d5 as well as the pawn on g4. Makes perfectly logical sense that you would want to do that as a, as a black. Uh, remember a moment ago I said, you know, one of the things you wouldn't want to do is get into a bishop ending? Yep. Because uh, this kind of thing could be really bad news. And it might if white's king were on d4. The fact that black is about to play king e5 means black... <laughs> White is completely lost, uh, which begs the other question. What about this check? And but this? now I don't have to take, right? On d7, I can go king e7, exactly. Precisely. And then your king could end up on the ideal square, the ideal blocking square. Bishop takes d5 on the agenda, moves like rook f4. Um, my feeling is I'm looking at this and Black is just absolutely fine and maybe maybe better? Well, the thing is, it is white that missed a big opportunity. Rook to f1, the last move, the 41st move, which is a bit surprising. He did not take uh, um, longer to think about his options. Knight to g6 would have created some serious oh. trouble for black. Okay, knight g6. After king to e f7 or king to g7, just rook to e1, exactly. Ooh. And uh, guess who's showing up for dinner? Exactly, and you cannot go rook to d7, or you can, but d6 is coming. And that's an invite. That's in, it, game that's, over. That I would love. Um, um, but actually, knight g6, pardon me, uh, knight g6 is so... Cool. Di well, I, I actually, I was thinking obvious. Um, <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, yeah. A big miss here by uh, Larry. And uh, let's jump to uh, Christian, who is entertaining a guest. Guess who? Christopher, congratulations. Uh, yesterday, a difficult game for you with the white pieces, but this is what champions do. They bounce back in fashion, and you did that today. Tell us about your feelings right now, as well as explain to us the game today. I'm feeling definitely very relieved, especially after my rough game yesterday. I was feeling pretty nervous coming into this game. Absolutely, you had a point and a half lead going into yesterday's game. How did you deal with that loss? I, I can't say I deal with it in the most calm fashion. I might have thrown a few pillows and <laughs> screamed a few bad words, but once I got that out of my system, it was just about focusing on the next game. Right. Absolutely, and that you did. You came up with this uh, very interesting preparation, g4. And then, yet he came back with this idea of g5. Were you surprised by his knowledge? I was a bit surprised. I, I did kind of remember the computer flashing g5 at me when I was preparing, but I was like, you there's didn't no take way it too he's seriously. gonna play this move. <laughs> but when it came on the board, I was, quite scared for a moment, like, what kind of preparation is he up to? <laughs> and he continued. You took on g5 and he continued with uh, castle immediately played. Were you at all worried that this position might uh, be difficult for you to play over the board? Yeah, I was definitely a bit worried. And let's keep going. Now, I want to take you to this moment after knight takes g4. What were the candidate moves that flashed through your eyes right now? You played queen to a4, but what were the candidates move that you were discussing? Um, I think I also considered c takes d5 and knight takes e4 maybe. Mm -hmm. And did you consider knight to d4 at all? Not that much. 
I think I saw the at like knight g5. Knight g5. And what if you just uh, take on e4? Maybe queen to a4 right now. Mm. Yeah, I think I missed this queen to a4 move. Quite interesting. Knight to d4 was an opportunity. The computer was actually saying plus five after knight, <laughs> knight to d4. Wow. Uh, just completely crushing. And you play this move, queen to a4, and he found queen to b4 a good move. But after that, it seemed like you took over in the end game. You started outplaying him with every single move. Did you feel that way as well? I'm not exactly sure. At some point, when I felt like when I did this pawn sacrifice, I didn't actually think it was that queer. And what were you worried about after f3? And take on f3, and bishop takes f3. What were you worried about? I actually thought rook g6 was the best move. We were... I, I just didn't feel like I was playing it in the best way because I had to sack a pawn. We were considering rook to d2 right now as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought just bishop g3 though. Now knight d3. And what was uh, what was your calculation here? I actually I honestly didn't look into this variation that much. There was a funny line right now. If you take on c6, obviously you don't have to take on c6, but if you do knight f2, king g1, now you have this knight h3 followed by rook h2, Oy. and uh, and the checkmate comes on the board. It's a very visual checkmate, if you want to put it that way. Mm. So let's go back. He decided to play, uh, to defend passively this position with rook to g6. And after that, it was all Christopher Yu in uh, this game. Christopher, you, did you keep an eye on the game of a wonder versus, uh, uh, versus Andrew? Yeah, I kept a bit of an eye on it. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see what the position is now. Let's take a look at that. Maybe we can bring it on Yasser's board or that one. What do you think about this endgame? Oh. Does the Wonder have any chances whatsoever? I, I do think he has a little bit of a chance. And it's kind of nice to see that his position is very safe. I don't think he has much chance of losing this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think he will uh, try to nurse this slight advantage for quite a while from now on. Christopher, congratulations. You're uh, moving one step closer to uh, a big title for you. What would that championship title mean for you? It would definitely mean quite a lot. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, but tomorrow I'm just going to play like any other game and just focus on making good moves. Absolutely. I think that's the best strategy. Congratulations once again, Christopher. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Our congratulations as Wonderful. well, Christopher. And uh, good luck tomorrow, the championship round. If he wins, oh, he's got nice prize money. And he's got nice scholarship money of $10,000. But then he's going to have a very nice challenge of playing in a U.S. <laughs> championship. Good for have him. Have fun playing Fabiano, Lanier Dominguez. Uh, uh, get your prep, is what right. I would say to uh, Christopher. I was also thinking, if Please, uh, so. Andrew Hong Drews the draw, draws, doesn't win this, which is probably which is, not going to happen. Exactly. Uh, let's say they draw. Right. Then Carissa will play Christopher. Yes, but Christopher already has secured the... Um, a one-point lead. A tie break. Yes. At least a tie break. A tie break, yes. A playoff. But if Andrew loses... Then, then he's the champion. Yeah. He will have se secured the championship. Which what? is even better. And there's still a chance that maybe he's not going Are to hold this. Are they repeating? Uh, oh, I don't think. No, I'm, I'm sure just he's not repeating. And I'm, like, uh, he's, I'm <laughs> sure he's not repeating. Uh, there's only one player that can play for a win here. Exactly. It's a wonder. Yeah. Exactly. Very, uh, very, uh, very interesting judgment by a wonder, uh, Liang, oh, to like sacrifice his queen with this variation with queen f6, because that was by no means necessary. And maybe he was slightly worse at the moment that white could play d5 
Andrew missed his chance, and Andrew is struggling now, suddenly, uh, to hold the draw. Well, we'll keep that in mind. And again, seniors uh, the seniors, I'm very, I'm, again, I'm very curious what well, Larry, Larry did not play the move knight g6, by the way. That's just huh. my analysis board. Oh, well, maybe he did. Maybe Excuse a me. little too late, actually. Yeah, exactly, maybe too late. He first played the rook to f1 check, and, and now he played knight to g6. I guess he's got, well, he's still got to play rook e1, doesn't he? But his, I, I have this awful feeling that he missed a golden opportunity. You have to play king d8, because king f7 would be egregiously... Is, excuse me, uh, an opportunity, or is he worse right now? Well, if I'm he thinking loses the d5 he's worse. pawn, it's just... Um... Well, I just was looking at this crazy line. <laughs> nice cheapos. Nice cheapos. Knight to h8. It looks a little funny. If you try to play rook to d7 to stop me, that's <laughs> what I'm trying to play here. But if you take my pawn, I take your bishop. I agree, g4 is hanging. This is not the way I want to play as white, by the way. Uh, but uh, because I'm a little bit worried that I'm the one. Everything is falling. Right? Like no, no, um, this is exactly the way you want to play this game. Oh. You do? It's pretty much the only way to play this game. Oh. For Larry. For Larry, right now. If he doesn't find this rook to e1 followed by knight to h8, then he's in big trouble. Oh, really? Okay. Big, big trouble. Um, and if he finds it, probably he has good chances of holding, but it is still Shabalov who is putting on the pressure. Exactly. So if we go back to the moment where, where instead of that move rook f1, which was bad, had he played knight g6 immediately, what was the computer's assessment of Larry's position? Uh, decisive advantage. Oh. Deci so decisive he went from advantage. a winning position to a, to worse a slightly po worse position, yes. Ooh. With his and, 41st move. In this fourth, fifth hour of play, uh, just missed his moment. In uh, fact, this, this is what the engine is recommending. Knight to g6, king to f7, and just give up the piece. How? Rook to e1, bishop takes d5. And just allow... Just allow rook to e7. So bishop takes d5, take on d5, rook to e7, followed by rook takes e8, and just try to survive this one. But it's not... First of all, it's not an easy decision to yep. just simply give up the piece like this. And then oh. not an easy calculation and pretty much survival situation right now because I yeah. can go rook to e5, take on b5. I have so many ways in which I can play this position with the white pieces. Go exactly. for the h pawn as well. That's a strategy that I could employ. Right. This one is only white that's playing for a victory. Two results. Yep. Two results. So uh, that that was uh, um, maybe how the do nerves. You say? He maybe the nerves got to him. Got right? to Larry. And. Uh, he did play rook f1 and helped his opponent, and we think that after rook e1, king d8, Shabbos for choice. I wanted to quickly, uh, Vladimir has been nursing an extra pawn for some time, but yeah, he sure doesn't anywhere. feel <laughs> any closer uh, to uh, making a breakthrough against Joel Benjamin. That game looks like it's heading to a draw. By the way, Vla Vladimir comes into the round a half a point behind. If Larry were to draw, and this game's a draw, how many people would that's, be tied for first? That's five people. Five people at the top. Like what? Five <laughs> A people log jam at the top. Tied for first. Uh, Larry would need to lose, though. Yes, that's what yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if Larry loses, and there's a possibility that he might right. fall in that position. I mean, he is slightly worse right now. He has played rookie one. King d8 for Shaba is definitely fourth. Uh, a a five-way tie for first? Five-way tie for first going <laughs> in the last round. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, no. Dorsa, let, uh, help uh, me out here. Oh, boy. Uh, we started with ten people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a ten-round round, round robin. You put up a playoff where I asked you, what happens if three or four players well, let's tied take a for look fours? At what if there's five Never people? mind two <laughs> players. I, I didn't ask about five. Tell me what we're going to do with five. I mean, three coin or four. Toss. I vote coin toss. Coin toss. I, I like the roulette wheel. Uh, what say you, Christian? No, absolutely. Coin toss. Five coin players. Coin toss it is. Coin Kick some out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Take, take it easy on the uh, on the Remember, commentators. Uh, we
Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, we're actually being told that in case of that, you have some mathematical formula where if, where players get eliminated, uh, and then you have the playoffs. There's uh, always going to be a playoff, but no coin toss. <laughs> no coin toss. But you're not going to get a six or seven or something like that. You're going to eliminate players based on head-to-heads, uh, lower rated, uh, strength of schedules, all kinds of weird stuff. And I'm sure we're going to have. Uh, I think uh, arbiters actually tomorrow. just say, wow. "He's my favorite. I'm going to go." With <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Alphabet, I mean, you have three alphabet, arbiters, right? You alphabet. have three arbiters. Yeah. Each one of them pick their own uh, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that makes the most sense. What about to me. the commentators? <laughs> right? <laughs> Nobody cares Don't about we? Us. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Isn't that the worst feeling in the world? I mean, everybody remembers who was the champion. They <laughs> oh. never say, oh, that was where you guys were commentating. None of that. Just doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Terrible. Um, wow. Uh, where would you like to go, Dorsa? Uh, we were just seeing this game of Larry um, Christensen, and we're watching Larry. Ooh, he didn't play Knight H8. He oh. did not. We're watching Larry spoil he's, things, he and he realizes. Look at him. He's now really digging in deep, uh, and he's as focused as he can be. But he realizes he's he's, he's blown his advantage. A little bit, yeah. No, no, he hasn't blown his advantage. He's lost right now. Oh. Wow. Lost. That's cruel. Why? Knight takes g4. Gift oh. me the pawn. Gift me the pawn. Well, that. Where's your compensation? Knight to f5, rook f6. Well, when you put it like that. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know, Dorsa. We're watching uh, a big, big turnaround in this senior you championships. Me, yeah. um, where do I want to go? Yeah. I want to go on break. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's it. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. <laughs> and we're going to see you on the other yes. side of the break. Good. Welcome to the chess capital of the United States. The St. Louis Chess Campus in the heart of the vibrant Central West End has established itself as a premier global destination for chess and is comprised of two unique nonprofit institutions. The Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis is recognized as the top chess facility in the world and plays host to all major tournaments, including the U.S. Chess Championships and the Sinkfield Cup, one of the strongest chess tournaments globally. Tournaments are broadcast online to more than 150 countries led by an expert commentary team of grandmasters. The Chess Club is an educational organization committed to promoting the game of chess with a specific focus on bringing the benefits of chess to children throughout the St. Louis area. Research shows children who play chess exhibit improved analytical skills and increased confidence. The Chess Club is highly engaged with the local community, bringing scholastic chess programs to more than 100 schools, providing hundreds of classes each week. Directly across the street from the Chess Club is the World Chess Hall of Fame. This one-of-a-kind cultural institution invites visitors to experience chess in imaginative ways and is home to the U.S. and World Chess Halls of Fame. Cutting-edge exhibitions feature rare, historic chess artifacts paired with world-class art. Innovative programming explores the intersection of chess, art, and culture. Visitors can enjoy interactive programs designed around the exhibitions and monthly music in the galleries. The World Chess Hall of Fame is nothing you expect and everything you love. Three different galleries and a premier gift shop highlight the culture, history, and creativity behind the game. Come visit, play chess, leave enriched. To learn more about the St. Louis Chess Campus, visit stlchesscampus.org.
Hello everyone and welcome back to our live coverage of the 2022 U.S. Girls, U.S. Juniors and U.S. Seniors Championships. And uh, we have a result as we're coming on, on the air. Perfect as, timing, Yeah, actually. I was about to say, uh, Alice and Rochelle, Alice Lee and uh, Rochelle will have made a draw. Rochelle, in order to keep pace, needed a win. So a little bit of a disappointment, but I think it was actually a very well-played game. So yeah. mm, no harm, no foul. Wonderfully done. And that yeah. means that the Rochelle is out of contention. For yes. the title. For the title. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, and we uh, still Je have Talia, who is still fighting, as well as Jennifer Yu, who actually won her game. How so. is that game going? The, one the Talia game. Yes, well, please. let's take a look at that one and see. We had that end game that we thought it just easy win, right? Yeah. Exactly. They're behind the pawn, and I don't think anything has changed. I'm just going to use this king, go to f5. Where are you going to go next? Exactly. I still don't see. And at some point, I will give you the a pawn if you try to keep the king where it is right now. So, for example, if you go king to d5. Try to keep opposition and stay right. there. You're not going to allow my king to go to the queen side. Then I can give you a check, move the king backwards, and then give you the a pawn. But at the same time, grab both of these pawns, and your king is very far away. You're not going to be able to defend exactly. this one. So this is another way to potentially get the victory and uh, create the separation between these two players. Right now, king to e6 is on the board. We believe this one is going to go Talia's way. Exactly, and again, before the game, uh, before the result between Alice and Rochelle, uh, there was two wins out of two. Yes. Uh, the number of decisive games in all three events has just been, for me, I've been calling events for a decade longer. <laughs> Astonishing, I'm just not used to seeing this many victories, Dorsa. Wonderful. I mean, uh, uh, and it, it just is that the players have come to St. Louis, Ready juiced to fight. and ready to fight. And, I, and huh. one of the things I must say that it's the atmosphere here as well. You come into a really beautiful club, you sit down, you've got oh, these nice yes. pieces, you've got yes. these nice sets, yes. you've got these arbiters who are making sure that every need that you may have is being taken care of. And you feel like, you know what? I really want to do my absolute best. And uh, that's what is we're witnessing the the club is bringing out the best in the players yes it's quite quite beautiful it's wonderful yes <laughs> guys, that's next? Tell you? okay uh, i guess christian has some news well, for us check the game of larry christensen I, the big just, game that we have oh, right no. now on our hands larry versus shabalov mm -hmm. do you want me to give you the assessment right now it's minus five i'm not huh. even going to uh wow. wait for you to tell me yes it's <laughs> minus five Wow, so this black is, is like game over with the best moves for black. And well, the best moves are not that difficult. Well, the problem Rook is this knight on g8 yes. is just dead, right? It's dead. It's dead. Controlled it's not dead. by the knight oh, on g4. Oh, and I can't even do d6. Okay, that hurts. d6 will give you a checkmate in <laughs> one bit, move. Yeah. So That's even something like rook c5, if, you, if you're worried about bishop takes d5, oops, that lights out. Or it's, rook to c3. Or rook to c3. Rook to c3. What do you do next? Rook to c3. I am assuming I've, I'm going to close my Bishop eyes. Bishop to a6. Uh, Bishop a6? Sure. Why not? This is not the lazy man's variation, but I do understand that my bishop is crying. Yeah, King all to the c7. pieces just got bad so fast. <sighs> This is not looking good, guys. No, well, it's not. Well, now I just simply have rook to c. That's, that might be a problem, actually. Actually, just uh, my king. Uh, you, you craftily, that might be a problem. You craftily put your bishop uh, on a6. I, did, uh, I was completely unaware that my king. So rook right. to g3 followed by bishop, bishop to e2. Oh, God, this bishop hurts. E2 or, or bishop to d3. Yeah, Even either one. Bishop three, maybe you have knight f six. I I think it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. I yeah. think it's Poor just gone. Larry. Wow, what a extraordinary turnaround. Turn of events, guys. Wow, and it was so. It was. <laughs> I, I want to say. I mean, nothing ever. In these tournaments, it's like nothing ever is simple. But in this case, I have to absolutely say, this was simple and straightforward. It was a check, king f seven. Rook e1, nothing could be more obvious than uh, dropping the rook in on the e7 square, which is what you wanted. 
uh, when you opened up the e-file ages ago. Uh, big deal, uh, Vladimir Kopian has gotten the best he could ever hope for, and it still doesn't feel like it's enough. Uh, Christian, that still feels like uh, Joel is managing to draw that game. I wanted to go... He should be able to, but at the same time, doesn't that feel like maybe he's getting closer to a yes. potential yes. breakthrough right now? I just feel like e5, e4 might come on the board at some point, maybe e5, mm. f4 as well. I just need to get the king somehow into right. play. Right. I mean, it might be time that we have to re release our king. But the problem is, once you do that, I actually think I just exchange the rooks. Really? That, that endgame, I think, is a very easy draw. Because you'll be able to play king and exchange one pawn as well? Yes, I think so. Okay. And maybe I don't even have to exchange the pawn. I just leave the king on e2, and that's it. Well, he's not leaving his king anywhere. Uh, Joel is uh, taking a walk. Uh, with a, the move a King C4. Wanted to turn our attention to the junior games uh, because it was that a wonder game that really had junior girls or oh girls? sorry junior uh, junior junior juniors. Uh, and again, a lot of decisive games here. Andrew uh, versus a wonder. I wish this I could is... just play Queen H7 in that moment. Right. Remember that wonderful game uh, lasted forever in the World Championship. Uh oh. <laughs> this does not look like a very happy Andrew here. Uh -oh. He is, seems to be suffering. But Remember the uh, World Championship um, Dubai? Uh, game six that lasted forever and ever where oh. Magnus with his king oh. and he just very carefully guided his pawns up the board. Well, uh, I wonder is, is taking a page out of his Magnus Carlsen book and somehow he's creeping up the board, whether it's serious or not. I kind of just want to play queen f7 right now. Queen f7. I want to throw in a cheapo. <laughs> well, I, I can very, very well understand Thank why you, you would uh, want to checkmate me. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll throw in a cheapo. Ooh, wait. Can't I can't do it. Why can't I take? But I can't that, make that, the no. I can't do it, I can't do it. The, the computer won't let me make an uh, illegal move. We have a guest in studio. Let's go for it. Ah, uh, hate it. <laughs> we are indeed with Jennifer. You, Jennifer, yesterday you came uh, to the show and you said, I'm going to take it one game at a time. And this is exactly what you're doing. How do you feel right now? And what do you, how do you feel about the round as a whole? Um, <clears throat> I think this game went pretty smoothly. Uh, I probably didn't play the opening that accurately. Um, I had, like, I assumed she prepped something, and I, like, kind of didn't remember my lines that much and also just wanted to get her a little bit out of prep. So I, f I think I probably didn't play the most accurately, but um, at some point I think I started outplaying her, and I don't think there was any big problems. So it was pretty good. <laughs> and what about Sophie's game? Like, what oh, yeah. was your take on that? <laughs> I saw it, and then at first I thought she, it was like some, I didn't know she was down by a piece. Her opponent, so I thought um, he was like down by a pawn at first. And I was like, okay, maybe some just some opening thing I don't oh. know about. And then I realized she was down by a piece. I was like, okay, well, that happens, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you're still maintaining striking distance to mm -hmm. Sophie, and she does have a very uh, difficult match against Talia tomorrow. How uh, do you feel about your chances? Are you thinking about that game between these two ladies at all, or once again, you're just focusing on your own game? Um, well, I don't really like to leave it up to other people to decide how my tournament goes. So, um, I mean, I guess it's really out of my hands, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna obviously trying my best to win tomorrow, but it's not like I'm not going to count on um, that game changing my tournament. And let's take a look at today's game as well. Now, just uh, simply tell us where do you feel like you're taking over and where do you feel like you're building up a decisive advantage? Yeah, so after um, e5, uh, knight d3, e5, um, yeah, around this point, it's she's starting to go backwards, and then I have an initiative to um, start pushing on the king side, and I think this is just much better now for mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. um, and she didn't seem to be able to build anything on the queen side. Yeah, I think like my rook on b3 is actually pretty strong because it prevents... Um, Black from really doing anything, and 
uh, the bishops and queen is, are defending my position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we thought as well. And uh, it seemed like the conversion went quite smoothly for you. Jennifer, congratulations. We'll let you go. We'll let you uh, get some rest and get ready for uh, tomorrow match. A big one. Congratulations. Wonderful. <clears throat> congratulations, Jennifer, and good luck tomorrow in our championship Saturday edition of these uh, U.S. championships. Do you think we'll actually have playoffs? Pardon? Do you think we'll actually have playoffs? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask one more time. No, no, no. Uh, we have had some very long broadcasts, haven't we? Guys, <laughs> we're going to have five players tied for the top in, in the senior section. You are I, not. I think we will have playoffs. You like, will look, not. I'll call it Is today. it too late I think to do we will coin have flips? Playoffs. You're not allowed to say that. Uh, five players played five in players. one of the three events. It's incredible. It's and, incredible what's happening. Uh, and... It was a turn on a dime in that game between Larry Christensen and Shabalo. And right, right now, it seems like Shabalo is uh, just uh, having full control of his mm -hmm. destiny. We are going to have uh, some stats for you tomorrow because I'm more than curious if, whoa, whoa, if whoa, whoa, Talia... Whoa, whoa, guys, guys, what's, Wait, what's happening well, where's here? where's my knight? If Talia and... Uh, Did I What? Lose? What is happening here, guys? Wait. Is... Well, uh, you're going to lose the h5 pawn. Yes, it's going to take, yes. take bishop f3, but is this a winning bishop ending? I, 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 I'm stunned that... Wait, wait, wait uh, there's a knight there. What? Oh, there's a knight on yes. h6. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I assumed it was a bond. I feel <laughs> like, I feel like uh, Jennifer, who came in and said, "Oh, he's a, she's a pawn no. out. There must be something that's a knight, okay, that's not a, knight. a piece." Okay, well, that's a completely that different story. Things. That is funny. That bird's eye view uh, uh, surprised us all. No, it must be winning. I mean, it's an extra piece. It's full stop. Nothing to be. Nothing to discuss. Bishop f3, you take the pawn, and uh, you're a happy camper. As Larry will tumble down the ranks, and for Shabalov, winning with the black pieces, what a dream. Wow. More or less on demand is what he did uh, here today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to see our bishop and knight versus uh, king. We're going to see the mate. You think so? I think so. I think we're going to go straight into that. It's and, good. Uh, Shabalov will have to show his uh, prowess. I've actually never seen that live happening. I've always seen the after games. You know, I'm trying to think in my whole tournament practice, I, I've had just about every endings you can imagine, queen versus rook, rook and bishop versus rook, many, many times, maybe as many as seven times. I've never had bishop and knight versus really? never. I've never had it. Uh, I, I really haven't even had two knights uh, versus a pawn either. No, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, me too. It's like uh, certain end games that we learned mm, and it never happened. And king? Uh, hey, king of the hill. King of the hill. <laughs> You're right. Uh, he would win. <laughs> king e4, that would be a winning move. King of the hill. Um, so how would how would you go about winning this, or at least explaining it to your students? How would you uh, start for black, uh, Christian? Well, I, I think you have to keep uh, the king close to the queen side, first of all. Um, because if you don't, then the a pawn might be running away. This looks bishop like to a, e8, I a really, really like good this move. starting move. Yes, yeah? because now the bishop cannot be traded. For no. Me. You have to drop back with the bishop, and that's going to allow me to give the check, bishop to uh, c6. And now, then you have to declare where you want to put your king. Right, right. And maybe I don't even start with bishop exactly. King, king to d6, not allow the king to go to e5. Right. And now bishop to c6 is coming on the board. After that, king to c5, pick up the a pawn, and then move on, start pushing the g pawn with the help of, uh, of your king, and at some point force the bishop to be traded for the g pawn, and then convert with bishop and knight versus uh, king. Makes sense. Uh, that looks like. And I think Shabalov 
is, is pretty sure of and yeah. pretty certain of what he has to do right now. I mean, the way he's sitting. Exactly. That is the look of a very, very confident man, and almost as if, you know, I studied this position. <laughs> <laughs> and right it's all now, part of my prep. Probably you can even start going G4, right? G4, G3, mm. G2. And then get the knight in. But he's or you can start with the knight. knight. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like, uh, again, you're already... Knight e3 check could be a mm. potential fork, so you have to play what Larry did, which was king back. And you were mentioning king c5 to b4 as one way. He's, he's uh, dealing with the position in a much cleaner uh, way than, than, than we are, I have to say. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> what is it? Why did you say we? <laughs> we had this all, 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 we owned endorse and I, we got this. <laughs> And let's wow. not forget, Dennis is in the truck cheering on his pig. That is Shabalov. I thought he's dead in the water a couple of games ago, and Shabalov is coming back yesterday. I mean, what a save against Melnitsky. He was <laughs> dead <laughs> at move oh, uh, 15 my with the white pieces. Actually, it was checkmate in a few moves at was some point. Was he ever it, dead? But we are about to see bishop e4 check, king yes. d4, knight e3. And you're right, we may be getting... The knight and bishop combination. Oh, we ending. We will for sure see that. I don't think Larry is going to to uh, resign, right? Once you force the bishop to be given up for uh, the g pawn. Mm -hmm. You might want to see Shibalov's technique. By the way, I know that there's a software tool that uh, coaches are using. Uh, where they can say, okay, uh, you play against the computer engine and you've got 30 seconds to uh, show me the mate. Do you use those tools for your uh, students? Uh, Are you trying to get I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to, get, trying to give you a winning grade, you. you know, like if yeah. you know what is coming up, if you know what the challenges Keep are going to be. Keep asking my new coach all type all the, of questions. Let right. Me. <laughs> That's I, the I, idea. I, I don't know what software you're talking about. Yes, sir. I have no really? Idea. No the, 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 it might be on Lee Chess. They have some engines. They're training mm -hmm. tools uh, that they use. And I like this move, bishop b5 too. Knight Sound e like a gimmick to me, yes. Uh, Sounds like a gimmick to me. No, no, Okay, no. now bishop a6 followed by king to d4 if you don't go king to c5. I think that will actually force The bishop is hang, hanging on d1. There's no reason to take it right now. Yeah. Right. Just uh, go bishop, bishop a6, a6 hide and the bishop king away. to d4. I just want to bring your attention to the Please. Andrew and a wonder game. Because there is a very uh, lovely ah, there we go. I just wanted to bring up the pawn game that you're about to enter. Pawn ending. Well, queen takes g two. Yeah. Ah. King takes g two. Yes, that's a draw. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, just two moves ago, it was quite interesting that the queen and the king and queen were just like whoop all the way in the all the way cellar, uh, as right? You know. Exactly. <laughs> but it. Right. But yeah, this is a, this is a draw. Yeah, and they accepted the draw. Wonderful. So that kind of concludes our round eight for the junior section. Right. What was interesting is just before the end, a wonder had laid a wonderful trap. I see. He played this move rook g2 check and said, please take my <laughs> rook. And in this case, this is actually a losing yes. uh, king and pawn endgame. It may look identical to the final position. It's not. After the move king g4, king f2, king f4, white is actually winning. In the game position, oops, excuse me, uh, in the game position, they got this where it was black the move. So you got to push that pawn. <laughs> right? And, and uh, then I step in front of it and yes. it's a draw. Wow, okay, so two draws. Oh. oh, this is over. The big game of our section. For Larry the resigned seniors. after Bishop A6. Whew. What a. He's not happy. No, what a Phoenix for. He is not uh, happy. Alex Shivalov, he has come out of nowhere, if you will. Uh, was in the crypt, and uh, now he's in contention. 
holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> And it all started, this, this whole comeback started with that game against Kaidanov, with the black pieces when he was completely lost. Right. And yet he managed to swindle I his joke. opponent. Right. And after that just started this resurgence within the rankings. He won that one, I think he won another one, and now a third one in a row? Is that No, I think he drew against Melnitsky, but still yes, three and a half out of the four in the last four rounds. That's just a ridiculous score. Right. Um, and yes, Shabalov is just coming back. Now we have a five-way tie <laughs> at the top with a lot of these players actually playing against each other right. tomorrow. So okay. this one so is we going can't to be a have fantastic a one. <laughs> we cannot yes, have we a fantastic... Uh, we, we cannot... We can. Actually, if everybody so draws, we can. Exactly. <laughs> you were not allowed to say how many playoffs we because oh, it's a commentator's curse. The moment a commentator says, and we have a clear champion, no, we don't. <laughs> we have a six-way tie for first. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, wait. The Joel draw. Benjamin is still uh, in uh, fighting. Yes, but, 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 oh, but sorry. no, 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 uh, the, the junior section, this means that Christopher Yu is, is our champion. Uh, isn't a playoff. No, he's not. No, what? he's not. He's, he's guaranteed not yet. a playoff. Because he's a point ahead. Only one. Yes. Only one point, yes. So that's, that, hey, at least we might have another playoff too. He has a draw odds. <laughs> and we actually Why are you so happy? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this, this is, is my Who pain. Is, this is smiling. your pain smile. I got Who is it. Andrew Hong playing tomorrow? Oh, um, Do you expect me to know that? Give, because give me he will, <laughs> check it, check he it. will be playing with the black pieces. So I, I have to say, Christopher Yu, he's playing a struggling player with the black pieces. That's his Carissa Ip. Nevertheless, never count Carissa out. She Gordon. can produce incredible games and incredible surprises, and she's beat countless of uh, grandmasters yes. in her young career. So Carissa is by no means any pushover, and she has absolutely nothing to lose. Dorsa On the other hand, it seems like Andrew Hong is going to be playing Espinosa. Yes. Yeah, Dorsa has all the answers for you. Go ahead, Dorsa. Uh, and who they're does... both playing black. Yes. So... Help me again. Uh, who is oh, playing um, black? Andrew Hong will be playing Espinosa. Mm -hmm. With black. Yes. Okay. Es Pedro is white. Yep. Thank and you. Carissa Yip is white versus Christopher Yu. Ooh. And both Carissa and Pedro seems to be having a... Uh, Rough tournament? Oh, rough. Rough is a good way of uh, describing it. Christopher with a one-point lead heading into Championship Saturday. That's all tomorrow. Andrew, a point behind David Brodsky. Also coming out of nowhere. Look mm -hmm. at this. Right. He's in a tie for third, a point behind Andrew. I just wanted to mention that the good news would be even if they get a tie break, it won't be a tie break for a three way tie break. That's true. <laughs> the max we can do here is a two way deal. Yeah. And uh, more results, Dorsa. Let's go for it, yes, sir. Well, Justin Wang and Chris Ayip did draw their game. Mm -hmm. And so many results. Yep. Curious to see who's next. Yes, Jennifer, you did win her game against Gracie. Giving her a really wonderful six out of eight, you would think with such a score, you're fighting for first? Yeah, kind of, <laughs> but you're a whole point behind. Whew. Wow. But comparing that to our senior section, which everybody's like at five points. Exactly. It's quite interesting. Uh, Christopher, you did win his game against Mishra. Uh, to score six and a half. And, yes. Uh, guarantee himself at least a playoff, is yes. what we want to say. And more and more, more results. results coming through. Rochelle and Alice did draw their games, which puts Rochelle out of any fight for the first place. Exactly. Let's see. And finally, oh, this one hurt. The big <laughs> result that really yes. hurts. Larry goes down with the white pieces. To Shabalov, which now means it's a massive tie for forward. tie break, maybe more. Except there is still one game going on right, with Vladimir. Yes. Now, Vladimir, if he draws, he's going to be in that tie, uh, yes, that, that group. Is correct. However, if he wins, yeah. however unlikely that might be, he would be our tournament leader going oh. into the last round. And he is nursing, let's face it, an extra pawn. Christian thinks. 
uh, blacks' chances of winning are, 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 are slim to none. But nonetheless, whenever you're a pawn up and you're in an ending, you want to press your luck as best you can. Bishop e3, Joel uh, played this very quickly. I just want to touch up on tomorrow's Please? pairing for our senior. So uh, Vladimir Kopian is playing the uh, Nick, who is not having a good tournament. Exactly. Uh, Igor Novikov is playing against Joel Benjamin. Right. Shabalov will be playing Maxim. Now that <laughs> is a game that was likely to decide first. Go yes. on. And then Gurevich versus Larry. Another game likely to decide first. And Kajdanov versus the other Igor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, we've got some great matchups. A lot of head-to-heads, and, head -to -heads and <clears throat> we'll just have to see. Yeah, yeah it was just... <clears throat> I wanted to... I'm looking at the game between Joel Benjamin and Vladimir Kobian, and uh, I want Christian to jump in on this uh, exact position right here, because there was some some. Funny tactics, uh, but before well, we do this, we I'm have not, a guest. I'm not going to jump in, but we can ask uh, our guest. Ooh. Alexander Shabalov, after an incredible victory. Congratulations, uh, Alex. Incredible performance with the black pieces against uh, a terrific opponent. Uh, How does you. that feel? Thank you so much, Al. After uh, last night, I think everything felt good. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it's an unbelievable uh, scenario in the, our championship right now. I mean, Larry played a hell of a tournament, you know, it was a, and uh, everything looked like he's going to be unstoppable on the way to the title. But, uh, well, you know, uh, we all planned it to the end. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, well, uh, what about the game itself, yes. right? So, uh, no, clearly uh, I was preparing for Larry's name so, and uh, after quite a quite a uh, long think, he decided not to go for it and played something safe. Mm -hmm. Safer, I guess. Safe, yes. but then he allowed this uh, hanging pawn structure, which was a little bit surprising. So if you're playing safe, then... But I guess Larry also wanted to clinch today if, if he could have. Uh, surprisingly, th this game really reminded me our our first meeting with Larry, which was a, a U.S. championship in 1993. Mm -hmm. It was... A, Almost the same structure. There was like a isolated pawn. I was on the black side uh, at some point. Larry just uh, overstepped, you know, the limits, and uh, I won. And it so, did seem like right now he was building up some pressure, right? Whenever you move the knight from c6, um, he jumps to to e5. How did you assess the position? Right yes now? and no. I I wasn't too worried. I mean, so you were yeah, happy with the imbalance? Yeah, it's a. Uh, White standing pretty active, but uh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Yes. Gives you some chances as well to strike potentially. Right. Uh, so, but of course, eventually uh, he clearly overplayed me. It's uh, so here was knight on h three. I thought I could couldn't possibly be worse. And you but, weren't. Uh, no, actually, knight h three. You're better after g five. Yeah, but. Then I really didn't like my position. I think rook e5 was very strong. I mean, mm -hmm. I, uh, mm -hmm. Knight g7 and bishop c2. So there's no time I can get this rook off. I think here there was a ridiculous uh, mm -hmm. maneuver proposed by the engine. Bishop takes b3. Takes. And then rook to c5 to get rid of the rook on, uh, on, on e5. And uh -huh. so this is the way to reduce the pressure, OK. And if you go rook to e3, then rook to d5, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't have too many problems here. Okay, but, yeah, yeah um, that, that looks good. Mm -hmm. But it's not human to, 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 right. to play chess like that. So, yeah, here Larry clearly uh, grabbed the initiative, and, but uh, I think queen e3 he played. Like, very, I mean, anything that does not allow me to trade queens, I mean, it would be dangerous. Mm -hmm. But this one stepped right into. Actually, I wasn't sure about taking on uh, d5 for white. Uh, probably at this point, from practical point of view, taking on b5 was better. Uh, at least that's what I thought. 
taking on b5 and if you do take if you do go uh, with the same queen to queen b6. b6 no i think it's the same position only instead of like a weak pawn on d5 mm. he got two on one on the queen side so that that's what i thought but how does he get two on one so a4 yeah but then i can go a6 right uh a6 i thought a little dangerous rook takes b6 takes rook takes yeah, oh, mm -hmm. very nice. A5, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rook takes b5 exactly. and bishop to a4. Exactly, nice. yeah. So I, it wasn't that easy to get rid of those two pawns on the queen side. And he took on d5, allowed me to trade queens. The worst was over, but uh, I think somewhere around here, Larry still relied a lot on tactics instead of uh, trying to like, make a draw. I think what he. Oh, so this was double. the critical moment. Okay. After so 98. My 98 is a mistake? 98, 9 to G6 would have been quite problematic for you. Did you spot this move? Oh, uh, what's and the deal? And then rook to E1? No, 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 not rook this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, knight G6. Uh, knight G6, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> I had 40, 40 seconds on my clock when I played 98. Uh, no, I did not look at it. Uh, oh, wow. But this was the 41st move, so he had some time to spend and try to figure things out. Oh, really? Yes. Did, That's he, play, true. did he make an immediate move? Yeah. Route to F1? He, he, he didn't wait until he, his time expired. Yeah, for some reason, he oh, wow. played it extremely fast, Rook F1. Probably missed some time. I'm, I'm pretty sure what he missed. He missed the rook of one, knight of six, uh, knight of six, knight d7, uh, king e7, knight takes f6, takes and d6. I'm, uh, I'm sure he was yeah. hoping for that. Yeah, yeah. Just forgot about that bishop on a2 is also hanging. Yes, yeah, so rook takes d6 and then But I, I thought that's the, actually his best chance to, to make a draw if he wanted to. So yeah. Picks up the bishop, I'll pick up his bishop, he takes b5, takes a3. Uh, uh, probably f3, I thought, just to I think you want to go to, I think you want to go to e4, right? So f3 yeah, and f3 e4. Yeah, f3 and e4. Uh, yeah, I thought this, this was promising. Like, uh, I wasn't sure if it's easy draw, but uh, feels like with king like that. King gets active, yes, goes to draw, f5, yeah. yeah, this should be a draw. And uh, so, but for some reason, yeah, but he played knight g6 extremely fast. Ah, uh, oh, no, 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 rook f1 he played. Rook f1 and then knight to g6. And then knight, knight g6, which is another mistake, I think. And I like right it. now it just felt like things are going oh, from bad yeah. to worse for him. This is, mm -hmm. And the last moment, it, it seems like it was here, knight to h8. Yes. To maintain the balance in the position. Oh, knight h8. Knight h8. Oh, whoa. And now we get the end game after bishop takes d5, takes take on d5, knight, knight f7. Knight takes h6, okay. And yeah. at the end he takes on h6. You're still better with black right now, mm -hmm. but good chances for him to, to equalize. Oh, that's true. Well, his knight is slightly worse, but uh, yeah, definitely. I, I see how Some chances, how but still you're better mm -hmm. with, with, with black right now. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. So we bows were missing a lot. <laughs> Let's get back to the game. Uh, okay. And uh, when did you feel, and also when did you feel the energy shift in this game, in this end game right now? When did you feel the energy shift? Oh, the I, I thought when he played knight g6 that he already missed step, but apparently it was not yet. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, white king is extremely bad. You know, the main, the main in that. So, sit. Yeah. Alex, congratulations. I mean, after that, it was a pretty smooth uh, conversion. Con congratulations. You're uh, tied at the top Thanks. right now. And uh, hopefully, Joel will not lose this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably not, but we're, it's okay. still in play. It's well, yeah, still in we're, play. Uh, <laughs> Crossing our fingers that he's not, and then it's an uh, amazing uh, day tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow against uh, Max. Uh, what is your usual experience with uh, Max? Uh, you no, recently? obviously I didn't play Max too many times. Well, our like uh, active phases were a little bit, uh, you know, uh, 
not not synchronized yet right. when he was active. I, I was not that strong yet, and and then later. But we played a couple of times, and uh, I believe the last uh, meeting uh, I beat him in a, a senior championship at 19 here. So, but it was a different color. And Max is playing on blue, but I think he's a he dem like right now the. The player with the most energy. I see how he tries to win every single game. Oh, man, it's very impressive. So I'm not going to take it lightly, and well, we'll see how it goes. Definitely a lot of energy on your side as well. We'll let you go back, get some uh, preparation going, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Not quite so fast, not <laughs> quite so fast. First of all, two quick questions for you, Alex, uh, okay. Sheba. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Well done. Yes. Have you ever played bishop and knight versus king? Uh, in a tournament game. You mean two pieces versus... King. Oh, uh, Ben Fangel made me do it twice. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> One wise guy, in other words. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, after I did it once, I would think <laughs> that, you know, he's not going to try it again. But no, I mean, he, so I... You He's made, responsible for me, you know, knowing this on game. <laughs> so you played it twice, but against the same guy. It's against the same guy, and Crazy. I think it was within a year. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Second quick question for you: You just played around, Shabbat. This is crazy. You just played around five great legendary, play, uh, five great legendary uh, games, uh, ten players, four decisive results. Uh, Is that a I lot? Mean, yeah, <laughs> but but you guys have been doing it more or less since round four. The, you guys have really been uh, killing one another. Why the pummelings? What's going on? Uh, I, well, it, it's very easy explanation. There is, a, I think, the guys who are not playing that much uh, set in the tone. Uh, Max and Dmitri uh, have an unbelievable tournament, and uh, uh, even Igor Kmelnitsky, who's uh, um, on bottom of the uh, tournament table, I mean, plays amazing chess. Okay, so um, people who didn't play for a long time just wanted to play. And that's my explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, we'll let you go now, and good luck tomorrow uh, in the championship round. Yeah, thanks, Yasser. Wonderful. Thanks, Dorsa. Thank you. Thanks. Wonderful. And Dorsa, <laughs> you've been looking at the game of Talia, yeah, I see that. And I want her to win. <laughs> you want her to win. I, I need She's some your happy news. <laughs> Here we wait, go. But if no. she wins, she gets closer to the tiebreak. Wait, wait, wait. wait what am I what doing are you this doing? to myself? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> see, I, I, Talia is my you know, teammate. I was her captain and everything. And right? So I, I want her to win, exactly. but I really don't want to play. <laughs> Now, she has made tremendous progress since yes. we left it because it's all about the fact that white, uh, Ru Yan, Yan's rook is tethered to the spawn, so uh, white is bringing her king over to the queen side so yep. that she can release her rook, defend and blockade with the pawn, and we've just seen the move king b1 on the board. So that's a clear indication that white is ready to go uh, rook to e3. Now, in these positions, uh, how should Talia respond to this? I just want to play king b4. King b4. I'm, and I'm fine with rook e3. Rook e3, and how would it go? You, would, you, would you like your rook here as a defensive measure, or would you like your rook active, like maybe coming down over here? Well, I was thinking about the rook f8 idea. Oh, well, she just played a different move. Oh, look at that tricky move she just played. Oh, that's King a to B. Oh, that's a lovely chief. Oh, King to B1. She, Talia said, you know what? I want to activate my rook right away so that I can come down, check, check. And uh, this was what Christian was saying. <laughs> Oftentimes you get rid of the A pawn for oh, white's two pawn. I like this chief. And it's lovely. Check. Uh, it's almost like a Savarde study <laughs> where you've got the back rank mate and the rook is hanging. This a double attack. What study? Savarde? Savarde? Savarde made by Cervantes. That sounds about right. Yes. Savarde <laughs> nice made by Cervantes. Yes. The, it's S double A V A R D. It was a very, very famous study from uh, the 1800s. And what happened was a columnist put, you know, how to draw. 
And he showed the draw and everybody was happy. But the Savarde, uh, he may have been a priest, I'm not sure, said, no, you're wrong. There's a cook, uh, the player wins the game. Mm -hmm. And the columnist was shocked, and he was so delighted, and it, well, that was how it became the Savarde study. It's really, really, really a beautiful one, but this is nice. But guys, yes, uh, there please. was one very early story today, and that yes. was the story of Sophie Mori Suzuki just getting a, a killing advantage a out of the game. opening. And uh, our producers actually came up with a very beautiful Ooh. graphic. As you can see, as we move along, uh, throughout this game. At move seven, something happens. Right. After move seven, and you can see going Whoop. the graphic from around 20% winning chances all the way to 90 plus percent winning chances. That night FD7 move was such a bad decision by uh, Vela today. And I have to say, that was just simply a gift for Mori Suzuki. Best 58 minutes of our day, I have to say. <laughs> Well, indeed, uh, that was just a, a gift, uh, yeah. and we saw Dmitry Gurevich getting a nice gift Wonderful. as there was an oversight. Uh, the move, uh, Rookie 8, has paid dividends uh, for Talia. Uh, rookie 8, uh, Ru Yang Yen, went King C2, but then came your King B4, and look at this, Rookie nice. 2 check Either on the board, the and Talia is about to clip her second pawn and that's, then she will really be cruising towards victory, no question about it. Uh, with with uh, that second pawn in her pocket, rook takes h2, we're expecting now. So with this victory, and it's all but certain, uh, Talia is going to go into the last round game trailing Sophia by a whole point, but with destiny in front of her. Can she win with the white pieces? And for Sophia, by the way, I mean, we are ta we've are we been talking about her when she went on the 6-0 run, and there's oh, the handshake. Oh, resignation. 6-0 run. It's remarkable that Sophia hasn't put the, the, the tournament in her pocket. She's got seven out of eight. A, a tremendous score. I mean, that wins championships. Seven yes. out of nine is a terrific score. And uh, not well, even, I just realized that's it, it could be a, a, a three-way tie. Like, that's crazy. I just realized that um, none of our seniors would make it to seven. No. <laughs> that's why I'm saying it's, just a, it's a remarkably good score. <laughs> and also for Christopher Yu, who also has a remarkably uh, great score. No guarantee for Christopher either. And uh, the seniors seem to be up for grabs. There is one game left for the ladies. I apologize to Ellen and Zoe. So a total of two games left. Yeah, I like it. Let's just watch it like we this. We haven't seen <laughs> Ellen and uh, Zoe for some time, I but think it looks an like extra, uh, the, the Bishop. Tall pawn. <laughs> <laughs> and that's but. it. Uh, that's uh, Ellen is uh, losing this game yeah. most definitely. I expect but this game to be wrapped up. Very shortly. Yeah, because d5 falls, g5 falls, then just trade on g3 and go pawn cruising. Exactly. Rook to e3. I would still just eat on d5. You eat e4, I eat g5. Whatever you do, I'll pre move rook takes g3. This is over. Pre move yeah. it. I mean, yeah. there is one game that has okay. any importance towards the standings. That's a Kobians game. We have to move on to that one. Uh, Let's go because for it. he's oh, still fighting. I see half a time. <laughs> I, I, I think Ellen was about to resign, but okay. Oh, they shook hands. wonderful. Um, we, so we have only one game remaining. left. Remaining, exactly. And... Joel versus uh, Vladimir. And the bishops got traded. No. Oh boy. I mean, every time I'm thinking, let's just call this guy a game, uh, it just feels like... I don't know, but Joel allows some type of improvement by I mean, by white by, king, by black. The king is pretty cut on the back rank. I'm right. Even if the king was on f6, it would yeah. be a draw. But uh, this three versus two with the king on f6 is 
well, I think improvement uh, is an overstatement. Yeah, over, <laughs> yeah, overstatement. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. absolutely. I think this is uh, getting closer and closer to uh, a position that Joel is just comfortable holding. And yeah. I think without the bishops, three versus two, not only that, but the only way to make any progress at some point will be to go for rook d5, rook d7. Right. Which is exactly where he's heading right now. And then I just hide the king to e2. And then you will have to spend a lot of time to get your e5 and then f4. And that's going to change the structure. <laughs> but he knows. He knows this endgame. He studied this endgame. With you, the bishops on the board. You, you, you're making it sound like it's easy peasy it's for very Joel. Easy. And it's not. It's, it's not. Very easy. This is exactly how you lose it. He, <laughs> he, he, he had much, much, much easier drawing methods. With uh, a bishop? No way. No, no, easily. I, I was trying to, I, you, you, we had a guest, I was trying to ask you a question earlier, which I just couldn't understand. I thought Joel badly misplayed it and uh, got himself into, well, for me, this is actually a difficult position. If you put the pawns on f4 and g3, yeah, that, that, that's an easy draw. With f2, g3, these are how you lose it. You, get, you okay? Imagine that you get king f6, uh, e5, and how do I get in an f4 check? Hmm. First oh, of all, sorry. king f6, e5 in itself is going to be difficult to be made. True. What? Because once you get the king on f6, I keep my rook on the sixth rank, not rook a5. No. I don't like this move. It's easy to get my my king on f6 and my pawn on e5. I just start with rook d6. King f6, e5, you can't stop it. Okay, so what do you play right now? King f6. No, I, rook d6. Or, okay, king f6, fine. You can't stop me from playing uh, my setup. Now I go rook a6. And I go king e5. Mm -hmm. And then you go rook d6. And now I go Crickets. rook a8. Crickets. You go rook a8, sure. and I go now rook I go d6. Rook f8, and then I go rook d6. Now I go rook e8, and then I give you a hakasito. <laughs> and I go king e2, king e2, and king. And this is where I'm saying I'm going to get my pawn to e5, and if I ever get my pawn to f4, you start to think, uh oh, now I have only moves to save the game. But it's and not going to be only moves, that's the thing. You think so? I, I'm, I'm getting nervous for You're getting Joel. Nervous. I bet, I bet you Shabal, uh, I bet you all the guys <laughs> who have five points right here, right now, <laughs> are getting nervous for Joel. You have to believe in Joel. <laughs> you have to believe in Joel. Okay. Okay, this is it. This is gonna. And uh, Dorsa, what are the um, times for the players? Joel I know they're has playing. Five and on... half. Well, uh, Akopian has almost seven. Oh, well, they're not playing on increments. So, and how many moves have they played actually? Six. Uh, there are moves. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. Yeah. Dang. I mean, we've we we've seen what two games that are century-long games in Ooh. this event. I know Mishra had like a 120 move game. Uh, w w what's your prognosis for 100 moves? Oh boy. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Is certainty? Uh, in that? Not wow. certainty, but I think we're going to get it. 100 moves, oh boy. Why it's 75, only 25 moves to go. Oh. That's easy. It takes Wait, a long time to, uh, take? to swindle this position. Oh, I mean, he's 64. going to try. We know that. Rook to b3 is coming. Right. Or maybe you can go rook to a3. So one moment ago, you put your rook on e8 and defended from what you might say from behind, right? Right, you, right. The, this other way that Joel is playing is he's defending it from the side. Uh, both options are good, in your opinion, um, Christian? Yes, absolutely. Rook to a3 makes a lot of sense. Okay. Again, this end game is draw with, with closed eyes. With closed eyes, wow, you're so sure about it. Okay, if if you, wow, I Joel is a grandmaster. I, I don't think he can use this one. I have, I've seen accidents before, but this would surprise me. I have to say. 
Uh, famously, I think it was Sergei Karyakin lost Rook and Four Pawns versus Rook and Four Pawns against Magnus Carlsen. Losing Rook and Three versus Rook and Two uh, is much easier than that. <laughs> I mean, or much harder. I got it wrong. I, 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 I like. I think I'm getting loopy. Let's say I just says White. I just put the king. Uh, so I play passive. King on e2. Rook on a2. I just go rook a2. B2. C2. Just keep it there. What's gonna black? What's black gonna do? No, black is going to go king e4, <laughs> e5, sure. and then. <laughs> Actually, that might be the easiest way, just because whenever you go e5 and then f4, I take and then I go f3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so hit me That's with a some good moves. Plan. That's a good plan. So What's a good plan? Let's do what Dorsa is recommending. Dorsa? Put the rook on a2. I'm just saying. Okay, like... so I'll play rook c5. You'll go rook a2. Put the king on e2. I'll yes. go check. You'll put the king on e2. I'll yes. go king d5. That's fine. I'll give you a Sorry. chart. Yes. Yeah, 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 no, let's keep No, going. no, I'm just going to do it for the viewers once again. So rook c5, so Dorsa is saying play passive. Mm -hmm. well, just, King to d5, yeah. let's play do a passive. Check. Play passive and let me get everything I want, Dorsa. So you gave me the world, essentially. Let's, okay. Sure. And if we're gonna, if you're gonna give me the world, give me the entirety of the world, and I get here. Now, how how do, how are you defending this? You're you're passing some more. What are you doing? Are you playing rook a two now? I don't well, but by, by the way, hold on. Sorry, you sorry, can't. Sorry, you can't. That's yeah. the problem. Uh, so you have to take. Yeah, in fact, let's okay. Go for it. Take take. Okay. Now immediately. Up comes my. Um, so let's go, Rook A2. Uh, what do you call it? My. Uh, ugh, can't think of it. Table base. It says drawn. It says drawn. Uh, n nothing uh, else. And, the, and I, I'm assuming it, if I'm going to win it, I'm going to win it with F3, right? You have to go F3. Yeah. Okay. And then so, I go King D2, let's say. Right. And again, if I'm going to win it, I assume. I'm going to have But now to. you have to be careful. Okay, I go rook a4. Can I go into that endgame? I hope not. I, I think I can. Can you really? Then yeah. that would be terrible. <laughs> if you could go into this ending, then I really if, botched it. In fact, it. you have to be careful not to lose this one. Exactly. <laughs> I botched it. And king g3, and you can go into this ending. Okay. So right here, after rook a2. And that's the problem. You have to keep the rook on uh, the fourth rank to uh, not allow this check. And then mm -hmm. go with the king on e4. And then go f3, if you can. But I'm not going to allow you to go f3. I so put the rook on b4. Right now? Yes. OK. And then I move rook c2, let's say. OK. And then you go king e4. Uh, OK. And now I go f3. This was what uh, Dorsa was suggesting. This, yeah. is, this, is the... this is the key, yes. Right. f3, you take on f3, king goes in front of the pawn, and that's actually an easy, easy draw. So if I give you a check, right? It's just to uh, kind of... Mm, Let's go king d3. King d3. And I go down. Rook a2. Also, the rook on c2 is like the worst place. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I asked for the world. You gave me everything I could possibly like want. The worst uh, square for that. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And I, I, I did it purposefully and deliberately to, to improve my chances. So I want to go kind of sneaking around uh, to the king side now. I was just By the way, he went the aggressive way, yes. which was the rook from behind the jaw. I was just going to make a joke that if yes. the king went to f4, pawn e5. Mate. Yeah. Yes, the checkmate. I was just meeting. thinking, what are the cheapos in this position? Exactly. And I was like, oh, that's a cheapo. Uh, still draw, but according to my table base, one, two, three, four moves draws, but there's a lot more losing moves than those four. There's only four. And that's what I'm saying. You're, you're getting closer and closer to the point where you have two moves to draw or yeah. three moves to draw. And I think that Joel had this so much easier. He really put pressure on himself. Let me refresh my board. Again, I apologize. What's the no. same, what the clock um, times? Akopian has five minutes. Joel Benjamin, yeah. five, and... 524. 524. 
still plenty of time. We shouldn't be expecting any major uh, mistakes here. I kind of Joel looking at his score sheet like, hey, he, the, there hasn't been any three move the repetitions. No, 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 absolutely. The final not. take was about 20 moves ago. Okay. But it's not even about takes. The right? 50 yeah. moves. It's, it's, it's yeah. about uh, pawn moves. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So whenever I go e5, that resets the clock. Pretty much. Right? Resets the 50 move counter, yeah. Yes. Okay, why didn't he play e5? Is he just trying to gain time? Like, Again, if he just... I, I don't think he should be trying to gain time because I think what he should be trying to do is put pressure on Joel's time. Exactly. That's his only chance right now. Right. If he does make random moves and allows Joel to build up some more time, then I think that's detrimental to his chances. Exactly. And Joel... Every time I think Joel is going to go for the uh, aggressive defense, the, 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 the defense from behind, mm -hmm. He comes back with uh, the defense from the side. He's just played the move rook a5. Rook a5, right? Mm -hmm. No, rook, You're yes, right? he did. No, I've got to refresh my board, apologies. Here we go, rook a5. So and again, that is the problem, e5, I think. right? Let's yes, do but it. Then, then what? Then what? Well, e5, f4. That's okay, and then I take, I take. So once you get so, the pawn to f4, we exchange that, and then I go from behind. E5, f4, takes, takes, and then you go all the way back down, right? Ooh, setting up shot for pawn to e5. He was worried about a check from the side. That's surprising. Can I just yeah. hide my king on g2 and call it good? <laughs> As white? Mm. Mm. No, 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 sorry, it's, not in this position, in the game. Right, in the game. I, I actually don't think the king is better placed on g2, if I remember correctly. It's, it's, it's easier with the king on e2. Let's just put it that way. Fair. Because with the king on g2, you will be able to get pinned on the second rank. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then you have to worry about f4, and if we exchange those pawns, g3 coming. And uh, you, you don't want to deal with that. Keep the king on e2. Okay, we do have a, a reset of our uh, 50 move counter. He did play e6, e5. And for those of you who are predicting 100 moves, um, almost there. <laughs> he, We're looking you good. predicted move right. <laughs> move 81, yeah. Right. Mm hmm. Well, both of these players have a lot of experience, but what back? they don't have oh, yes. is a lot of energy. Mm. Uh, at this moment, they're running on uh, fumes. Uh, I, spoke, I spoke with Larry yesterday. He said that the club has a very nice room where they cater and have a lot of snacks. Oh. And uh, for Larry... I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be right back <laughs> as well, right? Uh, that that uh, he needs those snacks to uh, keep his energy levels up. Sorry, Dorsey, you were about to ask oh, no, 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 about just, this position. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Can I just go back for K5? Yes, that's uh, what he's waiting <laughs> Can I just go back for. for, for, for and... Yep. He's waiting for Black to make a, a stake with F4. So let's say you go Rook A5, and let's say I go Rook check. Where would you like to go? E3. Not D3. Why not, not D3. <laughs> That's... Why not? No, let's go E3. Oh. No, Sorry. we were talking D3. Sorry. B. Be brave. <laughs> not, D3. Not, not D3. Not today. So we were, no, uh, Doris is expecting Rook A5. And I was asking her, would she put her king on G2? Yeah, I would. In case of uh, a check. Yeah, let's go Because I was more oh. or less asking about this. If you were. No, Dorsa, no. No more, no more take you're, F3 stuff, fine. You're, you're giving the, uh, the fox some, uh, <laughs> some, uh, some chances, yeah, that's, that's unnecessary right. chances. Exactly. He's trying to outfox you. Don't allow him to do that. No, go King Wait, E3. Wait, who's the fox here? He tried to trick you. Oh, I thought it was Joe Benjamin. Uh, oh, Yasser oh. is the fox. Yasser is the I fox. Thought I am not that. a fox. You're the fox. I'm a wolf. <laughs> and I'm hungry for pawns. I was trying to grab uh, the No, G3 this is pawn. actually where it gets a bit tricky after f4, right? With the king on f1. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Don't go All to right, f1. I'll, I accept. Let's just go king to e3. Okay. So if you go rook a5 and I go f4. 
Okay. And my next move is check. You're going to go That's to okay. the first now, rank. Now you take and you go behind. You take, take. And you go behind to wait. And I go check. That's okay. Could I buy play king, since what, the previous move, instead of rook 8 could I just go king d3, and king And now I go d4? king e1. Uh, again, you're kind of, this is where you start oh, to get a little oh. bit uh, careful. Your king is cut away from the king. So maybe it's still okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but uh, this is where I start saying uh, people are getting nervous back at the hotel looking at how Joel would be playing this. Sorry, Christian, you were saying that you were going to go where here in this moment? After rook c2 check. All right, let's the, try to be the most precise. Let's go king f1, sure. King f1. I'm going to pretend to give you some chances. Wow. Can I play a cheap pawn f3? Exactly. That was the that was the first thing that That's came okay. to my king mind as well. King g1. And now you sidestep the cheapo. Yes. Oh, and I can't get Even the Even though checks. I feel like I'm, I'm doing some bad things right now, so I, right. I don't think I should do this. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Well, I, I'm thinking that... Uh, F4 is on the board, guys, by the way. That, and then that's our 50-move our well, counter thing. Again? We're never going to get to 50 moves? <laughs> no. Just when you think you're about to make it, then your opponent makes a, a, a pawn move. And, and again, we, we witnessed four decisive games out of the five in the senior section. It's like the seniors became the juniors and they started swinging. <laughs> and four, in uh, four in the ladies As well. Uh, it's, 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 it's crazy. Um, sorry, uh, we do have F4 on the board. I want to just refresh my board. Yes, of course. Well, one thing that Joel should do right now is to take on F4, which he did. Yes. He did. Yes. Because if not, then that will just be painful. Well, then you have really, in this position, then you really start to get scared. Like, if you play king here. Oh, I'm scared. I don't want to. Yeah, this. I mean. No, thank you. You're, uh, you're, you, could, you could be winding up for some kind of a checkmating net. So he took. Yes. And now we see a rook on a5. Okay, waiting. Um. If I were in uh, Vladimir's shoes, I would ask Fair. you to declare. <laughs> declare. Rook check. Are you going to defend on G2 yeah. or are you going to defend on E2? I feel fine about G2. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. As we've got some time as uh, this game continues, let's just review our current standings after eight rounds with the girls. Yes. Dorsa, do the honors. Sophie Morris, Suzuki, clear first, seven and seven out of eight. Mm -hmm. And she has secured a playoff at least. Right. She is playing Talia Cervantes, who is tied for second with Jennifer Yu at six points. So that's gonna be a rough one. <laughs> either right. a big either game for Talia's, all the marbles. Yeah, either they're gonna to be honest, if Talia wins, I think that's going to be a three-way playoff because Jennifer Yu is playing the the um, the bottom um, uh, Valea. Anna, yeah. Anna, Annie Marie Valea versus Who's, Jennifer. Jennifer yes. is like, wow, she will be looking at that as for victory. And yes. in the junior standings, is it as close? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, Christopher Yu is still having a clear lead with an extra point which does guarantee him at least playoffs. As well. And the only one who could theoretically catch him is Andrew Hong, who Andrew... Does Andrew play Christopher in the last round? That would be another <laughs> no, you wish. A, a great I matchup. I think um, Andrew and Christopher, they're both, so the number one and two in, the, in this um, round are playing the bottom two, so... Christopher will play against Carissa? Yep with the black pieces yes. and then Andrew will play against Pedro and oh. here are the pairings for the junior beautiful thank you thank you and yeah a lot of it's gonna be a lot of fights anyone uh, Christopher uh, pardon me Carissa Yip versus the Christopher you game I mean everybody will be looking at that one as Pedro Espinosa with the white pieces up against Andrew Hong, and we have seen some incredible preparation from Andrew. I'm expecting him to bring it tomorrow, and he's just saying, Carissa, if there's ever a time 
for you to play uh, the, tur <laughs> the tournament game of the tournament. It's Please tomorrow. do it tomorrow. And uh, how about the girls' parents? Well, uh, Talia is playing Sophie. Uh, that's that's going to be one. oh yes. And uh, Jennifer Yu is paired with um, Valel, who's not really having a good tournament. And yep, anyone uh, else here? No, gonna... I mean uh, uh, Ru, Ye Ru Yang Wu uh, up against uh, with five and a half points. She's out of first. That's yes. clear. But she really wants a podium finish, meaning in uh, the top three. As well, uh, the ju the seniors is actually going to be an amazing uh, finish. Uh, we do expect Joel to hang on and make a draw in this game, uh, but uh, we're going to have a, a great battle in the senior, and the likelihood of a playoff in that section is enormously high. Oh yes, definitely. And Joel has played king to the G two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Two loneliest players. Three. Three. We got our. <laughs> actually, I think we actually have more arbiters than players because uh, we have uh, oh. three arbiters. Oh, I in see the, the snacks. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Oh. We missed out. On, uh, what have we been missing? Whatever right. it is, those guys are having. You know, send it over exactly. for exactly for for inspection. Rook check. So I think he found uh, the right and the easiest Beautiful. configuration because right now I'm just simply going to keep cheeky, contact cheeky, cheeky. with your pawns as well as the king. I'm going to attack if you try to escape via e4, the g pawn. What and if then you will have to return. I don't think there's any way in which you can make Rook any progress. Rook f6 maybe? Rook f6, Rook, Rook g8. G. Yeah. Keeping the king, the black king, tethered to the g pawn. Whenever you go off the f file, I'll give you a check and then go right. back to g8. I think that's the easy, very easy route out. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Uh, if you would have the rook on the second rank, maybe you would stand the I, chance, but I'm you think, don't. I'm thinking if the white king were, for example, on the d3 square, with the rook cutting off the king from going to uh, the king side, maybe I'd have some chances. And now but this one, f8. rook f8, yes, and that is easy. a really uh, a clincher. Tickling the pawns yeah. to see if you're going to play pawn f3? Exactly. Pawn f3, always king g3. Yes. No, he, 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 he played it brilliantly. Uh, the defense was, was there, was on point. Mm. Joe Benjamin has been doing a lot of uh, grandmaster residence stuff for the club, so yes. if any of you are interested, there will be lots of, lots videos. of videos about uh, him doing lectures on our YouTube channel. Joel has written a number of books. I really like his articles. He's a... a I, I think his uh, clarity of writing is uh, wonderful. I, I really enjoy his books. I enjoy his articles. And uh, I remember doing, uh, back in the day, a commentary with him for the ICC, the Internet Chess Club. Oh, yeah. And somehow, the two of us, we'd end up, and it was so much fun, we'd sacrifice everybody's pieces. Oh, good God. <laughs> Except our own, of nice. course. I mean, that's what commentators do. We, I we, like that. We, we, it's we, not your game. Exactly, right? and he and that's where I picked up throwing the patties uh, <laughs> from Joel. He was like, oh, I want to throw some patties, you know, and uh, that was what he meant by the sacrifices. And, uh, well, Vladimir, he's, He's I mean, still trying. Look, he right? tried against Shabalov and he exactly. got rewarded. He did. He's trying against Joel. He has absolutely nothing to lose. Exactly. And I have to say, the seniors have been proving to be extremely competitive players, all of them. Every single round, they're bringing it. I know. It is remarkable. Uh, this uh, pass move, if you will, um, it asks White a question. Do you want to move your king? And if the answer yeah. is... Yeah, I'll play king g1, what's the problem? Uh, oh. Then f3 and your king doesn't yeah, get to g3. I agree. But no, I mean, Joel knows it. And he Joel played knows. rook Let's go check from the other side. Yes, exactly. He went rook a8. Uh, so essentially what Joel wants to do is any f3 check he wants to be, meet with king g3. He, d he doesn't want to get checkmated by yeah, uh, the rook true. landing on h3. But f3 check, and then he could play rook a5, and that is super, super easy. 
So what I was saying just a moment ago, this, this cagey little move, King, Rook G7 uh, by Vladimir saying to his opponent, okay, you go ahead and make your move. Joel, as we know, made the move Rook A8, but if he had moved his king, then Vladimir would have said, okay, now I can go F3 and your king can't go to G3 Ooh. and I'll keep playing. Is that a draw no. invitation? Rook to G6, G6 rook to F8. So if I... That could be a repetition. Uh -huh, let's I'm see. counting. I'm count. Well, that would mean that we don't oh, make it to 100. Was played. We rook don't make it to 100. Rook to G7, then that's uh, a draw offer. We're at move 92, everybody. Oh no, I'm going to lose the bet. <laughs> exactly. Come exactly. on, Vladimir, eight more moves. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> What I challenge him to find all of the good moves. What was the bet? Um, well, what are the odds that this game will go to 100 moves? Uh, and what are we playing for? Um, well, it determ if I win, we're playing for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> if I lose, it was an ego point. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll let you know in just a few moves. <laughs> in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Thank you, Christian. All right, check, so check, let's keep checking. Check, check. Let's keep giving those pesky checks. That's right. And by the way, after a rook to f8, if you go to e4, I can even go f3 once oh, I again. saw a check. Let's just keep But checking. probably just keep checking. <laughs> that's the same. You want to go f3? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's still a draw. Uh huh. That is still an easy draw, actually. I believe well, you, I'll but take, I, I, I'll I, take I, the pawn and I'll believe you later. Later, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You'll make me prove it. Right. Well, well, at this position, I'm quite certain we've reached. We've seen it um, again. And yes, we've, yes. Seen we've seen Joel play rook g8 in this position. Yeah, this one after rook to g8. I okay. think if rook to g6 will be played, we might see a 3 4 repetition there. And by the way, again, uh, the clocks has not become a factor in this game. I'm uh, looking through the game, and I don't think that king on f5 and rook on f6 has been played before. This is the first one. Wow, OK. Because the king was on g5 for a while, and then there was a pawn trade and everything. It must have been from my analysis. Yeah. Feel free to I, correct me. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, it must have been from my analysis that I had king on f5 and rook on f6. Um, and positions. we can see, actually, Joe making some notes on his uh, score sheets. I think that's exactly what he's looking for. He's just noting where he sees the repetition. Mm -hmm. And he says, like, yes, this is the first time. This is second time. Mm -hmm. And then on a third uh, try, he's going to politely offer a draw. If he refuses, <laughs> call the arbiter and make a draw. Uh, we were talking about that. Um, I think it was during uh, the opening ceremonies with my uh, senior colleagues. Uh, how people have offered them draws, mm -hmm. but kind of, it, it was So Sammy Ryshevsky had this way of offering a draw, which was, are you playing for a win? <laughs> and, he would uh, ask that. Yeah, are you oh. playing for a win? And I mean, you would go, uh, uh, let me think about it, and then you go, okay, I'll accept the draw. And he said, no, 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 I didn't offer you a, a draw. I asked if you were playing for a win. <laughs> It was like, what? That's I mean, a cheapo. That was a cheapo, right? Uh, so did anybody offer you a draw in a way that kind of threw you backwards? Like, are they offering mm. me a draw? Yes and no. But but let me just tell you the the, the weird one that I've had. That's what I was, I was, I was searching <laughs> so for. This the weird one. This didn't happen to me. It happened to one of my, one of my friends was telling me that's something that they used to do and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so when they would get low on time, everybody's low on time, and right. um, this individual would, um, like, you had two seconds on your clock. I would, I would not stop the clock. I would, mm. you know, reach hand and we would shake hands. And then the opponent would think, oh, great, it's a draw. Or no, no, my opponent is resigning. Right. Or like offering a draw or whatever, and by the time you're thinking, boom, your clock goes yeah, to zero. Right. And they would say, that, yeah, we've used this technique so many times. I was like, oh, that, 
I don't know if that's illegal, but that's very unethical. Right. If it happened to me, I would fight it. I would call the arbiter. <laughs> I would say, look, my <laughs> opponent, the, you know, was uh, disturbing me. Yeah, uh, but there are cameras here, so that, right. that's... Right. Uh, any, any peculiar draw offers in your career that you've uh, come up against, uh, Christian? No, no, I cannot uh, think of any, but what I can think is when I offered... Uh, well, actually, they did offer me a draw, and then they rescinded the offer. Oh, after yes. I, w I was thinking whether to accept or not, and then they came back to the board and they were like, no, no, I forget about it. I forget about my draw offer. But you can't take the draw offer exactly. away. Exactly. And I said that you cannot do that. We shook hands. He started crying because he was winning. <laughs> and that was it. We went on with our lives. That was when we were like 10 years of age. I ah. see. I see. But uh, once you got into the master ranks and stuff like that, it was I cannot all... think of any... Peculiar okay, draw here's the convention, right? You and I are playing Dorsa, and it's a, a tough game, whatever. I, for whatever reasons, I offer you a draw, which has been the case. What a oh, draw. draw it is. Move 96. Oh, oh my gosh. Dinner's on Christian, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody in the Central West End, Christian is uh -oh. inviting us all out Christian, to dinner. Run. I'm sorry for you, Christian. That's just a bad break there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dorsa oh, did the God. honors. Uh, it's and a here's five the... <laughs> way tie. <laughs> oh. Those are fives. That's a five way tie of fives. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's it's oh. kind of deceptive, but. Uh, and. The parents uh. for tomorrow are going to be very <laughs> exciting for us, uh, Dorsa. Whew. Okay. Let's start with the fives. So we have four fives playing each other. So Shabella five playing Dugli five. Right. Uh, Dugli, sorry. Gurevich five playing Christensen five. And Correct. there is one five pointer Vladimir who Kokian. might get away with a with He's a nice... playing Nick DeFermin who's not having a good yes, tournament. He yes. might be thinking, you guys make a draw on tables three and four. I'll take first and place. I'll tip as my a, hat. Exactly. Ciao. And I'll take the twenty thousand right. dollars cash. <laughs> for my retirement fund. Final thoughts, Christian. Long day. Long day, but what a round once again. And the script is uh, made uh, in Hollywood, of course. Mm -hmm. We have three amazing uh, tournaments, and all of them are still up for grabs. Even the junior section, Christopher Yu, does seem like he's running away with the event. But still, Andrew Hong, one point behind. And Christopher will have to defend the black side against Carissa Ip. So definitely, I'm having my eyes on that one in the senior section. These guys are just simply bringing it <laughs> to the table, and uh, I'm very excited to see what's going to, uh, to happen tomorrow. In all three sections, we're going to have an amazing day, guys. Championship Saturday coming up. Don't miss it. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Bye. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.